powered from the Perdomo Cigar Studios on the Red Stage in Indian Trail, North Carolina, and broadcasting from the HF Barcelona Studios in Euless, Texas, and from California, welcome to Primetime Special Edition number 73. Tonight, we bring Hector Alfonso Sr. of Espinosa Cigars, Miguel Chaudel of Crown Heads, and Rob Rasmussen of Cigar Dojo together for a shelter-in-place edition of Baseball. And... As always, the Primetime Show is sponsored by Perdomo Cigars, awarded Nicaraguan Cigar of the Year in 2014 by Cigar Journal. The Perdomo 20th Anniversary brand has consistently earned the highest scores in the industry and is the top seller in humidors around the world. The Perdomo 20th Anniversary blend requires tobaccos that have been carefully hand-selected and are well-aged for a minimum of eight years. The Perdomo 20th Anniversary is offered in three distinct wrappers, a smooth, creamy Ecuadorian Connecticut, a rich, earthy Cuban seed Nicaraguan Sun Grown, and a dark, gooey Cuban seed Nicaraguan Maduro. Combining these beautifully bourbon barrel-aged wrappers with thick, high-priming binder and filler tobaccos gives each blend a balanced complexity with layers of rich flavors and smooth, elegant aromas. Perdomo Cigars, a family-owned and operated company headquartered in Miami, Florida, with manufacturing and agricultural facilities in Esteli, Nicaragua. Perdomo's highly acclaimed cigar brands include the Perdomo Estate Selection Vintage, Perdomo Double Age 12 Year Vintage, the Perdomo 20th Anniversary, the Perdomo Reserve 10th Anniversary Champagne, Perdomo Abano Bourbon Barrel Age, Perdomo Lot 23, and many more. For great tasting notes and pairing information, check out the new Perdomo website at www.promocigars.com. And by Aganorsa Leaf. Great leaf makes great cigars. Aganorsa Leaf stands out because of the distinctive flavor of our Corojo 99 and Criollo 98 seed cultivated by Cuban agronomists on the best lands of Ajapa and Esteli, Nicaragua. When you smoke one of our JFR, JFR Lunatic, Guardian of Farm, or Casa Fernandez cigars, you experience the unique taste and aroma that makes Aganorsa Leaf special. Smoke one today and enjoy the signature flavor of Aganorsa Leaf. And by Cigar Marketplace. Cigar Marketplace is the first B2B premium cigar and accessories online broker that connects premium cigars and re- su- suppliers to retailers, simplifying the way our cigar industry does business. Retailers can now directly order from the suppliers they want without the wait getting customers the brands they demand. Wholesalers no longer need to depend on going store to store to find the retailer that fits their brand. This allows retailers to enjoy a one-stop shopping experience for all their store needs. With an optional monthly subscription of $39.95, this allows businesses to benefit from all order free, free shipping, 40% off second day air rates, a 2.5% cash back every six months, refer a friend program, a set discount of 10% of naked bundles, exclusive weekly deals, and more. Now members can also take advantage of the exclusive deals plus free shipping on orders over $750. Visit cigarmarketplace.co to learn more. And by Drew Estate. Check out and download the Drew Diplomat app for your mobile device. Keep up with everything going on Drew Estate. Experience the subculture that is the rebirth of cigars. Available on iTunes and Google Play. For more information, check out www.drewdiplomat.com. And as always, all the live streaming for the Primetime Family of Shows is sponsored exclusively by Drew Estate. Welcome, everybody. This is Primetime Special Edition number 73 for this Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. It's Will Cooper. I am on the red stage in the Perdomo Cigar Studios. I'm joined by uh, our regular co-host on Special Edition, my friend and colleague, Mr. Bear Duplissy. Bear, are you there? Good evening. There you go. How are you? Good, good. <laughs> uh, That's an entrance. That's how yes. you make it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, this field, this game, it's part of our past, gentlemen. This is going to be fun. There you go. But we have a whole team here tonight. Uh, so we're gonna, let's just introduce everyone because we're going to get right into it. Um, rather than do our usual banter, we'll, we'll do the banter with everybody, I guess. Um, coming over, of course, on uh, the Thursday primetime show, um, out in California, just outside of um, the Oakland Alameda Coliseum, I guess, uh, Mr. Aaron Loomis. How you doing tonight, guys? Doing good. Doing good. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Thank you. All right. So um, let's just introduce our, our guests like, right away um, because um, we'll get right in. I know these shows usually go a long time, so I just want to get right into it. Um, so we'll start off first in alphabetical order. Uh, broadcasting from uh, Florida, uh, Mr. Hector Alfonso of Espinosa Cigars. How, Hector, welcome back. How are you, Coop? Nice to see you, gentlemen. There you go. There you go. Mr. Med himself. Um, also uh, broadcasting from Florida, uh, from Crown Head Cigars, Mr. Miguel Chaudel. Thank you, guys. I always enjoy being a part of the show. It's always a good time, and I'm looking forward to it. Great. Now, when we, when we formed these shows a couple of years ago, we actually – plan on having three p- folks in here um 
And the third guy's been a little tough to get because he actually works during the baseball season um, at baseball games. Um, but we were able to get him tonight and long overdue to have him. Um, the one and only Rob Rasmussen, now with Cigar Jojo, Dojo. Rob, welcome to primetime. Coop, thank you so much for the invite, man. It's been uh, a long time coming. Every year, you have the, the show is always dated to go on the same night that the A's and the Giants play their final uh, spring training game at, um, I guess it's Oracle Park now. And so I could never make it. And this year, obviously, things have changed, so I'm just happy to be here. No, that's great. That's great. Now, uh, I'm just going to say the, the background of Mr. Rob Rasmussen is not endorsed by any means of this show. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> I, I asked Coop uh, before we went on, I said, you know, I'm, I'm, it's okay if I use it, my own background, whatever. And you said, yeah, as long as it's not offensive. I said, no, it's not offensive at all. Well, it is offensive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Speak for yourself. I think it's classic. <laughs> yeah. may, may lightning strike you, all of you guys. <laughs> but no, Rob, I mean, so folks who may not know, um, you, you are involved with the San Francisco Giants. What do you actually uh, do with them? So folks who may um, not know that. I, um, I, I'm, I do the digital scoreboard for home games, so I – I basically just score the game. If you're in the stands and you're watching or any ballpark really, and uh, you're watching the game, you're looking up at the, uh, I mean, scoreboards are crazy nowadays. They're all over the place. It used to just be, you know, your score and the picture of who's batting, but now you've got uh, expected slugging percentage on a ball hit uh, at that launch angle and with the wind blowing in that direction or whatever. But uh, I run all that, all the scoreboard stuff. So basically my job is to pay attention to the game and press the right buttons. There you go. There you go. So, um, no, it's great. Like I said, great to have you, Rob. Um, thanks so much for making it tonight um, and being a part of this tonight. So we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. Looking forward to it. Yeah, it's yeah. It's a good group. This should be a lot of fun. Yeah, um, we've had the group. I think this, is, this was supposed to be the third season. We're actually putting this group together. Um, and um, we usually have done one at the beginning of the season, one at the end of the season. Um, we postponed, obviously, the one at the beginning of the season. And uh, then I just kind of said – we don't know when, when we're going to have baseball. Why don't we get, you know, why don't we get a show together tonight and go through a bunch of topics? I don't know if we'll get through all the topics tonight. So you guys will have to tell me because we could end up going nine hours, right? Uh, which could be dangerous. I don't know if we're going to we'll do that, but, but um, certainly, uh, certainly we wouldn't we, be a first. It, it wouldn't be a first, right? Well, we did 11 hours with Aaron, <laughs> Yeah. but but that was me prodding him on that. <laughs> um, but no, so seriously, I think it'll be a lot of fun tonight to do this, right? Um, let's kind of get right into this, guys. Unless there's anything else you need to start at the beginning. Go for it. All right. So let's kind of get right into the plan to resume the season right now. And, you know, so the season has been postponed. There's various, there's various scenarios being floated about right now of, um, the plan to resume the season. For folks that may not know, most of the plans seem to involve revolving, around keeping baseball in like reducing the travel around baseball and most likely reducing um, the fan part fans who can attend. Namely, there's probably going to be no fans in attendance in the early games. And there's been three plans that I've seen floated around right now. There's this Arizona plan where everyone basically plays in the Phoenix area. There's an Arizona, Florida plan out there, which is kind of interesting where it involves basically playing in the preseason uh, locations in Florida and Arizona. And what's interesting about that is it involves a division realignment, which we could talk about, which would completely realign the divisions and break down American and National League this year. And now I've seen a third one being floated with possibly an Arizona, Florida, and Texas plan, which is similar. So there's three plans that are out there right now. Gentlemen, have you seen these plans, and what do you guys think about possibly engaging the season this year with one of those plans? I think the Arizona Florida uh, uh, is the most interesting, right? And what is interesting about that is that it's 15 teams in Arizona, 15 teams in Florida. It isn't necessarily, right, a national American, and we would have totally different divisions. We would have completely, I mean, you literally could have. Um, two teams that would never meet in the World Series play in the World Series, right? Um, and so I find that very interesting. And that would, to me, is a great, um, 
you know, kind of footnote in baseball history. That's a great question. 20 years from now, you know, what, se- what season was, you know, baseball completely jungled up and, and, and mixed up? I, I, look, any, I'm, I'm, I'm for any way baseball can be played. I think it's a, it's a good idea. I, yeah, I, I oh, go ahead. Uh, no, after you there. Well, I, I I echo that sentiment. I haven't heard of this latest one. I mean, I mean, I'm all for baseball returning to my my home state, but um, I don't know how Texas kind of plays into that, other than the fact that there's a new ballpark here. But uh, so I guess they figured it's you know it's disinfected. Um, so I'm not sure why um, where Texas comes into it. But I think they I think I think uh, Miguel hit it right on the head. I think they having two potential. Uh, a matchup in the world series that you've will have never seen and, and will never see ever again, just because of this uh, historic event and uh, of our most historic event of our lifetime. I think it, I think it's perplexing and interesting. Um, but I think the biggest question I think, and I think, uh, I think Aaron's right behind me on this too, is just the fact that there, I mean, there are a lot of players that aren't necessarily in favor of doing this. And uh, you know, if they're not, you know, if they're not prepared to play, you know, then, you know, do, are we looking at certain sit outs? Are we even looking at full rosters? You know, what, what exact, what teams are we going to be looking at? Are we going to be watching our favorite teams with uh, some of our, my, you know, some of the people in our farm system starting in the lineup? Will it be like glorified spring training? I'm going to stop asking questions now. <laughs> <laughs> I, so my question, I do have a question. If in, because I looked mostly at the, I mean, the original Arizona plan, I think we can all agree probably isn't going to work. So I kind of ignored that one. And I looked a little bit into the Florida, Texas, and Arizona plan, because that's just come up within the last 48 hours, I think. Yeah. Um, that one seems to, based on response from unidentified league sources, has, seems to have a, a little bit of support behind it. I know Texas just wants to get um, sports back in their state. Uh, I was reading something, all the stadiums have, uh, have roofs, or retractable roofs, so that you know, it wouldn't be that big of an issue. Um, I'm wondering though, if you do Florida and Arizona, I mean, the teams in Arizona aren't going to fly to play the teams in Florida, right? I mean, they're all just playing no. each other. Yeah, they, no. they play each other. Yeah, let me. What I'll do is, um, I'll share this screen real quick. Um, if folks haven't seen it, these are this is they're proposing a realignment here where there would be a grapefruit league and a cactus league, mm-hmm. and um, basically the grapefruit league teams would play each other. And, and the Cactus League the um, would, would play each other. The only thing I wondered is I think there's going to be a team off every day. They'd have God, to be- I still have to pay the Rays shit. <laughs> yeah. So my, it's, Cin- my Cincinnati Reds are back in the West Division like they used to be. Yeah. Mm. The C- Cincinnati plays in the Cactus League then? Oh, yeah. We, we yeah. moved there. We share um, a good year Arizona. We share with the Indians. I was actually at spring training this year, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Yeah, so that this is this is kind of what they're proposing here. Rob, you made a question. I, I got a question for you right out of the gate. Mm. Why do you think the Arizona plan doesn't work? The Arizona only plan. Uh, from just logistically to have enough places to play for all those teams doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And you're asking the bulk of these players to be away from their families completely this for that amount of time. I think at least if you're on the same coast, I mean, I know it's probably just a more of a placebo effect than anything because you're probably not going to be able to see your family anyway. But uh, to me, it just doesn't seem – and also I get the idea that if, if that was the, the one that was going to work, why do we even have these other plans that seem to be popping up afterwards? I don't know. I just To me, it seems like having everybody in one place, I just don't see it happening. A lot of those uh, stadiums in Arizona, too, would be uncovered. and It's 105 degrees out there. I, I don't know. I just see some teams in Arizona, sure, obviously, but uh, all of them. Dry heat, though, works. compared to playing in Florida in 90-degree in weather. Well, yeah, but, in, I mean, all those all the Florida stadiums all have roofs, don't they? Oh, the pro team, no. Right? Not yeah. the, but they're, they're playing in, but they're playing in uh, spring Minor training league. facilities. Spring oh. training facilities. So they're not playing at the Trop or the, the – the Well, they will play something. But, I, yeah. I mean, it depends on how they try to do it. I mean, if they try to, like – if they tried to do it where they just have games going on back to back to back throughout the day to get all the games yeah. in, you can get some stuff done. Um, but I think they're going to have to spread that out a little bit. Uh, the, the one thing that I read I today, don't like it. yeah, the one thing I read today that was about um, it had Texas and I don't Arizona, like, I don't like, and Florida. <laughs> it said that all the stadiums they were going to use had roofs. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or retractable roofs. So, so can I ask a stupid question? What does it have to do with it? I mean, to me, it's just the, the, the weather isn't going to be an issue because you're talking about places that are either a super hot or super hot and super humid. Yeah. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, you're not going to get rain outs, but no maybe. rain delays. Yeah. Oh, the rain yeah, delays are crazier. Yeah. So especially if you're talking about trying to get, let's say three games in a day, because you don't have to worry about getting fans in and out. Right. You have to hit a certain time for TV or radio or whatever. Um, but there's flexibility there. But if you're trying to get three games in in a day, you need to have a controlled environment. And if you don't have a roof on that stadium, good luck, man. Yeah. Yes, and so that, would, the, that would involve even less stadiums is basically what it would involve the, if you went with that, that Arizona-Texas-Florida plan. Yeah, it's fewer stadiums. And there could be some travel to play in between. I don't know how well that would be received. I, I don't know. Logistically, I, it all sounds like a complete nightmare. Do well. Let me ask you a question. If someone's on second, do the, does the uh, second baseman have to socially distance? Is it going to be really hard to throw <laughs> people out? You know what I mean? <laughs> no pickoffs. Well, that virtual, will, John yeah, Lester will be tags. happy. Yeah, John virtual Lester will be happy. Tags. No pickoffs. No pickoffs. <laughs> I was reading one thing. It said that the players wouldn't be in the dugouts. They'd be out in the stands to maintain social distancing. Yeah. This is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, Hector, I mean, Hector's not happy. <laughs> Hector, Hector, give us. Your I opinion. think this. Listen, listen, listen. I mean, uh, <laughs> guys, and and you know, I baseball is a game of tradition, correct? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I think you know. Let's look at the logistics just for a second. You have you have 15 teams in Florida. You have 15 teams in Arizona. Stadium wise, you're going to use the Trop. Obviously, you'll use uh, the Marlins Stadium. That's two. Definitely, you use the one in Disney. That's three. Uh, what you, you can still use the Mets training facility. You, you can, you're how? First of all, the fans aren't going to be allowed to go to the games, correct? Is that part of yeah. the thing? Yeah, at no least fans, for, right? yeah, at least to start. At least to start, yeah. How does that help us? We want to go to. I mean, this is going to be the chance for me and Miguel to have 15 teams playing home games in our <laughs> state, and we can't go see them. Yeah. That's first of all. That's that's the first thing. That's that's because that's, that's lunacy. That's a little I, selfish. I, it is selfish. I'm sorry, but you're you're <laughs> close to Arizona. You, can, you live close to Arizona. You can take a day trip, watch a couple games. I mean, you know, it's I, – I think – I just think anything like this, any kind of – I just think they're trying to play catch-up, and I don't think it's good for the game. I don't think it's good for the game. Aaron, we're, Aaron, we're, I'm, we're traditionalists. We want to see baseball. Of course we want to see baseball. But do we want to see – how are, are they going to play 162 games? 100, are they, are they going to play the full schedule, the full no, slate? No, no, no way. There's no way. There's no way. No? No. Victor, what if what if what if we threw out the what if we threw out the realism of it? You know, I, Miguel and I both said that we we would find it intriguing to find two teams in the World Series that would never face each other 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 than in this scenario. What if we that just only, said that that only what, fuels the talk for people every year that say, well, the best two teams in baseball were the Red Sox and the Yankees anyway. They should have been the ones that were playing in the World Series. How many times do you hear that over the? Well, that wouldn't happen in this league because we're both in the Grapefruit League. So I understand. The, I understand. You know, but the, Look, the but my my question to you, Hector, is like, what if what if and I'm, I'm gonna hate. I'm gonna hate myself for even suggesting this. What if it didn't count? Mm. Oh, no, no. And why play the game? No, hey, yeah, you think it's gonna hurt? Baseball. No. Yeah. Well, I, I would say that um, when you look at the, the way they're proposing it, look, I, I watch the majority of baseball either via apps or I listen to most of the Reds games via the MLB at bat. So for yeah. me to be able to hear games is big for me. And let's say they can they cut the season down to 100. And, 20 games or something like that. Um, I think it's worth it. I mean, these players will get, they'll get their salary. Um, we'll get to see some, some great baseball. And like I was saying, you know, we may see a world series we've never seen before as long as, as long as we keep the evil DH out of it. Of course. Yes. But what happens when the Can't detractors, the detractors who have been talking for years that maybe baseball was too long anyway, and we do 120 game, 120 game season. And for some reason in this clusterfuck, it ends up working. Then you start to get. Then you'll start to feel the movement. Oh well, baseball's too. You know, you remember twenty twenty when they played one hundred and twenty games? We should go to that. It's just. I. It's one of the last few things that's traditional that has. You know. That has yeah. Some, right. so, that, that between that Rob has, Manfred and Bud Selig, they haven't fucked up yet. Yeah, you're kind of right, Hector. I'll give so, you that. <laughs> so let me let me kind of say I agree actually with Hector on everything except for one thing. The tradition mm-hmm. of the season's already been compromised. We lost opening day. Yep. 
It's yep. gone. Okay. So right now, then and there, we, day, what you lost was the date of opening day. But you know what? It, it, there's more than just the date. There's more yes. to that. Yeah. In Cincinnati, it's a holiday. Of yeah. course it is. But didn't they take that away from you recent, uh, a couple of years ago? Well, we still start at home every year. But but you're not the first game anymore. First game anymore, right? We do start uh, in every season, but more so they've started or, to chip away at tradition. Yes, thank you. Well, thank the first you, game's not even in the United States. That's how bad it's gotten. Our opening, yeah, there you go. Our, <laughs> yeah, our opening day parade has been going on over a hundred years. Mm. Uh, it's pretty. It's pretty big in Cincinnati. But I would oh, love absolutely, to hear, I'd love absolutely. to hear. I'd love to hear your take on this. I don't because, want you to lose any of that. I yeah. don't want you to lose any of that. We you don't. Know, opening, I, you know, you say you agree with everything I said, Coop, except opening day is lost. No, no, I, here's the thing. So the, I, I agree with everything you said. I'm a traditionalist, right? I would hate this under any other circumstance. Like this great, this, this Arizona, Florida thing just absolutely eats at me. Okay. But that being said, we got to get this game back. We got to get this game back. This provides something a little intriguing. Is as okay if we were ever going to realign the divisions and stuff, this would be the year to do it. It kind of reminds me of the strike year when we went with that split season, which was I you know, obviously it was I it was horrible, especially what happened to the Reds that year. Best record didn't make the playoffs, but the season was compromised. So if you were going to try that out, that was the year to try it. And I think this is the same thing. I don't think I don't I wouldn't want to see this as any sort of a permanent solution. But if it means just getting games back and, and having baseball on TV and on the radio at night, um, I'm in favor of it. If I, if I can mention one thing, baseball would be the only sport on TV. Baseball would be the only show, right? For It would be on every household. I would think that a lot of people would rediscover their love for baseball. It's an all-American game. Um, I just, I think this is the opportunity for baseball to just like after September 11th, you remember? Mm -hmm. Um, I think this is the opportunity for baseball to say, you know what, this is America's game. We're going to entertain you guys. We're going to be on the radio. We're going to be on TV. It's not going to be the traditional, uh, what we're used to, but this is, this is our game. And we're going to, we're going to make sure, you know, it's, it's shared with the, with the fans and hopefully new fans as well. I think there's an opportunity there. No, I totally agree. Rob, I'd like to get your perspective on this. You know, you're potential, you know, you're a potential employee that would be working. I mean, you know, that was one of the concerns that was brought up by a lot of the players. So Sean Doolittle in particular was, is a, a guy that was vehemently, him and his wife were vehemently opposed to either of these schedules going in act too quick. I mean, how do you feel about going back to work in the, you know, the scenario that you've gone? Well, it's, uh, it's a good question. I haven't really thought about it, frankly, because, I don't think that um, there's going to be baseball at Oracle Park this year. Yeah. So I don't think there's going to be I, – I really don't think there's going to be any baseball, not to be the rain cloud. but Like at all? At all. Wow. Wow. But, I, I mean, it's not – I don't have any inside knowledge or anything like that. Um, but uh, that's – Breaking news. Breaking news. Yeah, right. Oh, right. <laughs> you know, no, that's – Coop That's just what I think. And, and you guys are talking about like 120 games. There's no way. I mean, we're lucky if we get half a season. I agree. At, at this point, because I mean, even if they say, okay, we can come back in, you know, in a month, you still have to have, I mean, players still have to get back into shape. I'm sure they're still training and stuff, but it's uh, game speed is different and all that stuff. There's got to be um, at least a little bit more of a, a spring training type of scenario that would have to happen. Um, I mean, we're lucky if we're – I mean, at this point, I think we're lucky if we get it back by the All-Star break, like when the All-Star break would have been. And then you get in about half a season. Um, and, but, and, and if that's true, Rob, just like you said, Miguel, what you're saying won't, won't apply because right after the All-Star break, training camp starts for football. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely be – they'll, they'll have competing agendas. You're going to have football, who, you know, people love, mm -hmm. and baseball, who we love. And now, you know, it's, you know, what, what do you do? Mm. No, I think it's, it's a good point that baseball will be the only thing on. And absolutely, they know that. Um, I mean, that didn't even occur to me, but uh, it makes a ton of sense. And honestly, like coming into this, I was a bit more on uh, Hector's side of like, why even, like, let's not mess with it. Like, if we even, if we're only going to get like 60 or 70 games, like, honestly, look, the Giants were terrible last year, but in July they were really good for whatever reason. 
and any team can get really hot for 20 games, and then all of a sudden you have some random team. And maybe that's cool, maybe it's not, I don't know. Um, but uh, at the same time, the idea that this could be that, that uh, kind of outlier season where there's teams that are playing against each other that never normally play, a World Series, I, and again, I, didn't, I don't know what the alignment was in the teams. I saw that list that you posted too, but maybe there's a chance that uh, you know, two powerhouse teams could play in the World Series that wouldn't normally play in the World Series. Or, two, or kind of cool to have. Two, two teams that are in the same division. The Reds yeah, could be playing the Pirates. Not, yeah. not that, you know what I mean? I'm just out of a you – know, yeah. you know, just two divisional teams playing in a World Series. I think 20 years from now, that is like um, – a great, you know, one of those questions, you know, uh, sports questions, you know, and, and I don't know, man. I, where, I, where were you? Where were you? Yeah. You know, I think there's an opportunity there. I mean, you could literally have. Um, yeah, the Nationals and the Dodgers could play in the World Series. Yeah. The, the, Gabe Kaplan well, the could play the Phillies in the World Series. <laughs> yeah. The Nationals have the Marlins, the Astros, the Mets, and the Cardinals. That would be a nice division to watch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah wow. That's a tough division. <laughs> That's a tough division. We are raising going to take an ass whooping in that division. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I, I, the whip, it's, it's high, buddy. His whip is high. Oh, I mean, the Giants and the A's would be in the same division. That'd be fun. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the Yankees and the Phillies, along with the Pirates. Yeah. I mean, having the Pirates back in our division, that's kind of cool. Yankees would, Yankees would run away with that in the second week. We all know it's going to – But see, they were slowly going to win the division anyway. So, I mean – this is the point I wanted to make, that we could end up with a Royals-Orioles World Series, and nobody wants oh, to see okay. that. <laughs> Awful. Awful. You know that is not going to happen. This we is could, a good we, chance. What, what a a, Mar- we could end up with a Marlins-Royals World Series. Even isn't worse. this a good chance for the National League to take back the Astros? <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's... You, are you, you're already creeping into our next topic? Yeah. yeah. Nice. That's solid. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron, what about you, man? You've been uh, you've been quiet. What 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 yeah, about? Yeah, I mean, I think trying to do anything in during the uh, you know kind of the lockdown period would be astronomically hard logistically to pull off because Nightmare. I mean, you have first off, you have to try to you know take people away from their families. There's your first problem. Second thing is like you have to deal with hotels under lockdown and how the empl- what, how are the employees treated like do they get to go home to their families or are they stuck in the hotel through this whole thing as well like are people like having to volunteer for this project and uh and how that goes and you got you know all the ancillary employees you know stadium workers and you know people running the scoreboards and all that kind of stuff um i just think it's really hard to manage it would be easier to manage if it was all in one place because you maybe have a little bit of less stuff going on or you, know, you don't have to try to do it in Arizona and Florida, um, but you know, trying to play through the summer in either of those states, um, unless you can cram all the games into the stadiums that do have roofs, it's just going to be really tough to do it. Um, but I mean, if it comes after like the lockdown is lifted, um, you're just going to get a you know you're going to get a shortened season, and if they get to play in their home stadiums and there's travel and stuff. Um, that's a little bit more back to normal. You're just having an abbreviated season. So you're like, you're looking at a strike year or a lockout year or something, you know, something going on there. Um, but I, I don't know. It's, it's uh, tough to see. I just don't, see, I don't, I don't think we'd see baseball until a lockdown is lifted kind of like countrywide. Well, here's the thing. And that's why I don't think you're going to see baseball in your home stadium this year. No. Do we, do we agree with that? That we feel yeah. like, you know, yeah, yeah. It, I, I don't. You know what I, could be interesting though. What could yeah. be interesting though is if, let's say, the season starts. Let's just say the All Star break, because that to me seems the most feasible if we are going to be able to get this to get this going. And maybe they are a lot closer to getting this done than everybody else realizes. I have no idea, but I think All Star game just seems like a fair assessment. So that gives us what eighty games, um, give or take. And so we're creeping in. The playoffs are still going to be in October. Maybe it could be the kind of thing where the playoff games are held at the home stadiums. And, like, just – I think that would just be just a really cool way to end this type of weird season. You know, people aren't going to be able to come and watch the games, but they'd still be – I don't know. I, I think there is – there's there's a lot more upside for baseball in general if they can get something together. And I've, uh, Miguel, you completely changed my opinion on this. You, I, I, I get on the way of being the half – Glass half Ooh. full guy. 
Yeah, I, I, I came in and I was I was team Hector big time. Right. And, uh, and that happens I've, a lot. It does. It does. I lose a lot of guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I'm I'm smoking your uh, your war zone right now. By the way, very good stuff. Thank you. Very tasty. Yeah. What are we all smoking tonight, you guys? Oh, I have a Las Calaveras 19. Oh, very nice. Followed by an MTZ. We'll be next. Very oh, nice. Oh, copy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have the uh, Las Calaveras green. Oh, very forgot nice. the forgot uh, the forgot the year. I'm stir. I'm got 18. Um, thank 18. you. I'm brain farting on the year. Yep. Yep. And then I I have an MTZ to follow that there up. There you go. I'm doing so, Warzone and La Carême. Nice. Ooh, nice. Oh, I love the La Carême. I just uh, finished a Pichardo, Connecticut, and now I'm on to my favorite Four Kicks Corona Gorda. Nice. Good there choice. You go. And I have something that's unbanded, so I have no idea what I'm smoking. <laughs> 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 just like I don't know what baseball is happening. <laughs> There's something from the safari. <laughs> no. Uh, Aaron, Aaron's very non-committal today. Mm-hmm. 5.2. Lower than that. <laughs> oh wow it's not very good oh, 3.9 3. got the war zone and oh man Edley grange Ch- chamuco is that how you say chamuco it? chamuco yeah. yeah that's that one's lined up for next and i'm pairing it with uh willie may's mexican style lager nice awesome that's very nice nice is, What's it, cap, is that, is cap that cap beer is that you beer know, a good catch yeah What's wait no one got it. Okay. Uh, Rob, Thanks, say dude. something for a second. <laughs> Wait, right. Say something? Yeah. So so I, I'm looking okay. at Kapler, like, giving Rob the evil eye for smoking here. I just want to just. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in the health regimen. It's not in the health regimen. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, he's, he's, he's giving you everything, all. Every, everything he says that you don't like, you picture coming from Kapler. That's yeah. hilarious to me. <laughs> Absolutely 100% true. <laughs> I feel like he's scolding me for missing leg day. Yeah, yeah. No, the, he looks, like, miserable in that picture. We'll see. Because he, he, he has to look at you as number one fan. I got to look at him for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> just wait. Just wait, Giants fans. Just wait. They hate me. <laughs> all right. All right. Anything else we want to talk about with the, uh, with the, re, with the reset plan? Yeah. Good. I don't, right. I don't like it. If the all. season gets canceled, no team can rejoice more than Bears, Boston, Red Sox. We're gonna oh, I agree. <laughs> they are in the <laughs> biggest <laughs> dump Rob, that anybody could imagine. Oh, uh, there's, there's, Al, there's Aaron who always has my back, man. <laughs> listen, always, listen, Bear, I, I agree on this one. It was what? Be a rough I, did I say that he was wrong? I say <laughs> he's got my back. Okay. You were gonna be, you were gonna be swirling that toilet for a long season. Oh my man. God, dude! It's, it was, oh, Jesus. So, interesting question: <laughs> If the season does get canceled. What happens, like, and Mookie Betts is the one person I can think of because the Dodgers traded for him. Free agent. It's the last year of his contract. Yeah. Is How does that work? They get credit. They've already decided that this year all yep. the players they get, get service credit. time. They get service time this year. Really? So it's, yep. the Dodgers are just screwed. Yep. yep. I'm into yeah. that. Yeah. So how do you feel about that trade now, Aaron? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what? Verdugo, Verdugo wasn't going to be ready even if the season started late. So you, you'd be lucky if you get him to start next season. Dude, but another year, to, yeah. But I'm just saying. How do you feel you about only miss half a, You only miss half a season of sale, though, so that's good. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm really excited to see what Jeter Downs does out of this. I kind of, I don't know. <laughs> I think the kid's interesting to me, but yeah, no, I'm the, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm definitely excited about that, that end of it. Cause yeah, this, this was going to be a miserable year. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. So we'll see what happens there. Um, I mean, the last scenario I remember is the 94 yeah. was the strike. Um, and the Phillies had the national league championship title for two years that year it was the only thing that made up for joe carter is <laughs> that so we actually got to be nl champs for two years <laughs> memory oh no and, and we were bad we were bad by the time we went into that 95 season unfortunately um so all right let's turn our attention to the baseball hall of fame which is always a oh. we, never, we never get a chance to talk about this on a regular oh. show because we're, we're just so focused on the season right but um, this year there were four in indu- there are four induct there are four inductees who are going in, um, and we'll talk about first. I think uh, well the first two are Derek Jeter and Larry Walker, who were basically they were voted on by the by the writers in, um, and then there was that Baseball Modern Era com- committee, which brought in Ted Simmons and Marvin Miller. 
Um, so for, you, yeah, you watch you, tape on those guys, Coop? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You read a lot about them. <laughs> well, I mean, Marvin Miller, I blame for the strike in 81. So <laughs> That's, I, that's I, more Marvin Miller knowledge than I've got. So. Mar- Marvin Miller was the, was the union head. Um, and he, 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 yeah, he uh, and you he, can't. I'm telling you, you gotta re, you re, you reread Jim Bolton's book, and you have a different perspective now that we're older men. That's you a read, fair thing. You yeah. read of how, you read, read now how how Jim. You gotta read that book, or if you can't, if you don't have time to read, listen to it on audio. Jim Bolton tells how he's, you know, his last year there is with an expansion team, and how the, you know, his history of the contracts. You know, no negotiation. You sign this, or you don't play. Mm. You know, it's they, they've come a long way, maybe too long, maybe too far. Mm-hmm. But you know, Marvin Miller was an integral part of baseball. It he was just like Charlie Finley. You know, you know who Red Barber is, right, Coop? Yeah, from Bro- Hall of Fame broadcaster. Yeah, Red Barber said that uh, Marvin Miller was uh, one of the top three most important people in the history of baseball: oh. Babe Ruth and Jackie Robinson, Marvin Miller. Oh. <clears throat> Over, over, yeah, Louis, was, over Louis I, Tiant, you yeah, put Marvin Miller in. I said Red uh, Barber said that. Did oh, okay. I say Bear Duplissy said that? I'm oh, just okay. saying. <laughs> fighting words. Good God, <laughs> man. <laughs> well, hey, Derek Jeter got 99.7% of the vote. Larry Walker was on his last year of uh, being on the ballot, 76.6. And he's only the second Canadian to be elected to the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Him and Fergie. And the Fergie. Well, you know, Kurt Schilling made a big jump this year. Big jump. He, yeah, he he went up to seventy percent. Finally. Eight. Um, and Clemens also didn't make quite a big jump. Clemens has kind of been stuck in that four or five spot along with Bonds the last few years, but Kurt, Kurt Schilling jumped over both of them last year. If and, there's no season, and nobody retires this season, mm. this will actually help some of those guys who are borderline because there'll be a year that they'll be. You know, there'll, there'll be a year no retirements. Down yeah, well, road. it's five well, years from now. Still, it's still, still. some guys. Could, yeah, it's that's what yeah. I'm saying. It's, there, it, it I know that, that there are guys who wait to retire. They wait a year because they don't want to retire with the same class as this guy or that guy. Hmm. So you know, they they they, lay, they lounge around. They take another contract. Bonds and Clemens are in their eighth year. They only got two years left of eligibility. Yeah, they'll both get in. Really? I, yeah. I think it's going to be tough. I think – do you think next year we could see if you Schilling, Clemens, and Mons, two of those three get in? Yep. Schilling's going gonna, Schilling's gonna to get in next year. I say – I Mons say, and Clemens get in in, in their 10th year. Oh, no. On their 10th year? Okay. Maybe. I don't think – Schilling's at 70%, which is why I think he could get in. Who's, about, who's eligible next year for their yeah, first who's, year? Yeah, who's going to That's That's what in. I'm pulling up. I'm pulling up. Oh, that's um, a good question. <clears throat> yeah, I'll let you guys pull – I did not have that one pulled up. It's okay. Uh, hey, hey, isn't it crazy? I think about Jeter. Like since he's retired, uh, you no, know, he 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 ends up um, with this Marlins fiasco, and then they, uh-huh. he gets, then he gets elected to the Hall of Fame, and he may not be able to give a speech in person. <laughs> I mean, good for him. <laughs> good for him. <laughs> All right. So yeah, it doesn't look like there's any big names coming in. Yeah, Tim Hudson, Mark Burley. I think Mark Burley's an eventual Hall of Famer. He's not going to be a first ballot guy. Nah, uh, Mark, you think Mark Burley's a Hall of Famer? Uh, uh, dude, man, that guy, that guy threw 200-plus innings like every freaking year he was in the league. Go to LeVon Tori, Hernandez. Tori Hunter, Dan Heron, <laughs> Barry Zito, uh, Arre, uh, Hermes Ramirez, Shane Victorino, Grady Sizemore, Alex Rios, A.J. Burnett, Swisher, Aaron Harang, Dan Ugla, C.J. Wilson. C.J. Wilson. <laughs> That's Troy right. Hawkins, After, baby. like, the five, first five guys, none yeah. of those guys are Yeah, none of yeah, those, man. yeah. I would say That's those first five guys, none of them are first ballots. Do you think any of those first, well, guys are no. first ballots? Yeah. No. Michael I don't know if any of those guys are going to get in. I mean, Hudson, I have to look up Hudson's years. numbers. Like, he would be the one guy I could think that might, like, yeah, sneak up eventually. on you in regards to what nice he did. Nice career nice career in Atlanta. Shot. Yeah. You need 300 votes to get in. Got a ring with the Giants, I think. I think, I think so. He did. Yeah. No. Schilling's getting Zito, in, baby. Zito, Zito did. <laughs> Zito did. I Zito actually got, Zito rewatched that, uh, that, that Zito against uh, St. Louis in the playoffs. What year was that? Was that 2012? Yeah. Where he pitched that game five, just pitched the best, one of the best games of his life, and everybody just thought he was done. I loved it. Yeah, no, Hudson's numbers aren't, that, aren't great. Does he have 200 wins? 222. I mean, only has, only has 2,000 Ks. Mm. 
Uh, Tim Hudson has. Uh, he did have a he did have a six twenty five winning percent though. That's pretty. Yeah, two twenty two to one thirty three. He could be one of those fringies. Mm. There's not a lot of uh, pitchers that are really floating around on the list, other than like Billy Wagner, Schilling, and Clemens. That's it. Yeah. I think Schilling gets in next year, buddy. I think, I, I think you're right. It. Maybe yeah. even Clemens. <laughs> With so, that, there's a lot of weakness in that in that class next year. Maybe does Omar Vis- Omar Vizquel? No one's talking about this guy. Fifty per- fifty two percent. We'll get in. I think so too. Think Omar Vizquel, Eventually, Omar, yeah. I think he's borderline Hall of Fame at best. How many gold gloves did Omar Vizquel have? Twenty eight hundred hits, man, and he wasn't a hitter. I didn't realize he had that many. Okay. He played like. Yeah, Forever. 20, 20, almost 2,900, Bear. It's interesting, yeah. And that's the magic line. I think the magic line, those guys from the guys from the big show said the magic line for hits is was the one right above where, where Buckner ended, like 27 or 2,800 hits. He's got mm-hmm. that, plus the defensive accolades. Mm-hmm. And everybody told, loves him. Yeah. If I asked you, yeah, if I asked you a question. A, he, has a, he has a ring, too, right? No, he doesn't have a ring. No, he, he doesn't, doesn't have a ring. ring. Hey, Rob, you're, 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 you're the Giants fan here, so you know you follow Bonds – probably closer than anybody else in the room here mm. if i asked you a question who played more games bonds or viscale who would you tell me mm. you know. i would probably i would say viscale it's bonds by 20 games really yeah isn't that crazy that yeah that surprises me yeah but i think barry came up well barry was around long he came up first by yeah. a few years yeah now that i think about it when did viscale come into the league in 90 80, 91? 89 89 89. He started Mariners, right? Yep. Or, yeah. yeah. He finished with the Blue Barry, Jays. What year did Barry? Barry was at 87, I remember. 86, 87, 87, 87. 86, 87. 86, 87. I, remember, I remember I had his 87 Eight. tops card. 87 tops. He had the 86, like, uh, traded. Traded. traded set. Yeah. So yeah. he must have come up in 85 then. I love nerd talk. 86. God, 86. <laughs> 86. <laughs> came up in 86. I love nerd talk. I so, really do. <laughs> Miguel, was that you that posted the thing about, uh, like, the best baseball cards? Yes. Yes. I, got, yes. I blame all of my habits. Every habit I have is blamed on 1987 tops. 87 tops with the with the fake grain border. With oh, the, yes. that, was, that was my that was my um, introduction to uh, to the Insane. to the to the card collecting fiasco. Yeah. And um, so that 87 tops will always always mean so much to me. I'm embarrassed to even say mine, so I'm just gonna move on. I won't say anything. <laughs> Come on, come on, give us a year. Those might be worth something. 87 tops ain't worth nothing. No, yeah. not shit. I, I, I really like the 73 tops. I just I'm sorry. I was, 70, I was 75 tops. I had that George Brett rookie card I sold oh, years ago. Oh, I, you know, and you know, that was my, that's been my, that was the, I like, I'm sure a lot of you guys during COVID have done things around the house and projects and stuff. And But since I'm working Monday through Friday, I haven't had that luxury, but I did dedicate myself to finishing my Pete Rose collection. Nice. And I, I saw that. So, yeah. Thanks. But the thing is, I, I have it in my office, and my wife walks in. She goes, what are you doing? Nin- 1990, 1990 Upper Deck was like, was like the transcendent year of the classic, the, classic, <clears throat> the classic late 80s when I got in. Our, our buddy on from Drew Estate mentioned the 89 Donruss. Love those cards, too. Have a bunch of those. Yep. Only one baseball no, card how many tops. Hector. Oh, Hector. tops is the only card. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. No argument yeah. there. Hector, no, I'm just, what, what, what uh, Pete Roses are you waiting on? Done. All done. You got them from, all. You got them all. all? From Sixty-three to eighty-nine. The four manager cards as well. Got them all. Top, all to- tops. All tops. Yeah, I'm a tops guy. There was no Fleer or Dunruss. They made or Fleer. Oh, I'm not knocking Fleer and Dunruss. They, they, they made beautiful cards in there. They made beautiful they cards. Beautiful cards. <laughs> cards. Yeah. I mean, Don, my Don kid, Russ had a beautiful kid, Pete Rose card. Yeah. Don, Don Russ had a nice. Kid starts food. collecting my stu- my kid's thirty-three. So when he starts collecting baseball cards, I'd look at him and go. That isn't a baseball card. It doesn't even smell like a baseball card. Because baseball cards, <laughs> yeah, no all gum. Gloss, they're all glossy and shit. Upper de- See, that was, you that can was, blame that upper deck on that. Yeah, too. upper deck. Hey, listen, boys, upper deck, man. Cards. Beautiful listen, cards. boys. Listen, I, there's a book called Mint Condition. It is the greatest baseball card book I've ever read in my life. And I preach it to everyone I know. Mint Condition. Uh, it's a baseball book. If you at all collected baseball cards at any point of your life, you have to buy that book. It is the it is just incredible. It's the it's, uh, um, I, I just that's, the, that's Jameson, right? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's Dave yeah. Jameson, right? Yeah. I have that book. Yes. I mean, the cards, those cards, those FLIR cards, and, and you know, the guys are in action and the guys are playing. We, you know, we grew up with the, the guy doing the fake throw on the sideline, you know. He's got yeah, the ball, yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Or he's, taking, he's swinging, you know. <laughs> he's in the grass out in left field somewhere, you know. <laughs> Hector was buying baseball cards when they came in tobacco packs, man. You know what I mean? Thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate <laughs> it very much. Hey, hey. I am the oldest cat in here, aren't I? Damn, that sucks. Okay. I'll take right. it. Hey, you know what, Hector? That I that that I think that's cool. So it yeah. doesn't matter to me, man. Hector, I I I hats off to you on collecting all those P Rose. I, I love it. Man. Yeah. I good job. I love it. Good job. What's and his rookie card things? going for nowadays? Oh my God. Uh rookie card signed? Over a thousand dollars. Really? Oh. And he's not a Hall of Famer. Imagine if he was a Hall of Famer. Yep. Oh, he's a – come on. He's a Hall of Famer. I, yes, yes, but it's, famer. The H, it's that HOF on the end of his signature. Oh, got it, got it. Because remember, when I started to do this, I was like, maybe I'll collect the Seaver stuff. The Seaver stuff's much more expensive. Yeah. Mm. Because everything mm. is signed HOF. And then yeah. a lot of Pete's stuff, you got to make sure you get it with authenticity, the little certificates, you know? If, yeah. if not, it could be and, – and then, unfortunately, Pete is an idol. <laughs> He's, he's a disgrace player, but he's my disgrace player. Yeah. He signed a lot of shit. I'm sorry I bet on baseball. I don't want that. Yeah. I don't want stuff that say I'm sorry. I, you know, I just want, hey. you know. So, well, Pete, but it was, you know. Pete Rose, actually, uh, in the book, Mint Condition, they talk about um, one of his cards were one of the most heavily um, uh, counterfeited. And, um, and even the counterfeited cards are not collectible for him. His first card, it's a rookie. His rookie card, it's with three, three other guys on the card. Mm-hmm. So, and it's the old thing with the little the head, just the little heads in the background. Yeah, the little, yeah. yeah. that's great. It's it, it, they just look. I, I, he still has some baseball cards here in the house because, like all kids, they never take all their shit anyway. Yeah. So you still got some of their stuff lying around, and you feel the card. Even the the the, the, the even now, 40, 50 years later, you look at it and you go, "Wow, man, look, fifty yeah. five. Look yeah. at the smell of. I'm smelling the card like a retard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> this came there was this must have been next to gum wax yeah. pack baby wax packs yeah <laughs> awesome. has anyone ever seen because they're there i mean there's a couple but it's like the most coveted car you know everyone knows which car i'm talking about the that t206 honus wagner the, the honus wagner the t oh, yeah for Coop the american tobacco play. company Coop's, he's on coop's list of guys you saw play yeah <laughs> i did not see honus wagner play <laughs> what um has anyone has anyone seen one Yes, no. I have. I've seen one. I I've collect, never had one. So I, I don't know if you guys ever follow my Instagram, but I have the full display of all the Cincinnati Reds T206 cards. There's 26 of them. I have all original T206 wow. cards. And I have it in, uh, in my office framed in a wooden frame that my brother-in-law made for me. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It looks like home base. And I, I always joke with people. I say, look, man, there's, there were two Hall of Famers. Um, you know, so they – to both of those Hall of Famers and the T206 Reds, they both had two cards each. And uh, I said, thank God I'm not a Pirates fan. <laughs> but I have seen a <laughs> – yep, I've seen a Honus. Oh, man. I, that's – that. see, that's the kind of stuff that I nerd out on, man. I mean, I think we all do. I, think I, almost, got the, I almost got the little Kellogg's one, the one that used to come in the cornflakes. Yeah, that yeah, were yeah. 3D, little 3D ones. I'm telling you that it's – Look, I know that I know that maybe people consider people. If you're not baseball people, you're considered childish. But while I was doing it, the week, the two, three weeks it took me to, to put it, finish it, I really, I was really sentimental. I really, it really made me think of another era. Yeah. You know, and, and now I come in the office and I just stare at him. Wife will walk in. What are you doing? Just looking at my baseball cards. Yep. You're 54 years old. I don't yep. care. <laughs> my wife, my wife said it. Yeah, my wife says it to me. Yeah. Hey, if we don't know, you don't know, man. All right. Tons of football fans out there that just don't know. No, it's true. Yeah, how about that Gronk trade? Oh. What about Gronk his trade. title? What about his championship? <laughs> <laughs> I was just kidding. Gronk, we don't need bro. to talk about that. Please. Hey, that Gronk, Coop. The guy's an idiot. I'm going to say it right there. That dude, he got that Bob's big boy smile all the time. I, he, Look, I'll give, you, I'll give you everything I have in my retirement account if you walk up to him and tell him he's an idiot. <laughs> I'll say it. I don't. I don't ever want him on the New York. I don't care if he's the. I don't want that expenses. moron on the New York Giants. What's the? <laughs> he, he let him go wrestle. Let him. Let him be the W. Listen, listen. Let's let's get let's be realistic. I know we're not talking football. It's a baseball right. show. But just be realistic for a second. He hasn't played in a year. 
He's lost. I saw him at the super, before the Super Bowl at one of the parties here. He's down like 45 pounds. You know, uh, what was his game? His game was he was a, 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 an, a, an animal of a man to tackle. He's going to have to put on that, that weight again. He hasn't played in a year. Uh, like Rob said earlier, you know how you got to get into baseball speed. and he, He's got to get back into, into shape. This might, this just might be, this is, this is just maybe just to stir up the fans. Rob, he might not ever play. He might never get ready. But uh, why would you go and ask your team to trade him and then they make the trade if they didn't think he was going to play? Why because would he asked for it. Because Brady asked for it. And Tampa, <laughs> it was part of the deal when he signed his contract. Yeah. Brady asked for it. It's not like Jameis went in there and said, I want some crab legs. This guy wanted, he wanted, he wanted <laughs> And so, you got to so, give it to him. I want to apologize to the fans that we have to talk about the Rob Gronkowski. That's my fault. I brought it up. I was going to bring it up as a joke, and I didn't know we were actually. Bad, we, I, you know, bad enough we had to saddle everyone with Gabe Kapler, but at least Gabe Kapler was a bad. Rob Gronkowski they, they broke a Steve Harvey statue. Come on. All right, move on. All right, yeah, yeah we'll move on. Baseball. All right. All right. Um, anything else on Hall of Fame? Well, we're not talking Hall of Fame omissions right now. We're not going to do that, right? Well, I would just – I just would like to say that the uh, – I'm a member of the Hall of Fame. I pay every year. I'm a member, and the new magazine uh, just came out. You guys should be members as well. There you go. There's my, there's my pitch. There you go. There you go. Um, hey, just one comment. Did anyone have any comments about Ted Simmons getting in? Look, Ted Simmons, Ted Simmons was a hell of a catcher, actually, when you go he back. He was a hell of a catcher. Yeah. He had a nice career. He, he did, he yeah. Got a couple of World Series rings, uh, you know. And yeah. He had the long hair. I, it was cool when he was with the Brewers. He had the cool long hair, you know. I, I, you know, but he's he's one of those guys. I don't. He he just got outshined by so many so many catchers in his era. Yeah. You know, the problem is when you think catchers in that era, who's the number one catcher you think of? Bench. Johnny Bench. Johnny Bench. <laughs> Carlton Fisk. You think of Bench, Carlton Fisk. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, Manny Sanguin. You know, you start. Thinking I see. Of I, I yeah. Funny thing is, you know, growing up in New York, I I thought Thurman was a Thurman Munson was a great Thurman player. Thurman Munson. But, but when I looked at Simmons's numbers, I understand why Simmons got in first. How many years did Simmons play compared to the, the, the limited yeah. time? Well, Munson would get the Roy Holiday treatment. I mean, his career was cut short. Yeah. Well, the thing about well, Roy Holiday really wasn't. Real hair was already retired. I shouldn't say that. Well, I think I think the thing we need to realize and, <coughs> you know, really kind of celebrate about Ted Simmons getting in is he's, he's part of the golden age of catchers. And we're right now we're in the – I don't know how to say this uh, politely, so I won't. The the shit age of catchers. I mean, when you think about you it's think about the catchers today, there's 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 no but, Hall of Famer. Y- Yachty, Buster, Buster, and that's it. Stayed healthy, yeah. I mean, the, the well, Joe Mauer, changed. Joe Mauer, even though Joe Mauer's first. Joe, I mean, Mauer's not. Mauer's not. The roles changed of the catcher. It's become a more specialized position. Well, yeah, but I think a lot yeah. of guys look. A lot. A catcher comes up. Maybe I'm wrong, or you guys correct me if you think I'm wrong. Catcher comes up, tremendous hitter, power hitter, hits for average. But after five or six years, you want to you want to extend his career. You put him. You move him to first base. That's what they you did know? to Delgado. Kid Carlos Delgado came up as a catcher. A lot of people That's don't did the Mauer at the end of his career. I mean, you know that they uh, they even they even put Piazza around first base a couple times, which is not a good idea. But you know it's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, you try to – baseball now is about to say – when you got a guy and you bring him up, and how, how, can he, how can he play 150 games for me or 160 games for me this year instead of 144? Mm-hmm. You know, how can I get him in there 16 extra games? That's I think – and Buster Posey, Buster Posey, I thought I – mean, not because Rob's on here. I love Buster Posey. He's a great player. Yeah, no, I love Buster Posey too. What a tough – what a ballsy fucking guy. So what a, big, part those, big part of those – big part of – what a way yeah, great he, to come back from a from a terrible injury and come back such a such a you know incredible. And he was oh, the MVP up. the year he came back. Yep. Yeah, that was true. his best season. Yeah. Um, but he's man, he's fallen off so much, so hard. Yeah. These last years, it's funny. I was we were taking uh, we were taking uh, our dog for a wa- uh, walk, and I was tell- talking to my wife about the show and the topics we we're going to talk about. So my wife plays fantasy baseball. Oh wow! So she's, right. Yeah, wow. So she's to- right. she's totally into it. And, um, and I was saying, like, I didn't think that the season was going was gonna to play. And I don't remember how it came up, but players like Buster Posey, who he needed to come back and have a, a, a good couple of years to, to really solidify himself as a Hall of Famer, he's hurt by this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is. You know? And there was another guy that we were talking about, and I can't think of who it was. But, you know, uh, Rob, but, to talk about what you – just to build on what you were saying there is when you look at guys like 
Ted Williams. You know, they missed three years in their prime because of the war. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it, it's not unprecedented for guys to miss out on years and some good years of their career and still get into, into the Hall of Fame. But um, it does hurt a guy like po Posey. It really does. Because he, he needs, he needs to come back and have a couple of – he needs to have a couple of pretty solid seasons. Not great seasons. I mean, he slugged like 350 last year. It was just terrible. And he just, he just looked bad. Now, granted, he's coming back from hip surgery. But, I mean, he still calls a hell of a game. He's a great defensive catcher, but that only takes you so far. But you can also look at what he's done, I mean, with the perfect games and no hitters and World Series. And, and MVP, he's got an MVP. I mean, him. Yeah. I mean, he's a career through or two hitter. He's got, I mean, a rookie, he's got a rookie of the year, too, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think World Series, uh, like for me, that's not even uh, – mm -hmm. uh, for me to get in the Hall of Fame. I agree with you. I don't I, even I'm, – I'm big on it, no, I, but I agree. That's I understand. a team – that's a team, that's a team uh, – you know, award. That's not a I, player. No, award. I agree. I agree. I agree, I agree with Aaron. I, think, I look at how he contributed I, to it. But especially, yeah, from a catcher standpoint, I mean, he's calling those games. I mean, Bochy was helping a little bit, but I, I think it's. I don't think it's necessary, but I think it's a nice feather in your cap. You just gotta hope, Rob, that you know Gabe Kapler doesn't use him um, in middle in left league. field, or left or, or DH. <laughs> if you guys have to play the DH. You know, my over and under on Gabe Kapler is 11 today. So far, you're at four. So, I'm doing <laughs> – We'll get there. We'll get there. Now, did you He's set got that the, before you saw the background or after? No, before. I had it oh. – because he – that's – there that are certain is. things – there are certain coupisms. There are certain things that depending what the group is that we're talking about, he's going to get to that. And, you know, Gabe, hey. baseball, Gabe Kapler was going to come up. And hey, I'm Rob. surprised. He, I'm going to lose the Charlie Manuel. He hasn't mentioned Charlie Manuel. We've been on an hour and he hasn't mentioned him. <laughs> I haven't. Hey you Rob, know, if if they have, we, he will be coming up. I can tell you that. There's a if, part, one of the parts he's coming up in. Well, hey Rob, if they do come out with a Gabe Kapler bobblehead, uh, I will get you Coop's address. His home. <laughs> oh, that. please get we'll me Rambo, one. Please we'll get Rambo me. you the money. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 Consider but, it done. Boy, if they have Gabe Kapler, oh my, that could be dangerous. They're gonna have Gabe Kapler day. <laughs> if they have Gabe Kapler bobblehead doll day, this could be ceramic things flying through the stadium i mean let's far, let's segue far. for just a second from bobbleheads to just the amazing gift that will cooper has given all of us by sending hector a personalized cameo oh. from bobby v that knowing was, how much i fucking hate the guy yes, it, yes. that was beautiful hector that, i'm i'm uh, and i was that okay. was beautiful man i i was super was. touched man i called so, him right away so bear there's a little backstory to that he doesn't know the backstory. He doesn't know the backstory. <laughs> it was going to be for you originally. <laughs> but what happened is, as I was kind of doing it. You made the right call. Well, listen, as I was, <laughs> as I was doing it, I realized the spirit of it wasn't going to work. Okay? Because I actually was watching the things that Bobby V was doing for some of the other people. I'm like, he, this is not going to work, right? So I said, let me kind of, you know, again, kind of take the Miguel glass half full thing. I said, this will work great for Hector, though. So, because yeah. I had a felt up. So that's what happened there. Let me tell you, you made the right call. Good call. The only thing <laughs> that could have made that better was had he worn the mustache. Right. Had he worn I, the I mustache, know, I know. <laughs> that would have been incredible. But I was he really worn the about. mustache and eaten some fried chicken. That would have been fucking great. Just First of all, if, if anyone's watching this show and have not seen that video, they need to have, head over to Hector's uh, Facebook page and see that because that is so great. It is. I was really touched by that. Yeah, it was really, it really funny. Was it was really funny. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Well, well, well. Deserved. I'm glad it came out good. Actually, it did. So, I was. Very, yeah. I, and I like Bobby V. I thought Bobby. You know, I like Bobby, Bobby V. V too. I'm a Bobby only V. One of three, only one of three Mets managers ever with a winning record. He, so. <laughs> I lived up in the New York area during the years he was there. Mets baseball was never more exciting, with the exception of the 86, 88. But he made he made the Mets relevant during that whole Yankee era. He really did. Yeah. Uh, he 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 was he was the '90s version of Billy Martin, without yes. the drinking. Yep. <laughs> without, without the so drinking. I've I've got a couple uh, I've got a couple on this dates. Do you guys want to hear them? Yeah. I'll mix them in throughout the show, and I'll see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. In oh, in 90, cool. 1994 at the Metrodome, Eddie Murray, Homer from both sides of the plate. There you go. Ooh. Nice. For the 11th he, time yeah. in his career. I say he did that multiple times. It was the 11th time in his career, and he broke Mickey Mantle's record. Wow. wow. Passed, Mick, passed, passed the Mick with 11 times homering from both sides of the plate. 
That's incredible. You, you know, Eddie, Eddie Murray, Eddie Murray is part of that, that argument I had with my kid a couple of years back, Coop. Yes, he was. Uh, I remember that. Uh, the yeah, Chipper Eddie, Jones you know, argument? The <laughs> argument was, he, my, my kid is a huge troll, and he goes, he puts on his Facebook, Chipper Jones is the greatest switch hitter of all time. That is all. <laughs> so, you know. Oh, Jesus. So I lose my shit. You know, I, I get every single Pete Rose accolade and put it down there, and he tells me, I don't care. Eddie Murray was, was better than Pete Rose. So then, of course, like any, any kid who can, you know, whose father's still around, I called my dad. I said, can you imagine your grandson just told me that Chipper Jones is the – he goes, oh, you're, he's a kid. He doesn't know. Mickey Mantle was the greatest switch hitter of all time. I go, well, what about Pete Rose? Ah, Mickey, Mantle, Mickey Mantle. Chipper Jones is fourth on that list, man. First of Four. all, that, that is – that Hector, that just – that talks about the generation of what baseball is. It goes generation to generation. That is Absolutely. a great story. Yeah. That is a great story, man. He's a troll. My kid's a huge troll. Yeah. But you know what, Chipper? I but I gotta respect him. He didn't see. He didn't see Rose play. Yeah. I saw Rose play. I didn't see Mantle play, but I did see Chipper Jones play. I but baseball was different. I baseball didn't see either one of those guys play, and I know that they're better than Chipper Jones. And I did see <laughs> Chipper Jones. I see play. Eddie. I saw Eddie Murray play. Eddie Murray. Play. Eddie Murray's problem was Eddie Murray. he yep. didn't talk much. <laughs> yeah. He was very. He, he, he was salty. Media. He was salty. Hated the he media. He was salty. Aaron. He's probably in Aaron's Hall of Fame for sure. Yeah, man. He, he is very Absolutely. salty guy. I'm him, pretty sure Jim I put him on my list of baseball players in that when we did the teams list. Him, Jim Rice, all those guys that don't That's talk right. to me. <laughs> That's right. Aaron, you're Just a Barry Bonds call, fan? We can start calling Aaron Eddie. Just call I him like Bonds. Yeah. yeah, yeah Steady was, Eddie. He was, he was Steady was so Eddie. That was his nickname. Steady Eddie. All right. Let's go. Hey, let's, let's turn to our next topic here. And this is not as fun a topic to talk about, but it probably would have been something we talked a lot about on our regular baseball show. And that is what ha- I mean, historically, the Houston Astros cheating scandal. This is great for them. Yeah, I was just thinking 100% the same thing. great. Yeah. Nobody's going to remember it. it next year. Yeah. Nobody's going to remember Nobody. it. No, you're right. You're, you're, that's a really good point. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think the whole – No one's talking about it now. now. All, of the, all the banging of the garbage cans, all the things that could happen at the ballpark this year um, will not be as exciting for troll fans to do next year. It just yeah. won't have the same feel. So I the Astros heard no, games with no fans, no shit? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you don't have to bang. You can just yell it out. Listen, Houston is leading the charge for no fans. Right. No fans. <laughs> they became – they overnight became the most hated team in baseball. Wow. Uh, 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 Yankees, that's a hard title to wrestle. Listen, with. listen. Uh, I mean, at least for the short term. Still hate the Yankees more. <laughs> Can't do it, man. Well, right. I got I got I listen, the Yankees are always gonna go down as the most hated team, yeah. but a close second is now that Houston team. Absolutely. They, they are sure. hated. What bothers me what bothers me the most about the Yankees is that hashtag. If I that twenty seven ring thing, God Guys, the twenty-seven rings. What are you counting a fucking tree? Who cares about that's, your twenty-seven? That's rings? what they always go back. They always they go. They back always on. go back to it, man. That's the only. They, that, that's that, that's the thing. The Yankees. Yankees fans can only count to twenty-seven. All they can do. And and, and, and look they, and look. They, the when Yankee they win fans, their twenty-eighth, they'll the count to twenty-eight. Fans, that's it. The Yankee fans. Look, they have revisionist. They really need to look back at their run and, and the scandal that they shamed on baseball. Um, with several other teams. I don't think it's all fair to blame it on the end, but, but look, those Yankee teams were loaded with, with, with players who were cheating or in the juice. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's, that's, that's reality. I mean, and Clemens, Clemens, Andy Pettit. Pettit I mean, Andy Pettit, yep. 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 Uh, and it's a shame. So I think it's a different scenario here. I, I, because this is a team specific thing, maybe as opposed to that was a baseball wide problem. So I don't, you know, I don't think it's totally fair to pin the, the uh, steroids spent on the Yankees. You know, this is certainly the Astros. Certainly, uh, they they got their own fate there. Um, you know, look, I think when we, if we, Rob, I don't. know, You weren't a part of baseball show. I was screaming about AJ Hinch's managing last year in that in that World Series. Yeah. Right. And I thought I was I was almost calling for his head. Okay. <laughs> It was that bad. Well, you, oh, got it. you got it, Coop. Good I got job. it. And then well they, upgra- and they upgraded. I think they upgraded. They got one of the best oh, managers stop. in baseball. No, history. stop. Yes. Oh, don't bring Dusty, Dusty into is this. a good Dusty. man. Dusty's I love gonna- Dusty. Oh, I love Dusty. Oh, I, love I love Dusty. I want to see him. I, if anyone could like, restore a positive culture to Houston, it's Dusty Baker. Anybody can yeah, wear positive culture and no playoff berths. You're absolutely right, Coop. Good no, job. He'll get you to the playoffs. He'll get you to the playoffs. No playoff wins. I'm going to lose, but he'll get you Okay, sorry. I'm going to defer to Rob and to Miguel who watched Dusty coach. That's fair enough. Yep, they're the experts here. Listen, I love Dusty. 
he from the 90 1999 from the 1990s Reds World Series team our most uh, uh, you know our the the manager that did the most for us was Dusty Baker and Dusty took us to the postseason look we never won a game uh, the Giants, in fact, uh, never forget, hit like a grand slam off us um, and put the nail in the coffin for us one year. But uh, I love Dusty. Yeah, that uh, – what year was – that was uh, Posey hit that grand slam. Posey. Posey hit the off grand of, slam. Uh, off of – oh, Matt Latos. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, Matt Latos. Matt Latos. Yeah, I was yeah, – yeah, 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 But that was Dusty was, against – Who was the cigar shop at doing when that happened? Who was the uh, the catcher? Was like Mike Hannigan or something? And you watch his reaction when Posey hits that grand slam. He's so pissed. I love that highlight. That was, was like, 2010. Yeah, we had never lost three games in a row um, that entire season. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You had the that was yeah. You were up to, up two in a best of five. Up two in a best of five. And we had never lost three games in a row that season. We fell apart. Wow. Um, I love Dusty. I uh, have been able to chat with him a little bit, a couple of times. Super nice guy. Love him. Um, he's uh, he's a he's just a, he's just a baseball guy. I think that uh, he may have bitten off a little more than he was anticipating when he took on uh, Houston. So I'm for him. I'm actually kind of uh, like thankful that that uh, this has this coronavirus thing has kind of taken some of the heat off them. Cause he's just a really nice dude yep. and he's just a total baseball guy, but it, it, as you're right. I mean, if there's somebody who can bring, you know, a little bit of balance, a little bit of uh, consistency back to, and just, just baseball, we'll talk about baseball. I mean, it's dusty. So I love that guy. Me too. Um, we may have lost Coop. I think uh, just something really funny about the, uh, uh, go back to the, the whole scandal thing. I don't know if you guys said, I did, did you guys watch the clip of Anthony Rizzo in a spring training game and he's mic'd up. Right. And he's talking to the guys in the booth and he's like, Hey, would somebody bang for me? <laughs> yeah. I, I freaking lost it. I absolutely lost. I spit coffee all over my keyboard when I first heard that highlight. I just, I couldn't, I, I been, it was great. They did a couple of games, him and uh, Chris Bryant did one too. Mm-hmm. They were entertaining. What's crazy, what's, what's really unfortunate for the city of Houston is that that was such a, uh, you know, they had the flooding and all those kind of issues. Yeah. And it was such a great story that they go on and win the World Series that year. And it's the, the, the team's first World Series victory. And it just now it's tainted forever. And, and baseball does not forget. Baseball does not forget. That, that will always be a tainted Absolutely. world. Absolutely. I, I, uh, I agree a thousand percent on that, Miguel. Baseball Speak. still remembers, you know, Look, Shoeless, Joe, Shoeless, Shoeless Joe Jackson. Yeah, they still <laughs> – they they can't let go. 1919, any... the Reds win the World Series against the Black Sox. And and uh, still to this day, people are like, well, you have five World Series, but really you have four, Miguel. <laughs> yeah. you know I mean? I'm like, Jesus. Uh, do you guys think they should have taken the rings away? No. 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 I agree. Not I agree. Not not you, can't, you can't take it away. It's like yeah. – it, they, they took away uh, what well, Reggie Bush, right? They took away his uh, his highs. He still won it. He still won it. Yeah, it was like the Tour de France and Lance Armstrong. Same thing. Yeah, they took, he still, they he still took won Jim, it. Well, yeah, and when they Jim, took Paterno's Jim Thorpe's wins, medals, Jim Thorpe's medals. They took medals. Jim Thorpe's Olympic medals. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Yeah, history is sports history is froth with people of taking away victories and wins and like asterisks. I mean, yeah, sixty-one with an asterisk, man. I mean, one of the most infamous, yep. you know, ones of all time and. I mean, he hit 61 home runs, man, in a season. He beat Ruth's record, man. Yep, and he, yep. and no one ever let him – no one forgave him. And the, the, the damnedest thing is about that is that Mark McGuire was celebrated for hitting 62. Yeah, yeah. Celebrated. Yep. Well, and, there, was a different, there was a different reason for that, though, I think. Well, in the fact that – Yeah, because Maris was dead. Yeah, well, and so people could finally give him a break. It was. I think it was. I think it was. I think it was the time with well, that. Mar- well, no, no, no. Maris also did in a Yankees uniform. Yeah, that, he's, he's, that was know, a big thing. Was you're taking, you're taking down a legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A, a, a team legend. You know, you had a, you had a great home run uh, battle that year. You had baseball was was still reeling from the the strike. Yep. Um. So I think because Bonds' record was not the same as Maguire and Sosa in that race that year. No. Yeah, but that race they, brought baseball Nothing against but I'm not taking anything yeah, away from exactly. Bonds. That's I'm not taking point. anything away from Bonds, but it was it, No, but that's that's the point. I mean, that was baseball needed that. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's unfortunate they got it that way, but they need that. Yep. But speaking of baseball, never forgetting, boys, in 1996, the great Oriole outfielder Brady Anderson en route to hitting 50 home runs that year. Yeah. On this date, had con- had, home- had led off the fourth consecutive game with all. Oh. That's not quite as exciting as uh, what is happening outside. Hector, what the hell's going Drag on? Drag race man? outside of Hector's house. Whew. Good Lord. Who, who won? Miami. That's Miami. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. Those are all. Those are all the fans. Yep. Flying. To the those are all the Jeter ball. fans flying over to you. <laughs> <laughs> any any other thoughts on on the cheating? I mean, do you think baseball is too hard or too soft or right? Look, if Pete's ever going to get in, now's the time. No, come on. <laughs> if they're going to forgive, the, if they're going to just let this be an oversight. No. It's not an oversight. Hector. It's not. They, they were they punished pretty they, hard. Like, I, yeah. I just want to, like Hector, I, I before I die or before Pete dies, I just want to hear his induction speech. <laughs> I think Pete, <laughs> Pete at his age right now is a little senile, and I would love to see his. To me, it would be kind of like Costanza with the feats of strength. I got problems with you people. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. I like you. F you. F you. <laughs> Look. Pete Rose is a WWE Hall of Famer. He deserves to be in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Um, but I always say one thing. I know I don't want to get a whole Pete Rose, but I always say one thing. Pete Rose had a chance to not take that sentence, and, yep. he, and he took it. So he's got to take responsibility. No, well, he took that before Giamatti died. Exactly. Then Giamatti, yeah. the only guy, the only guy who can, the only guy who can, yeah. who can say what really happened is dead. Yeah. And we're not going to get Giamatti's kid to play him in the movie, so we're you know he's screwed. Yeah, I mean, but I go back. He, I, everything I heard there was an out for him that would have that would have not had a life, and he would, but he didn't want to admit one thing. Coop, but it's com- It's it, that's how people are. Yeah, you know I know, that, I know, I know. I get it. I get. It. Nobody. Wants- I get it. Did you did you have to kill everybody in the house? They were home. I mean, that's you know. <laughs> <laughs> God, on, Jesus. Jesus. All right. it's, it's terrible to laugh at that, oh. but, it's, but it's true. Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to be funny or, or I'm not trying to be, you know, it's, it's true. People don't want to admit it. All right. You would have think in this day and age, you would have got a better plea deal. Yeah, that's true. All right. Let's go on to, I guess we were kind of a good segue, you know, general hot stove winter stuff. Uh, just any, you know, any general, Observation: We talked a couple about managers already. I think so. I, I think we, we beat Dusty and, and Gabe to death. Um, you beat Gabe to death. Nobody. Well, else well beat let me you. let me ask one question on Gabe to Rob. Rob, were you? I mean, I know this was talked about. I think when it, I was still surprised the Giants went in that route, even with the new GM, with the GM and the president. Were you surprised they still went this route? Yes. Uh, Hell yes, I was surprised. I, you know. Yeah. I really think I felt like, um, and now I can't think of the guy's name. He was, he was the bench coach for Houston. Joe Espada. Yeah, I think I he thought he was going to be the guy. Yeah, I felt I like he was the front runner, and and then I all won. that stuff and all that stuff came down, and then they pivoted. It, it, but it, it, he would have never lasted if they picked him. They would have. They would have did what they did to. Well, Beltran. yeah, that's that's what I mean. It, it's the same thing. So. Um, I felt like he was he was the leader in the clubhouse, and then the clubhouse set, caught on fire. So, um, I, I mean, it's it's interesting though when you think of Farhan's connection with Gabe and how they were together with the Dodgers and all yep. the weird stuff that happened down there, and the fact that he would still still being new to this team would put him put his neck out like that to hire this guy. He must really believe in him. Right is is really the best thing I can say, but at the same time, my expectations for this team for the next two years, this one included, uh, are still pretty low. So, I, I I don't feel like it's I feel like it's an it's a situation where if if he comes in and he's he's terrible and you know causes some problems or whatever, they can just get rid of him and move on, and it's just a blip on the radar. Yeah, but I don't feel like there was there was that other candidate that was. Um, like the 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 lockdown candidate that was the obvious pick. There just wasn't that guy. I think they should have gone back to Felipe Alou. Felipe is like ninety nine years old. Yeah, 
<laughs> they could have been a baseball guy. A lifer. A baseball guy. A lifer. And that would have been great when they would have came to play the Mets. He could have played coach managed against his son. There you go. I, I was I was uh, quietly rooting for Hansley Mullins to be the to be the manager. Um, he's a nice guy too. Just got bam, super bam. well respected. Um, speaks like seventeen languages. Not that that matters, but it's still bam, pretty cool. Bam. Um, yeah, I was rooting for him. I don't know where did he end up. Is he with the Mets? No, he he didn't get anything, did he? No, he's, he's somewhere. With- He's, he's a bench someone. coach somewhere. I think he's with the Mets. I think he is with yeah, the, Mets. the Mets. I think he had bench coach with the Mets. And still got passed over again. Who's the manager of the Mets now? A loose kid. Yeah. A loose kid, Rojas. Rojas. Oh. So, you know, and I think actually Rojas would have um, – I thought he was a couple years away from being ready, though. Well, he's think... got pedigree. Let's, let's see. Let's, his pedigree is good. Yep. Yep. But Rob, and he is the bench on, coach of the Mets, yes. So, uh, Rob, I'll ask you, speaking of uh, – Hot stove a little bit with signings and everything. Madison Bumgarner going right inside your division, man. How's that feel? It hurts. Time of X. <laughs> you know, I, I knew they weren't going to sign him. And I think everybody knew that. And I, frankly, I was glad they didn't trade him. Uh, just not from a baseball standpoint, just from like fan. Dude, yeah, just as a fan. And what that guy did for this, for this franchise. Um, I, uh, yeah, it bums me out that he's in Arizona, but that's clearly where he wanted to be. And it's got something to do with his horses and I don't know, whatever. Good for him. He's where he wants to be. He got paid. Um, I think the Giants made the decision not to re-sign him like three years ago when yeah. they uh, when they should have re-signed him and didn't. And they had him on that super team-friendly contract and never really made uh, an effort to, to extend him. Uh, and he didn't forget that. I think, uh, depending on who you ask, the Giants offered either the same amount of money or more for fewer years. I think they could have offered maybe twice as much money, and he still wouldn't have taken it, which is a bummer. He was ready to move on. Yeah. 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 I, so, it, so it, it, I, I do hate the fact, like, I, I knew he was leaving, but w- when I saw that press conference and saw him put on the Diamondbacks hat, I was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, I just, thought he was going to the Braves because, you know, he's, he, he lives the offseason. That made sense. Carolina. That made a lot of sense. Could yeah. have been worse. It could have been a Dodgers blue cap, man. Oh, that so, was oh, Yeah. But so I asked this question to Coop and Aaron. It seems like a lifetime ago. Gentlemen, you realize, you remember this? They, they were guests on my show in December. Uh, and I asked them this. I can't believe it's been that long already. And we're talking about it. But I said, who has the, who's going to have the lowest ERA? Mad Bum in Arizona or Garrett Cole in New York? Hmm. Do you remember I, your answers, guys? I don't remember my answers. I think I yeah. probably said Cole, but. I think we may have both lean towards Cole. Yeah, well, say Cole. Aaron said Cole because he didn't think Mad Bum was going to have a full season. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I mean, he was right about that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know how I'm good at predictions. Yeah, I, I, I like I like I like Bumgarner going to the Diamondbacks. So, um, you know, again, I, I'm I'm big on Tori Lovello. I think any team he can make any team competitive. You know, it's not I, um, a bad place to pitch now either. No, it's not a bad place to pitch either. Listen, that's uh, the the problem with Cole going to New York is not everybody can play in New York. Mm-hmm. Nope. Yep. Well, you know, not everybody can pitch in New York. It's a tough. It this, the place eats you up. Yep. That's how come I have such great respect for David Cohn. David Cohn to me, David Cohn is, is you never hear that guy's name in, in, in any conversation about being, you know, being great. But that guy pitched great in New York for the Mets, pitched great in Minnesota, pitched great for the Yankees. It's a New York's a tough fucking place to play. Not just pitch the play. There are guys who just couldn't, you know, they can't Ed, Ed Whitson. Kevin uh, McReynolds, who was a star on the West Coast. Mike, a who is star. It? Who was the guy? For, yeah, who was the guy Hector that the Mets got from Denver? Not Denver, but Colorado. Oh, Mike. Uh, Kadire. Hampton? Hampton. Mike Hampton. Hampton. Yeah, Mike Hampton. Yeah. Oh, you're talking pitchers. I was gonna say Michael Kadire went and played and didn't Atlanta, do well. Atlanta, right? Didn't get the Kadire going to Atlanta? Yeah, but Hampton could hit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like a pitcher who can hit, buddy. <laughs> hey, yeah, remember he was a Marlin for like. A tuna sandwich. He was here for like a week or something like that. Him and Piazza together. Yeah. Uh, by the way, yeah. It's um. How about like you know? How about the what do you call it? Uh, Rendon. What well, Brett Saberhagen didn't pitch well in New York. Mm. Frankie Viola didn't pitch good in New York. 
No, Frank Vail had a he had, for that one year with the Mets. He was one year he was solid. Yeah, it was okay. The same okay. with um, who, Bob Ojeda came came to the Mets that year, and he was he was he came from Boston. The, he, he came, came from but, Boston. but he was contending for Cy Young that year. That first year he was at the Mets. Right, he came from Boston. He played. He played in a. That's another tough place. Yeah, to talk about. yeah. I think what Dwight Gooden would have done if he pitched somewhere else. Oh my God! <laughs> oh. At rehab. <laughs> <laughs> Put him in the middle I, of fucking nowhere. He might sidestep the whole thing. Who knows? <laughs> the rehab team. Fine, you talk yeah. about a guy everyone thought was going to be a Hall of Famer his first two years it was Dwight Gooden. Yep. I mean, that's that's he was he was him him and Strawberry coming up in the mid '80s, and I being in New mm. York, the uh, straw stirred the drink. Yeah, mm. the Mets the Mets took the back pages over from the Yankees from like '83 to '88. Yep. 89, so, actually 89, and, maybe. And, and, so. speaking, and speaking of Strawberry, Billy Bean and Strawberry came up at the same time. Right. And, um, you know, it's a, that's a little bit of that money ball if you yeah, guys read that book. What, yeah, one was a head case and one was a drug addict, man. The, the yep. best, I'll get a Daryl Chant going at a baseball game was nothing better than that. Yeah. Yeah. You could, there were two types of Daryl Chants. So the ones where they were rooting for him and then the ones yeah. where you hate him. Yeah. yeah. It was just how you did the Daryl. Yeah. Forever Giant. Yeah. Is Daryl hey, Strawberry, hey, like, do you think – okay, every, I think everyone talk, you know, just mentioned Dwight Gooden being a Hall of Famer potentially, right? First two years, just unbelievable. If, he had ne- if drugs had never happened to him, you know, that, that kind of trajectory. Do we, have, do we collectively have the same feeling about Daryl Strawberry or is it more on the fence? Uh, I think he could have been something – yeah, the drugs destroyed him. He, he should not have went to the Dodgers either. Well, he but it was a dream scenario for him. He was going to go I, to the Dodgers and play with Eric Davis. He was going to play with his homeboy. I got know, it. And it didn't work out. Yeah. It yeah. just didn't work out. Hey, hey, I got a, I got a question, hot stove for Hector. How do you feel about uh, uh, A-Rod and J-Lo possibly owning the Mets? That came I out. I saw that yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A-Roid. <laughs> J Lo, I mean, think about all the she could do. Maybe the outfits for the team. Yeah. Some line stuff. <laughs> yeah. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody is better than the guys who own the Mets now. There you okay? go. There you Anybody go. Is better I, I think the Wilpons are classic. The Wilpons <laughs> suck, Coop. They suck. <laughs> they suck. Careful, careful if you're gonna have a team in the most expensive market in the in the country, spend money. <laughs> They're always going to be. They're you always. Think, but, but could could it, okay. In all seriousness, let's let's take the wolf out of it. This, why that's kind of the scenario bothers me is every time I see one of these these athletes take over a team, right? What happens? What happens? With look at Miami. Then, we traded away two uh, MVP my, back Miami, to back MVP. The Marlins traded away two back to back MVPs. Yeah, I we mean, traded we, away Stanton and traded away Yelich. Yeah. I'm going. So we, have, Michael, we have possibly we they have not we because I'm not a Marlins fan per se. I watch the Marlins. I root for them when you know. But right now they may have one of the best minor league systems in baseball right now. Right, but they also traded away that uh, who was the pitcher that came up last year? It was a stud. They traded him to Arizona. Caleb Smith. Uh, oh, no, uh, um, not Caleb Smith. I yeah, can't yeah. Remember. Our ace, our ace pitcher came from the Marlins for the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, via the San Francisco Giants, by the Christian way. Christian Yella came <laughs> from the the Marlins. Yeah. Uh, 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 Rio was a was the last uh, was the last the last big thing that the we have nobody left to trade. Now. Uh, but heck, we went ahead picked, yeah, Starling Cast- Starling Castro finally got out of Miami. My gosh, anytime these athletes ahead. have taken over the teams, right? It's not good. All right, and you go into other sports. Look at Michael Jordan, what he's done with the Hornets, right? Wayne Gretzky with the Coyotes. Maybe Mario Magic. Gomez Pittsburgh was Magic the only has thing. done well with the Dodgers. Look, if it's a when it's a yeah, star but it's not his sport. I think, it's, it I might should, have. Been, I think, you should you should paraphrase that by saying when a star player does it, because when a guy who's you know the stars I, I I just don't know star players maybe their expectation is, is too high or they they look at things differently but it's it's what, what Billy, billionaires do better. Billionaires John Middleton soccer. with the Phillies, right? I'm just saying yeah. billionaires. Oh, John Henry with the, John Henry who said, "Hey, I own a baseball team now. Let me go buy a real baseball team." Yeah. <laughs> sells our team, you know, it goes to get the buys the Red Sox. Oh, yeah. Listen, uh, it, I, I, Jeter and G, and Mattingly, and, and they won't fire Mattingly, loves Mattingly. Mattingly's not going anywhere. And he's probably got Mattingly on the cheap. I, I don't know. Would they, 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 they won't be the worst. If there's a season, I don't think they'd be the worst team in baseball this year because the Rangers are still, the, the Rangers are still going to feed the team, right? Detroit. So, 
Detroit. <laughs> Detroit is still going to field the team. Baltimore, but the Marlins, you know, when when are they going to when are they going to start bringing up some of that young talent? When is that? When is that going to happen? Zach Gallon, that's the name I was trying to. Think yeah, yeah. Of. Zach Gallon. Yeah. Yep. That trade made no sense to me. Kid's like 22 years old. He comes up and pitches like a stud, and you trade him for a guy who's 17. Mm. Make any sense? But I digress. Sorry, I didn't mean to kill the conversation. No, no, that's all right. <clears throat> that's okay. I mean, so I was gonna mention the other guy. Rendon obviously leaves the Nationals this year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do, you, what do you guys think of that one? I thought he – I actually thought he was going to the – um, what do you call it? I just lost my job. What? what? Dodgers? I, I, yeah, I didn't think – Yeah, I you know, I was thinking it was originally with Chicago or the Rangers, though. Mm. Yeah, the Ra- the Rangers were in on that, man, for, yeah. for a long time. Yeah. I, I was actually really – I'm not an American League guy, but – Me I, neither. I was really yeah. hoping to watch what Rendon does with the Angels. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. They've got they've they've locked up um, Trout, the best player in baseball, right for the rest of his life. And yeah, and, the, and for me as a baseball fan, one of the things is, are, when are they going to build a real team around him? And I think Rendon was a good first step. Yeah, but they got that albatross of pools. Yep, and they yeah, don't have a pitching staff. How many how many years is up? The pools only has like what two seasons? I think up? two more years. Yeah, two more years. Yeah. I wanted one hundred eighty-two million dollars a year. Or something. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but you you know. Hector, and we mentioned this on the show last time. I know we wanted to when, when when Patrick from Halfwheel was on, uh, you guys at KMA, he talked about the historical significance of, of Trout. And I, and I totally agree with you on that. We're seeing a player right now. The player of our generation is Trout. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. yeah. and now Rendon, hmm. he go, he's going to be playing with that guy alongside. You, 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 we, you know, that's a, that's a one-two that's unbelievable. I don't know Let if me you tell you something. Oh. I, I, I'm sorry, Miguel. I think Trout is the player of this generation. Sure. There's I no doubt. So. And I thought that Harper was a close second. Yeah, but he hasn't really – But he hasn't. I, 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 I was very happy with Harper last year. I don't know if you guys yeah. saw. I Considering don't have who it, he played for. I don't have it on me, but MLB I The can, Show, I, They someone just did an article today or it was yesterday, and they brought up uh, MLB The Show, uh, his like – the scouting report on Trout, like before he got caught up, and it's hilarious. I mean, if you read it, it's like he's, he's going to be an okay hitter. He, yeah. That's all he can do. He's not much of a not much of a, a defensive guy, and it was just great to read that and see how wrong they had it. It was great. Original scouting it's, reports are comical, man. I mean, it's just they just like everyone talks about it's. It goes back to Moneyball, right? Where I love that quote in that in the movie when Brad Pitt's like, "I've been at those conversations at those kitchen tables." When you say, "What well, I know this game, and I know when I when I know baseball, and when I know and I know, and with your son, I know, and you don't." Yeah. 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 And you don't. I mean, it, it, you know what? And it is a pleasure. I mean, I, I, I don't get to see him a lot in New York, but and actually, that's not true. I've got we've got a couple of good young players on our team, but I love to see a five tool guy. Yeah. When he's, uh, you know, when you see a guy who can run and he can hit, he can play defense, he can throw. I mean, Jesus Christ. You know, Trout, watching Trout and play. And luckily, I don't get to see him that much, so I don't get hurt that much because he yeah. plays out of California. <laughs> but, Hector, but, you know, you, what you were saying is it's exciting to see a young guy play like that because of course. I, I wasn't around the, the Mickey Mantle days or the Hank Aaron mm-hmm. or the Willie Mazes, right? But you saw Griffey play. I did you saw see, Griff play. I did see Griffey. Trout, to me, is a whole nother level. I mean, to me, Trout is – if he continues on his trajectory, I mean, he's – it's unbelievable. Yeah, that's – we look at that. And, and that's a guy, and, and we were talking earlier, that's a guy who may retire without a ring. Yep. Hmm. If Mike Trout retired today, we have, we've had this conversation about a few people. If Mike Trout retires today, you have to do 10 years. Yes. yes. No. It, you it, have it to, depends, depends you have how he retires. Years. You have to okay. play 10 how years. He retires. I think it depends how he retires. I Sandy Koufax, how many, pick, how many seasons did Sandy Koufax pitch? It was like nine. Yeah, nine. They well, they made a few exceptions throughout the history of of the Hall of Fame. Being Clemente, you know, Clemente gets in the first year after he passes. <clears throat> Listen, I think if Trout was to if something was to happen tragically to him, you know, or his career is cut short, Lou Gehrig style, you know, that that's it's possible, you know. Yeah. But if he just says, "Hey, I'm done," he walks away from the sport. Yeah, mm. That can't might walk, go wrong. Really- can't walk. How away long has he played? How long has he played? Nine, nine years. Nine. God, he's played nine years. But, but, yeah. Well, like eight and a half. Eight and yeah. a we saw, we saw him play. We saw him play. It's a 19-year-old kid, guys. We saw, oh, my God. I think man. I've only seen him play live once. That's a tragedy. 
Yeah. Like I need to watch him more often. He comes okay. to Oakland all the time. He, he you have the comes to guys. Texas all the time. I see him play. I've seen him play I've quite seen, a bit. He's magic. I've, he is. I've magic. seen Acuna live more than there I've seen. Go. I was going to tell you, you got those two guys in Atlanta who are just fabulous. Yep. Yeah, Soto. Atlanta's an exciting Soto. team. I, I look, I, you know, one stands always. I've seen Soto play Soto. a lot too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Aaron with the Soto comment. Yeah. yeah. He's I look a stud. Like, yeah. Yes. Just doesn't have the speed. Right. And then the guy the Reds brought up last year, what's his name? Oh, uh, the Punisher. Um, that guy, uh, man, that guy had Aristides or whatever. Yeah. Are you talking Aristides, about him? Aristides. Yeah, I, don't I, think, I don't think I don't think he's gonna do that again. No, no he's oh, like twenty six. Yeah, but every, every time you saw him bat, it was bombs yeah. away. This guy. <laughs> but you see that you see that happen every once in a while, you know. Kevin Moss. Yeah, he had, he yeah. Had, know about him. What is it, yeah. Mike Cameron? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kevin Moss, Aristides man. Aristides Aquino. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And, and those cub, those young cub players from a couple of years ago. Well, the, uh, Duvall had a hell of a year with the Reds too. Like that kind of and he when he was twenty six, twenty seven yeah. too. That when yeah. he was just just hitting lights out that one season. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the Giants do? We trade him away. <laughs> yep. Um, listen, listen, hold on. First of all, Rob, you have three World Series rings. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to just for the for everyone to know. I only let have personally get, let I only me go have get one. my violin. Hold on a second. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I sat it. through a lot of bad baseball to get to that. <laughs> yeah, but you said, you know, there are there are men, there are old men who have died yeah, in right. Boston and Chicago not seeing a world <laughs> story. <laughs> and you've seen three. <laughs> three story. Yeah. I got, I, I, in I six walked, years. <laughs> I've walked in three World Series parades. Yeah, yeah. Wow. High five and random and people got, that I didn't even know. I and just then you, got, you know, you got these two 90 year old guys at Wrigley going, God, I hope that fucking goat doesn't show up again today. You know, <laughs> you know, you know yeah. we got it good. It's good. It's that's great. I mean, you know, to see one, Jesus. to see one is incredible. Yeah. yeah. I got to say, you know, just a couple of hot stove, one hot stove note that I think was one of the best signings uh, was by the Reds. Mustakas. Mm -hmm. Mustakas. Yeah. That and was. They, a, and they grabbed him from the division rival, which I. That was a Castellanos great sign. too. Yeah, Castellanos, yeah. yep. Uh, yeah. And we, we brought a guy over from Japan as well, our first Japanese yeah. player we've ever signed. Yeah. Castellanos so. is a really, really And, and the best player. thing is you, you did exercise the option on Freddie Galvis. Yep. Which yeah. I like Freddie Galvis. <laughs> yeah. I'm a Freddie Galvis. We should have never got right, rid of him. Put you right over the top there. Yeah. Well, I'm a, I'm a, we should have never got rid of him in Philadelphia. That was a mistake. You guys got Didi, though, so you should be happy. Uh, well, we, we hope we have Didi. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he played a one-year deal, so uh, – um, no, look, we, we got, we got DD and we got Wheeler. Um, you know, so those were the two, but the DD one, I hated, I hated that. I hated that move. <laughs> Why? I, it, that was, that, I wanted they lost people. Wheeler. They lost but Wheeler. Lost. It was, it was, yeah. yeah. I mean, we overpaid for him. I'm not going to say we didn't. That's a lot of money. Well, he was going to get paid. Trust me. It was, it, he was going to get well, paid. I, look, look, Mr. Middleton's going to spend money. He, he, he's, he's got a little bit of that Stupid George Steinbrenner. Of money or whatever he, he's got that. He, John Middleton's the closest thing I've seen to George Steinbrenner in terms of opening a checkbook in recent years, just overpaying for guys. I mean, and I, he overpaid for Harper. I'm not going to lie on that. Yeah, yeah, but. yeah. But I, I, you know, we were through all these baseball shows. Um, I really thought that the idea was to have Harper for one year, and then they were going to go all in this year. And, and obviously, with everything being postponed, uh, I think it's really thrown probably the Phillies' plans off with Harper. It, it does. It definitely does. So are they going to sign Mookie Betts or what? I think they're going to make a play for him. I think they're going to absolutely make a play for him, yeah. I absolutely I'm sure think I'm sure there'll be rumors about the Giants making a play for him. But listen, no, no as reason. long as Mookie Betts does not end up in pinstripes, <laughs> any of y'all can have him. I don't think it's going to happen I will, there. I will, I will be the happiest guy in the – I will be happy I, for I you. Think, I'm think a we, huge I, Mookie guy. As long as he doesn't end up, end up in pinstripes, he can play for anybody else. Yeah. There is one – I love the Yankees for one reason, and they took Giancarlo Stanton. <laughs> And he, he, he's not he's not holding down this uh, this Giants roster any more than it needs to be held down. Yeah. So, cheers to the Yankees. Yeah. <laughs> the, the was this by the way as far as Yankee free agents go, was this one of the quietest Yankee off seasons I've seen in history? Yeah. They spent three hundred million on one guy. Yeah. Besides Garrett Cole. Besides Garrett Cole. Yeah. Oh, besides besides three hundred million, they, it's yeah, a lot of money. They're, 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 okay, <laughs> quite no, as amount. Yeah, I, 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 meant, I meant to take that part out. Yeah, they didn't do anything else because it all went in. I never seen them put it in like that in one play like that. 
Hold on. Let's let's give some credit. Let's give some credit to the best fiscally run baseball team in in, in the majors. Thank you. Talk to me. Let's talk to me about how Oakland manages to win. <laughs> Oakland manages to win ninety five games mm. every year. <laughs> Oakland. Oakland is insane. Yep. I, 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 Oakland is insane. They and they didn't make really. I'm looking. Uh, I don't. Doesn't I didn't, matter. The, they the didn't need to make the moves. They have. They they home grow it. Yeah. And they do it that way, and then they trade them away, away. and they keep this. They keep the system built underneath, and they just keep doing that. I I thought they were going to spend some money on their. I thought they were going to spend some money on their pitching staff. Well, they got a lot of young guys that are ready to go, coming back from injury. That I think that are going to do well. Yeah, Lazardo and Puck for sure. Those guys are. I think going to be good if they can stay healthy. Puck's so good, man. If he comes back, that guy's got some. Yeah, look at it this way: Ford's coming back next year, stronger than ever. Who is? Four. I lost. We lost the uh, Cindergard. Cindergard oh, yeah. to, to the to the uh, Tommy John. Oh, yeah. But uh, you know, Mets Porcello. Hey man. So, no. It's it's a. <laughs> can he give I'm me? Not, a, I'm not against him. Look, Another guy. Can he get, if he can give me 170 innings. Not this year. You know? Well, not this year. But <laughs> you know, if, uh, the idea was, can he give up? Can he give? Hey, a Waka. Walker when he when Walker came up with the Cardinals, he was a very exciting kid to watch. He was. He's still only like twenty seven or something. Some crazy yeah, number. Crazy. And he's been crazy. in the league several years already. And he's only You feel like he's yeah, you feel like he's, I, he may be older than that. I just threw that out. But he uh he is one of those guys that's a lot younger than you think he is. And yeah, Porcello I mean, is a solid signing, Hector. You should be really pleased with that. I he's my problem as a number problem five still starter, is, sure. Yeah, four or five. Bottom of the is, bottom of the rotation, man. My problem still is how much they spent on 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 getting Kano, on Cano and mm. and the reliever who couldn't get anybody out last year. Oh, my God. He was so bad last year. Well, it was the seams, man. The splitter wasn't working. Or slider. That Nothing slider wasn't working. working. The curveball wasn't working. The splitter wasn't working. The <laughs> fastball wasn't fast. It was – and then, you know, Familia. I guess Familia must have contaminated him. Because <laughs> Familia, <couldn't get, laughs> Familia couldn't get anybody out either. Yep. <laughs> it was just it was awful. It's, I blame it all on Benitez. Armando Benitez? <laughs> It's a joke. Poor Armando. All right. Uh, Anything else on hot stove, guys? No. I do have a pitcher note from 2012, if you're interested. This one's one's much better than the last one. On this day. I'll I'll ask, on this date, who do you guys think is the worst pitcher to ever throw a perfect game? Oh, that's great. Humboldt. Phil Humboldt. But he did it on Mother's Day, so that doesn't count. Dallas Braden. (laughs) No, you, you, uh, these, those will be my two answers, although I don't know everybody off the top of my head. Uh, Philip Humber. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. On this day. Perfect game. Was it with the White game, Sox? Uh, yeah, on the White Sox, Sox yeah. against the Mariners. Yeah. And a, uh, an interesting uh, Rasmussen household note on that, that was the second or third year that my wife had played fantasy baseball. And, and she, she she picked him up for that spot game. start. Spot wow. start. She streamed him for that game, and she kept him wow. the rest of the season. He was terrible course, the rest of the year, course. but you she kept him because that was her guy. <laughs> I think for Christmas, I bought I I don't know if I bought it or I was gonna buy her like a, a Philip the jerseys, you know, like the jer- yeah shirt. Yeah. So this is this is a, a coop my favorite uh, my favorite Philly. Can you read that? Uh, let me see. Go up again. McCutcheon. McCutcheon. Oh, yeah. Okay, now I say, yep. Favorite Philly. I got this one on clearance. I love Andrew McCutcheon. I like him, too. I, I like him, too, yeah. With I mean, the hair, though. With the hair. With, yeah, with the, the hair. hair. With, with the hair. Hair or not, I don't really care. There's yeah. there's certain guys. I've, I've, I've worked for the Giants. I've been doing games since 2006. And so you see guys come in, and there's certain guys who really interact with the fans really well. And watching uh, McCutcheon and um, Curtis Granderson were two yeah. of the guys that always – they're always chatting with the fans and they're in the on deck circle or just uh, just laughing and having a good time. And that's to me, that's what baseball is all about. Just being he was like, a fan favorite with the Yankees, fan favorite <laughs> yeah. with the Mets. I mean, he's in Detroit. Everybody, they loved him. Everybody loved yeah. Chris. Yeah. yeah. Just watching yeah, those guys I, interact with the fans is a lot of fun. Yeah. I'd have to say Humber is probably the worst because it was Glenn Barker was the other guy I would put. But, he, but I think Humber, Glenn Barker at least was decent. Humber was 29 at the what time. About, what about the kid in Detroit? I think he, he – Armando threw, Galarraga. Yep. Armando Galarraga. And I think, like – Prove my Jim point Joyce. for a later discussion. Yeah. Jim you never, Joyce. You never, ever hear, heard about him after that. He pretty much, oh. I think, went down to the minors, and that was his career. 
If you, if you watch that play, you got to blame it all on Miggy because what the hell is he doing fielding that ball? I hit straight to second. Yeah. But I digress. Okay. Why don't what I do is I'm going to read a quick couple of commercials and we get into uh, the next piece. Um, yeah. So let's do that. Uh, I want to mention Illusioni Cigars, deep in flavor, deep in your mind. We are not industry standard. Illusioni Cigars. And I want to welcome our newest sponsor, Aventura Cigars. Aventura the Explorer is the first creation by Marcel Noble and Henderson Ventura. Immediately after lighting up the Explorer, the Mexican wrapper will delight the aficionado with its dark chocolate flavor. Also, after a while in pleasure, the Dominican filler will flatter the aficionado's palate with wonderful spicy and lovely aromas and will unite it with the wooden sweetness from Ecuador. Try Aventura the Explorer and explore the wonderful experience. So I'm going to put up uh, – this was kind of – I don't know if you guys saw. We, we, we did add this late into the notes, but I want to put this up right now. Um, this is a little uh, exercise by Bear that, that he – I have my pick. This is good. This is good. Okay, so let me. uh, I am, of course, I'm not ready. Apologize. (laughs) I'm not ready. He wasn't ready. Um, This is kind of, I guess, base. Bear, why don't you give the intro while I pull it up here? Absolutely. So, um, so as as our audience knows, and and I think everybody in this room is aware, I'm I'm a I'm I'm the history guy. I'm a big historian, and and I. I, I absolutely love history. I, I share kind of like Rob's been doing tonight. I show share this date in history all the time. And, and I, I, it's something that I always like to look back on in, in terms of significance and perspective and, and things. And, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of fun activities going on with all the social engagement and a lot of stuff, uh, you know, online to, you know, during all this COVID-19 and everything. And, uh, you know, history actually got involved uh, with this and they put up a grid uh, that Coop's going to show. Uh, we're going to do a play on it. But basically, it was a grid of nine different mo- significant moments in history. And it says you have to pick three moments that you would want to be there to witness. And, you know, there was the building of the pyramids, the landing on the moon, the babe calling his shot, you know, significant moments in just general history. So I thought it would be great to do a baseball edition of this. And so uh, I put together nine moments. Uh, you know quintessential moments am i saying these are the nine greatest moments in history no but i would say that they're pr- they're pretty close and so the idea gentlemen here today is you have to pick three out of this grid and uh so uh, the first the first three spots are uh, roll, roll it up a little bit coop roll it up a little bit coop so you can get on the screen here so okay. the first one is bobby well, it's thompson not, it's, not, it's not coming up at all hang on it's on the screen it's so. on the screen just just scroll up okay. or scroll down sorry my notes are showing up on the screen, actually, is what I'm seeing. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Scroll, down, scroll down, down and we'll scroll, still see it. Scroll down a little no, bit. No, but I don't think the audience is seeing it. That's yeah, yeah, they're seeing it. They, yeah, they are. Okay. Just, the, just the scroll problem. down. Scroll down some more. Hang on. I know what the problem is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have, I have a – The I problem have, is you're not scrolling it. down. So no, the problem <laughs> is I have, I have a separate window. is trying to figure this out here. I have a here separate window. I have a separate okay. window. The, so so the, first, the first one is Bobby Thompson, the shot heard around the world, Okay. Bobby Thompson hits the home run <laughs> off of Ralph Branca. Ooh, fucking Russ Haas is the, the Giants win the pennant. The Giants win the pennant. That amazing call. That amazing moment. There you, um, go. There you go. The babe calls his shot is number two. The catch by Willie Mays. Polo grounds over his shoulder. And what a, the second part that people don't realize is he fires that back into second from deep center in the polo grounds, which is like 10 miles long. Yep. <laughs> Would have been you a know? home run anywhere else in the world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anywhere else in the world. 420 feet. It's, it's the, something the, like Grand Can- the Grand Canyon is shorter than fucking polo grounds. So, all right. So, next up is the first baseball game ever played. That's a nod to my, uh, to my good friend, Miguel, who's on the show today. Mm-hmm. The Cincinnati Red Stockings playing against the Cincinnati, the amateur Cincinnati Great Westerners. They beat them 45 to 6. But it's the first That's professional Lord. baseball game ever played. 45 to 6. I didn't so, know that. Don Larson's perfect game is number five. Number six, Bill Mazarowski. The only time in history that a person – a baseball player hits a game-winning home run, uh, get a World Series walk-off home run. But Game 7, Joe Carter did it, but it was not Game 7. It was Game 6. So Bill Mazeroski still holds that record. Game 7, 1960 World Series, he hits the walk-off home run in Game 7. Jackie Robinson's first game is the number 7 moment. And the number 8 is the luckiest man on the face of the earth speech by Lou Gehrig. And number 9 is Hank Aaron hitting the 715th home run of his career, breaking the coveted babe ruth's record of 714 so gentlemen you have to pick three that you have to witness and uh, the effort that i also made here gentlemen is like and and there there are there is a little crossover because we do have you know a couple of gentlemen that were actually lucky enough to 
witness a couple of these things. Um, I think just a couple, um, maybe just one. Um, <laughs> There's yeah, actually one. just one, There's just one. one, just one. I think. Well, no, you, uh, all of us. Coop saw the first game. Yeah, that's video. true. That's, that's true. true. Yeah, that's true yeah. story. So, um, but I I went ahead and I picked uh, I picked these nine because I think for the most part I think we can all agree that these are nine if if not the nine top moments in the game they're definitely top fifteen. What right? I like about what I like about this too is that the people on the comments they can play along. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you could comment even afterwards. This is published as well. So. So, so who goes first? I'd love to go first. Can I go first? Okay. I actually, I, okay. I want to see if I'm right. I'm going to, I'm actually going to write this down on my, cause I, I, I had predicted, I, I wanted to predict Mel, Miguel's choices. So I'm going to, I'm going to write down my notes. I want to see if I'm right here. So uh, hold, hold on one second. I'm sorry. Uh, well, as a Giants fan, you can probably predict two of mine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, <clears throat> let me, let me go first here. I, I really love this and I put a lot of thought into it. Now you, the first one is Hank Aaron's 715th home run. Now, I'm not a, you know, I, I wasn't a Braves fan or anything, but Marty Brenneman, that was, this, that was the first game Marty Brenneman got the call in 1974. Mm. He, he gets the job. He takes over for Al Michaels as the, as, the call, as the radio guy for the Cincinnati Reds, and he gets the call, Hank Aaron's 715th home run. So as a Cincinnati guy, um, I would love to experience that in person with a little transition radio listening to Marty. Uh, number seven, Jackie Robinson's first game. Um, Jackie, um, I have pictures of Jackie in my house. I have books on Jackie. Um, Jackie uh, is a personal hero, and I would love to have been there just to see it on, uh, on April 15th, 1947, by the way. Um, two years before I think even our military was integrated, by the way. Mm. It's true. And then um, most people would probably think I'd pick number four to see my Cincinnati red legs, red stockings, but I didn't pick number four. I actually picked number six, Bill Mazeroski's hits uh, walk-off home run in game seven, not because I want to see him, but because Roberto Clemente was playing uh, during that game. And oh. I, would, I would give my life to see Roberto play one game. And if that's the game I can see, I would love to see it. There you go. Damn, I missed it, man. I missed it by one. I had, I had, uh, I can't get it in there. Four, seven, and nine for Miguel. Mm. So I had you pick in the first game. Um, man, damn, I missed it by one. I had the Hank Aaron call though. Yeah. I don't know for some reason. I just that was my hunch on my on my that was my third wild card one for you. Yeah. I love uh, what is Aaron? I'd love to hear Aaron's. Yeah, I want to hear Aaron's. Uh, I would go with the Bobby Thompson game. Uh, and the Ma Mazeroski game. Um, I, I really dig when there's like these unexpected moments in games. Like that's just a, like when there's a completely, sh just a shift in the game from a, like in, in this in crazy turn. I, that, I just dig that a lot. Um, and then I would go with the Hank Aaron 715th home run. Nice. Just a, you know, a very historical moment for, you know, breaking a record. And, and all, he, he was getting death threats. Yeah. All the stuff he went through to, you know, to do that, uh, you know, the pressure he was under. I understand Jackie Robbins went through an immense amount of pressure, but, you know, Hank was taking a beating as well in regards to getting up to that record. So it was, it was a big deal. Yep. So it's, I nailed it. Aaron doesn't hate everything. That's correct. <laughs> I will, I will hate on one of the picks in a minute, but. Thank you. <laughs> Wouldn't be complete. <laughs> Rob? Um, well, I got to go with number one, Bobby Thompson shot her around the world. Not only is it just baseball lore, but it's Giants lore. Granted, they were the New York Giants, but so what? It was also against the Dodgers. That makes it even that much more sweet. Uh, I'm actually going to make a bit of a change. Um, I'm going to go with number one. I'm going with number five. Perfect game in the World Series. Yeah, I mean, I that's I, I don't know. I, I I love pitching. I love pitching performances, and that's the type of game. Like if I'm going to go back and like I have been rewatching old baseball games because we don't have any new baseball games. It's that type of stuff that I like that I find myself going back uh, and watching. And that was a, a, an addition for me. I was going to go with number three. But I'm, I'm going to go back down with uh, one, five, and seven. Jackie Robinson's first game 
Absolutely. I mean, that's just – that. not only did that change baseball. Well, um, if Martin – changed. Go ahead. Martin Luther King said that, you know, a lot of people give him the credit when he was alive – um, for really starting the civil rights movement. But he said he gave credit to Jackie Robinson because when, when Jackie in 1947, um, uh, Martin Luther King was still in college. Mm. And so Jackie was a personal hero of Martin Luther King. He yeah, had, I mean, it, 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 it changed said, our country. It did. It changed the country. And by yeah. the way, the Bobby Thompson shot heard around the world. I mean, I've read several books that, um, that people that worked for the giants at that time wind up saying that, uh, that they were tipped off on Ralph Branca's pitches. Really? Uh, yeah, with uh, with a telescope. Interesting. Really? I'd never yeah. heard that. Yeah, Google it. It's it's a uh, it's a true story. So they were the original cheaters. They were yeah. the original cheaters. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. So those those are my three. I was gonna go with the catch, but I mean, I would have loved to have seen Willie Mays play. Uh, God, I would love to see. You Willie would Cubs. in the Bobby Thompson game. So you would have seen. Oh, Mays. Fair no, enough. But, you know you who? Know, you know, know who was on deck? You know who was on deck? Willie Mays was on deck. Willie, right? Millie, Willie yeah. Mays was on deck. And yeah. you know what? Uh, you may never get to see Willie Mays play. We'll never get to see that. But you could see Willie Mays Hayes yes. play. True story. <laughs> it's like shit, but. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, you guys have probably done this, and I don't want to sidetrack, but is that the best baseball movie ever? No. 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 Wow. Well, so it's a hard <laughs> no then. Not, not, e not even close. Wow. All right. Moving on. <laughs> Coop. Hector. Hector. Right. Hector. Hector. Yeah, Hector. All right. I'll start with the one I saw. I saw Hank Aaron's home run. I was eight. Beauty. And we were did, watching that game. So I remember. Live? Did you watch it live? No, we watched it on TV. We didn't yeah. have baseball here in Miami. Yeah. Okay. But we watched it on TV. I remember my dad made a big deal for us to watch that game. Uh, all, all the old that. Cubans used to love the Reds, man. All those old Cubans, you're probably watching it because, because of the Reds. Tony, we we like anywhere Tiant played, anywhere Tony Oliva played, anywhere <laughs> anywhere Tony, uh, Tony Perez was at. Whoever was a Cuban player, we loved them. Uh, so it's that one. I guess I I would have loved to have seen the Lou Gehrig speech because I'm I'm kind of a I, I like that. I like touching moments like that. Believe it or not, one I of the greatest that. one of the greatest baseball pitchers of all time was him sit, standing at that microphone man oh yeah yeah so that would have been my second one and i guess you know i i remember willie mays in the in the twilight of his career say hey he willie mays was a met yeah, uh, was, and was. the catch would have been i've seen the catch many times on video uh highlight channels so i i think those would have been my three hector i want to go back to the moment since i i, I I didn't want to. I didn't want to date you, and I didn't want to insult you. I I thought there oh, might bro, be a come chance. Come on, I'm 54 you, years old. That's not I, a problem. Well, yeah, I didn't. I didn't know if you had had a chance. So I, I yes, you didn't see it live. You saw it, but you saw it on television, and it, you saw sure. it at the time that it happened. I know you were eight. What was that like? Now the the perspective of it, historically speaking, like we can all kind of relish in it, and and we can exhaustedly discuss the the significance of it. But for as an eight year old boy, when you saw that, what? Can you can you tap into that? I, I'd just love to know what your feeling you know, it's, was. It's, it was a long time ago for me. I mean, I'm, it's, it was more than it's 45 years ago. I mean, but I I remember that we there was a lot of things surrounding that. We had just moved down to Miami. We were living in my aunt's house uh, while while my father tried to find work here in Miami. And what we had, you know, what my my relationship with my with my parents with my father has always been about baseball. If it wasn't for baseball, we really wouldn't have much to talk about. Baseball and boxing, because he never, you know, boxing is really big on the island. Uh, he never got into football or anything. So, so to watch that, it was one of the few things that we could do together. And it's probably one of it's the only memories I, you know, my dad's still alive, but it's the only memories I have of him that are that are good. That mm. I can, you know, that 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 there's nothing nothing can blemish that. Mm. You know, so watching that was was good, and then watching. You know, getting a chance to watch, uh, getting a chance to watch the, and I don't want to, I don't want to take away from your list because you still got a couple of guys to pick. But if we had time, I think all of us could probably add a couple of things that are monumental as well. Uh, you know, and, and I think these are, don't get me wrong, this is a great list, but I think I'm, I'm kind of because of age, and I'm, I'm the oldest one here, and a lot of these things were are, are historical. I would wonder if we could if we could touch on that maybe if we have time touch on some of the things that we saw in our lifetimes that were historic that you know we saw not obviously live 
what we saw on TV and we saw on modern TV where it wasn't, you know, one camera behind the catcher and one camera in left outfield, you know, but those would be, those are the three. And, you know, if you have time later, I'd love to do that. That's fantastic. Coop. All right. So let's, let me kind of, we'll start off with Hank Aaron. I did not see that. The way I saw that home run, I was younger and I, I remember I was allowed to stay up and watch the local news at 11 o'clock to watch that. So, and I didn't even know if it had happened or not. That's because again, you didn't have, unless sometimes they broke into TV and stuff like that. That was the only way you can get like a news update. You didn't have internet. You didn't have anything. So I remember I watched, I only got to see maybe 30 seconds of it. Right. But I saw it. I mean, I saw it the night it happened. So, and you know, big, it was a big deal. I didn't, I was younger. I was like six. So I didn't really understand the whole, the whole racial thing and stuff. I didn't learn about that till it was later. I thought about it at the time it was the battle of, of, of Hank Aaron versus Babe Ruth, the candy bars, Baby Ruth versus O. Henry. That was, that was it. So, but, so I would have liked to have been a part of that whole experience is what I'm saying. So I'm picking Hank Aaron's 715 because it is something that's very historically significant in my mind. Now my right. second pick um, the 1960 World Series, historically, I lo look at it, and if that's a World Series, I would have, like, loved to watch on TV. It was one of the – you know, that was a wacky the, World Series. The, right? the Pirates the Pirates uh, scored so fewer runs than the Yankees. And, and the Yankees, I clobbered them in the three games they won, but the Pirates, like, were scrapping in that, that series. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and that's one of the biggest things about that World Series was when the Yankees won, they destroyed the Pirates by right. one. Yeah, and, and the Pirates squeaked by, and it was amazing World Series. Yeah, I, I I agree. So, given if we had a World Series like that today, it'd be like one of the epic. We'd be talking about this in a historical context because of what it is. So, so I'm picking the Mazeroski uh, walk off home run in Game Seven. I, I think that's a that's incredible for for the game of baseball. Something that actually happened on the field. Now, here was the problem with my last my last pick. I kind of drew a couple of Phillies analogies in, right? Because uh, then I came down to Don Larson's perfect game and the Lou Gehrig speech. So here are the Phillies analogies. And, all right. Holiday pitched the perfect game, but it wasn't the World Series, right? Mm -hmm. Now, while, he, while it wasn't anything close to a Lou Gehrig moment, the most, I think the most, the biggest moment in my lifetime as a Phillies fan was the closing of Veterans Stadium and they brought all the old players back. And the last player they bring out uh, from the outfield is Tug McGraw. Mm -hmm. And everyone knew he was dying. It was the last time we all got to see, to see Tug McGraw. Um, that's the most poignant moment I, I can remember, you know, as a emotional baseball fan, because everyone knew there wasn't a dry eye in, in the audience. The stadium was packed. So I'm going to go with the Lou Gehrig one based on that, because I think even that was more historically significant, obviously, than Tug McGraw that day. So um, I would have liked to have seen that. So I'm going to suck up. So I'm, I'm going to go that. But there were a lot of good choices on here. To, 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 look, to pick three was very tough. Yeah, it's a great list. Yeah, great list. Yeah. Yeah. Bear, how did did I did you guess what I had? Or uh, no, I I I I only guessed Miguel's. I I just I thought that oh, okay. Uh, okay. Miguel Miguel and I uh, I've often said this is I think Miguel and I are like separated at birth in some yeah. ways. Like okay, <laughs> right, I'm gonna I'm gonna did you did you you didn't do your three yet, right? I I no, I have not. No, okay, I I'm gonna predict what your three are. Okay, go ahead. All right, I'm gonna say seven, eight, and four. Those are pretty good guesses. Okay. Oh, Those are pretty good guesses. That's a uh, no, but no. <laughs> he's, he's, clo he's pretty close. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, I, I, so number four. Um, uh, if that I, wasn't on, I would have been surprised. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, were, the Reds, the Red, they were the Red Legs, and then they, they wind up becoming the precursor to the, to the Red Sox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah the, the, I mean, the first baseball game ever played, I mean, for, for the student of the game that I am, for the love of the game that I have, you know, they're, they're just, they're, they're, that's the, that's the moment in the history. It's the reason we're here. Yeah. It's the, it's the reason why, it's the reason why, you know, Miguel gets all excited about his team and he goes to opening day parades and he has uh, that, you know, that baseball card collection. He's, the reason why Hector was so touched by Bobby Valentine's message that Coop sent him. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the, it's the only thing that Aaron doesn't hate. 
You know, it's it's he hates parts it's, of it. It's it's why Rob has ten jobs, you know, because he won't give up the one job that he absolutely loves, which is to work into this game. It's it's interwoven in your entire lifetime, Coop. You know, you 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 have such a you have such a vast array of fan right. fanship. You know, it, this is the perfect game, mm-hmm. and it started with that moment. It started with that day, and so I there's no way I can't pick number four. Um, I didn't pick the number eight. Uh, number eight's the one that's incorrect. But okay. I I I picked number one. Um, the shot heard around the world. To I came me, close to picking that one too. By the way is such there's there's so many incredible moments in that moment of history with the shot around the world don newcomb is pitching a gem don newcomb hall of famer he's pitching a gem they take him out of the game yep. and they put in branca who branca had pitched uh exhausted he had only yeah. been pitched a ton sounds like dusty was managing <laughs> <laughs> there we go i love it sorry and Br- branca's you know, Branca, you know, he's lost into history as this, this, the butt of the joke, right? He's the Bill Buckner of Dodgers lore, right? And maybe, maybe not that bad, but he, I mean, it's pretty damn close. And I manager- go back to Russ, I go back to Russ Hodges, who was calling that game. And he, he gets criticized in broadcasting history for being such a homer in that moment. I mean, the guy just keeps going. The Giants win the pennant. I mean, he is hoarse. He is. It's it's terrible audio. I mean, it's he won't shut up. It's fantastic, and it's just beautiful. It 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 is a picture perfect moment. It is the thr- It is truly the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. It was is the that, moment a beautiful moment? Who was the manager? Who was the manager? Uh, because I know he switched. Right. He, the 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 Dodger manager was. Um, Oh, come on. Help me out. Oh, shoot. Uh, I know yeah, this, too. DeRocher. De- yeah. DeRocher. And then DeRocher goes to the Giants. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, oh, yeah, just, yeah, I absolutely love that moment in sports. And then last is uh, is number seven, uh, Jackie Robinson's uh, first game. Absolutely. Um, at, uh, we've already kind of talked about it. He He changed the game forever. Mm-hmm. And he changed this country forever. I actually wrote it. I actually wrote an essay uh, in college um, that one of my professors tried actually to get published because I talked about. I, I wrote about how Jackie Robinson actually did start the civil rights movement, and mm. and how it was his, that was the significance can, of the con- complete changing of the fabric of our country. Ken Burns' Ken Burns's baseball was built like that whole story is built around that event. Like if yeah. you if, I, if you watch the story, of, which is excellent. Never series. watched the whole thing. You really should. Uh, you really, really should. But yeah. it was built. They it, that was built as the most important event in baseball history uh, in Ken Burns' eyes for a lot of reasons. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying it was. It's hard to. It's hard to argue with that. It's hard to argue with it. exactly. But it was very interesting how he built that whole story up to that moment. You know, and, and, J- and Jackie Jackie played one year for the Kansas City Royal or Kansas City Monarchs. He gets the opportunity. Um, you got to remember when they scouted him. When uh, Branch Rickey scouted him, Branch Rickey, an Ohio guy. Uh, Branch Rickey had basically lied to him and said, hey, I'm going to put together a team called the Black Dodgers. And so had kind of misled Jackie the whole time. And then when, you know, this Jackie Mm. takes the opportunity, he's a man with a temper, has a very strong personality. He has to hold back and he wins rookie of the year. The first rookie of the year um, uh, award was given out that year and Jackie gets it among Mm -hmm. all that pressure. And I think that's an, that's historic. Yeah. And uh, as a nod to Jackie, I'm w- I'm wearing my uh, Montreal Royals shirt. Yeah, nice. forty six. Spent forty six with the Montreal Royals. But yeah, those are those are my those are my moments. Um, I yeah, I I thank you guys for uh, for you know humoring me and 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 participating in this. I think it was fun, and, and for everyone else that's in the chat and kind of chiming in too, to appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed it and. Yeah. Um, I like looking back on moments in history, and this was uh, this was certainly a fun exercise. So thank you very much. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Fair. I good, thought that was good great. choices, man. Yeah. Great picks. And and one last thing <clears throat> I can say about Jackie is that if you there's a book um, by Ed Henry who I think works for Fox News. Yep. He wrote a book called um, Forty Two Faith, and it's all about what what role um, faith in Jesus Christ played 
with mm-hmm. Jackie becoming right, right. And in that story, he highlights a lot of guys who did not want to play with Jackie and the Dodgers and how a lot of those guys it changed their lives. You know, a lot of them went to their graves saying, you know, if it wasn't for Jackie, I would have been a racist my whole life. But Jackie proved me wrong. You know, it was pretty amazing. You know, you know there was one comment from Joe D in the chat room mm-hmm. about, about Red Sox comeback in 2004, but belongs on here. Mm. The only – Listen, yeah. I mean – if y'all would, y'all would have hated me if I put that on. So, <laughs> yeah, what, what do you replace it with? Though? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, that's a great point, Rob. Exactly. What do you what do you replace? What do you take off of that list? I mean, I'm the Red Sox guy, and I can't take off any of those moments. It's a tough one. That's a tough one. Yeah. I don't think you take anything off the list. I think you make some addendums to the list. Yeah. Listen. Right. You could take you could take Willie Mays off the list, maybe. And the babe calls a shot because I mean, none of us picked it. I mean, listen. How about that's Gibson? Is Kirk Gibson? I mean, that's another one I would have maybe put on this. Kirk Gibson is a good one. But the argument about the babe calling a shot, this is what if anyone had picked it or if anyone, Aaron, since you said, was that the thing you wanted to hate? I wanted to bring that up. It was the catch, but I'll catch. Okay. I want to get into that for a second. But the reason I have with the thing that I think is great about debate. It would be great to witness the the calling of a shot. Is we could decide for ourselves, right? We witnessed yes. it. If we get yes. to witness it in history, we could mm-hmm. decide: did he call a shot, or was it was it was it all was it all was it all legend and folklore? Yeah, right, right. Listen, I think that we could all add right off the top of our heads five, six, maybe ten, ten things. And I like I always talk about regionalism being such a big deal. Listen, uh, the 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 Keith Overman book that he did with Dan Patrick. He grew up a Yankee fan his whole life. Yankee fan since he was a kid. Father had season tickets. The family went to the Yankee games. Bucky then hits a home run to beat the, the Red Sox off Mike Torres. That's the day he stopped being a Yankee fan because no, no moment ever would top that as a Yankee fan there for him. Look, uh, the, and, and some are just, some, you know, Jack Morris's performance in the World Series. Mm-hmm. You guys remember, you know, you guys yeah. have to remember yeah. That was uh, on, they they were streaming that they they stream uh, they were streaming that on Facebook yesterday. Yeah, and, talk about and, performance and summer, in the World summer. Series. You talk about Bumgarner's performance in the World sure. Series. Yeah, 14. no, absolutely. He, absolutely. That entire playoff series, he he he, he won. Carried that, that whole team on his back. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. From absolutely. from the wild card game on, the Mets coming back from twenty two games against Chicago to win the pennant and then beat the mighty Orioles in the World Series. Yeah. The yep. Buckner play. I mean, I've, I, yeah. I, I, the first, the first wild card team to ever win, you know, to to win the World Series. You know, there there are a lot of great, there are a lot of great moments. You know, Pete Rose, Pete Rose breaking the record personally for me. Yeah, you know, well, we, we know why why Bear didn't pick the Buckner play though. Well, of course, I can feel, and and the Torres one hurts as much as well. You know, I don't know if I would put the actually had no. That's actually an interesting point, Rob. I actually had I when I was putting it together. I there were a couple of ones that I took out and put in. I actually had Mookie Wilson's uh, hitting through Buckner's legs on Mm. there, and I I replaced it with I actually replaced it with the Garrick speech, and I'm glad I did because we wouldn't have heard you know Coop's take on it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I mean that's why I had it. Yeah, and I'm but I'm not saying the the Tug McGraw moment was as big as that either. I'm being very oh, honest look, on that. Tug, Tug McGraw was, was a Met. I mean, to – Yeah, know, yeah. Was it was important for you. It was important to me, exactly. Yeah, for me, you know that I mean? was a like, big that's moment. That's not taking anything away from well, it. I mean, most people watching, in the country didn't understand that moment, like, I, like the, unless you were in Philadelphia that day. Watching Seaver throw a no-hitter wearing a Reds uniform. I mean <laughs> – Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How look, painful I, I, is that? You I, know, I, Joe I, Carter's home run. You I mean, know, Carter's home run. Kirk Gibson. Brett Pintar. Or just My, oh, oh, yes. fine tar, yeah. yeah. Oh God, you know, talking about like on a personal level. I mean, you know, as a ten-year-old kid growing up in Cincinnati, all you would hear about is Big Red Machine, Big Red Machine. And so in 1990, when we won the World Series, it was like the young fans yeah. were like, "We have our heroes now." So talking about like on a personal level, that to me was so substantial in my life, making me a lifelong baseball fan and and historian. I. I that That's moment you steamrolled the a's right yes yeah, steamroll- swept them yeah, swept yeah. the a's yeah. And, yeah. and you know it was just one of those things where you know if the reds don't win the 90 world series as a 10 year old kid <laughs> do, I, do i fall in love with baseball as deep as i did right i dabbled in collecting cards in 87 88 89 and boom 90 hits and it was like wow i mean to see a cent to see a town like cincinnati come together like that i mean this is incredible M- miguel you know, one of my favorite moments with that year was um 
<laughs> Rob gets it every year with the you know yeah. with the Giants, but you know it's been thirty years. <laughs> it was a while ago, man. <laughs> <laughs> There's been yeah. a lot of bad baseball since. Although we should have had it in 16. Yeah. The Cubs never should have won that World Series. I'm telling you, we get to, we it three run lead. We could not keep a three run lead that year. That's why Melanson Melanson, how do you say it, got so much freaking money. But we get that game. Then you got Cueto on the mound after that. Forget about it. The Cubs did not want to see that. <laughs> we we, we may, won that World we Series. Talk, we may talk about that 2016 World Series in 10 or 15 years as one of the you know again historical mm-hmm. World Series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, one of the great ones we had, um, because again, the two teams that were involved, the stories behind that, and the fact that went right to uh, nothing like that game seven was. So okay. real quick, I, I think Hector mentioned this earlier. Like for me personally, the the three biggest moments that I've witnessed like live for me for baseball was eighty nine wow. World Series. Yep. yep, yep, yep. I'm sitting down, like I'm in my dad's like lazy boy chair that I never got to sit in, but he wasn't at home. And I'm sitting there, and I'm, they were getting ready to interview Willie Mays just before the game. And the TV turns off. I'm like, what the hell is happening? And then the house starts shaking. My sister grabs me because I don't know what's going on. I was 12. Uh, yeah, I was 12. And my sister throws me under the table. I, I remember I hit my head on the table, and I was mad at her because I hit my head on the table when she put me under the table. And this is the 89 world, the 89 earthquake in San Francisco, by the way. Um, and so that is like the first memory for me that pops out <laughs> from from there on it's it's uh, selfish giant stuff um i got to, i was working matt kane's perfect game um jonathan sanchez should have had a perfect game but juan uribe had an error at third base um and uh barry hitting 756 those were uh those were the biggest and i was working that game too and um, you know when you talk about the earthquake game what's amazing is there's some great pictures out there of conseco in his car getting gas in total athletics uniform because mm. they didn't change or whatever, something like that. I remember watching. Uh, ES- yeah. ESPN did a 30 for 30 on it. I think yeah. it was pretty yeah. good. Yeah. And there's, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of documentaries that was, I mean, to just, it, it's funny when you look at that, it's like, you think of as a Bay area kid and Aaron, you, I'm sure you can yep. agree with me on like 90% of this. It's like watching the Giants and the A's in the World Series. Like, it does not get any yep, better. Exactly. And what is more California than having a gigantic freaking <laughs> right. earthquake yep. that ruins everything? And the, and the Bay Bridge falls down. And, I mean, and, and people died. I'm not making light of it. It's just – it was from – it's just a hugely historical event and to be part of that. And the guy who I, I've worked with, uh, Kevin Skillings, he directs the Giants board show. Uh, and I've worked with him since day one at the Giants. He was working that day. He was directing the board show for the Giants that day. And he talks about that a lot. It's just, it's just crazy to think about. It's just, I mean, even nowadays, like, like I'm at the ballpark sometimes and like the, the, the room starts to shake or whatever. And I think, oh God, are we having a big freaking earthquake? What's going on? But it's it, in the World Series, Giants and A's, big earthquake. It's, it doesn't get any more California than that. Yeah. And that's to, to Coop's point earlier at the very beginning of the broadcast when we were talking about how this country needs sports, this country needs baseball. Absolutely. Because they played, they played a game just a couple of days after that, and it, it brought the country together. The Subway Series after 9-11, you know, it's yeah. just there, – there are moments like that that we've, that we've lived through and seen, and we've seen that baseball. Baseball. As you could tell the tale of, uh, uh, of the United States through baseball. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Now, now, I, I have to hear which one Aaron hated – yeah, the catch. I want to hear about. Well, this. it's not hate, I and mean, that's a strong word. It was just that, and not, not, to, not to take anything away from the play because it's a fantastic play, you know how expansive the field is and all that stuff. But um, I just think that Jim Edmonds' catch was a su- far superior mm. catch than that. That was the most amazing catch I think I've ever seen in my life. What about Gregor Blanco? In yeah, Matt Cain's perfect game, yeah. diving That's, away. Yeah, from the same, yeah. same yeah. thing, diving yeah. away from home plate. That yeah. was, I think, that was like the fourth or fifth inning when right. that happened. Maybe sixth when that happened. And once that happened, we all looked at each other. We're like, yeah, it's gonna happen because mm-hmm. there's in every no hitter or perfect game. Some there's always a play like that. That's yeah, sure. just like once that happens, you're like, oh, that's it. It's I was actually happen. I was actually playing softball while that game was going on, and the umpire has the game on the radio. I'm in the box, and like it's the la- it's at the last out. We just shut down the ga- shut down the game. I'm standing in the box, and we listen to the- that game finish out. Oh, that's oh, awesome! It was that's nuts. incredible. That's, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good great. memory. Yep. 
I'm telling you, baseball baseball is so romantic. Mm. It is. is. It's so romantic, and and it's funny because what's 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 a touching moment? Look, I, I have two guys on here right now. What's a touching moment for me? What was an exciting moment for me? What was a heartbreaking moment for them. Buckner's yeah. a heartbreaking moment for for Bear. Yeah. The Marlins beating the Giants on the only game ever, only playoff game ever ended with a put out at home in the in the playoff series in the the. I think it was their first super, the first World Series that they won. Yeah. They, they 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 beat a, a they beat a Giants team that was much better than them. Yeah, and they mm-hmm. won it. They won, you know, they won it with a put out. Uh, Ivan Rodriguez holds the ball. A guy gets thrown out at home. Game. I forgot who got thrown out at home, but you know, there baseball. There's romance. There's such romance to it. And I and I and I I, I remember being a kid. We all wanted to be baseball players. Oh yeah. Know? And it some of us found out. Yeah. Some of us found out early that that's not it. You know what I always wanted, what I always loved about it? I love the All-Star game. Mm-hmm. I love the All-Star game. I love the All-Star game when everybody lined up along the foul line, you know? Yeah. And, yes. You know, I'm not an All-Star guy. guy. And I no, always, and it's, it's, to me, it's always the same moment. And now, you know, third base, and, and, the, and the guy always tips his yeah. hat, you know? Yeah, that, yeah. that, to me, is one of the most romantic things about baseball. I know somebody's going to go, oh, that's silly. No, when, when batting average is counted, when bat, batting average was yeah, something. The All-Star game has changed, but like, we had the All-Star game at, uh, at, then, at that point, AT&T, in 2007. And I worked that game. Ichiro hits the inside the park home run in that game. Uh, but the day before, we did the, uh, the Futures game. That was a ton of fun, too, with all these kids that you don't know who any of these kids are. It was, it was a nightmare for us in the booth because we're trying to figure out who everybody is and make sure we have the right graphic on the board and everything. But uh, all-star games, man, like going back as a kid, watching that, I remember Bo mm-hmm. Jackson hitting a home run off of Atlee Hammaker. <laughs> or no, 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 not Atlee Hammaker, Rick Russell. Yeah. It was Rick Russell that he hit the home run off of to like lead off whatever 87, 88, 89 yeah. World's, or, uh, All-Star game oh, that was. I remember you guys had a, a young rookie, John Montefusco, wasn't it? John Montefusco. Count the oh, game. Yeah. He was a it's Yankee, a I think, for a while. I think he like, went to the Yankees. He, start, he started as a giant, I, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Right. He started, starts the All-Star game, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Well, the All-Star game, and I promise when Coop, said, asked, uh, when Coop told me that Rob was going to be joining us today, I, knew, I told myself I was not going to get in. We were not going to get into the Bonds discussion. <laughs> but one thing I will say about Barry Bonds from the All-Star game perspective is I remember when Barry Bonds hit a home run in the All-Star game. And that was when I was a fan of his. And I remember sitting that game, watching it with my father and my father's boss at the time, a man named Jerry Wentz, who uh, – who was kind of, you know, when I was really young, was kind of like a, a, a an uncle figure to me. And he had a, he was very, uh, very traditional. And so he didn't like a lot of these cool kids and he didn't like Bonds because of the earring. I remember oh, that. Oh, yeah. The <laughs> that, dangly the, earring. The yeah. dangly uh, cross earring. And he's like, this guy's a bum. And I said, he's going to hit a home run. Watch this. And that was the first home run I've ever, I've called a lot of home runs sitting in games. And that was the first home run I ever called. And that was a nice. great moment. That's, I the, thought. that's that's the only Barry Bond story I want to hear from you. <laughs> it's the only one I want to I tell got you. One. I got one Perfect. to throw out. If we're talking about good moments, 92 in LCS, Francisco Cabrera knocks one through the left side. Barry Bonds picks it up and wings it offline just enough so Sid Bream can run from second base to score. That was an, a, a fantastic turn of events. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> so you, you know Hector mentions the Bill the Bill Buckner play and I'll tell you guys and Coop knows this story so October 26 1986 Coop knows my birthday it's October 26 I was three years old and I and my parents absolutely will argue this to the to their to their graves that they that I don't remember this I remember that moment and that was I remember that moment that was that was my first baseball memory i mean how tragic is that right but that was my first memory of baseball you're welcome it wasn't just the play (laughs) it was my father's reaction and he was beside himself he was livid he was up and down the house just cursing up a storm and he was so angry and so animated i don't think i'd ever seen my father that way my father's an excitable guy and he's been pretty passionate his whole life but I'd never seen him like that, and I and didn't that, look understand. At, look at the other side of it. I'm 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 in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. I'm in the army. My son is several months old. He's less he's less than six months old. He is. I am listening to the game 
on a, on the radio, listening to the game on the radio. And he's laying across, you know, he's laying on, you know how fathers and their kids, yeah, you, know, you lay your yeah. kid on top of your stomach and, and you're, you're fucking with him a little bit, but you're, you're listening to the game. And I almost threw the kid off me. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, this development would have been forever changed. You know, and I'm like, oh, shit, this is it. This is the end. This is the end. Oh, you know, his mother comes out of the room. What happened? Oh, the Mets. And she, she didn't like baseball, so she didn't know what the hell I was talking about. But, you know, you're, you're three years old watching your dad lose his mind, and I almost threw my six-month-old kid through the window. Yeah. You know? <laughs> It's, it's, I think my dad baseball. probably wanted to do that too, but you know, <laughs> luckily, luckily I wasn't in his arms, but no, but yeah. And I, I remember talking to my mom about it and she like swears up and down. She's like, we never had this conversation. I'm like, I, I no, Cause I was like, why is, why, why is dad like this? Why is he, why is he so upset? Why is he so angry? And I, I remember what my mom said. She said, she said, it's, it's the, it's the baseball game. And I, I was just, I don't know if I, I don't know what I said. I don't know where my action, I, I remember, I guess, just being confused. And, and I do remember what my mom said after that. She's like, you'll understand when you're older. You know, it's funny oh, when nice. I always refer to that book because that's a great book to read. It's, it's very outdated now, but the, the Oberman Patrick book is great because they interviewed Joe Carter after Joe Carter, the, year, the next year or the two, they, they interviewed Joe Carter in the off season. And he talks about how, you know, he hit that home run off, off, off Mitch Williams. And he goes, if Mitch strikes me out, Mitch is a hero. Yeah. I hit the home run, I'm a hero. And he said, and it's, and it's probably one of the, it's a simple quote. And he goes, that's baseball. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's baseball. You know, you know, there was one <laughs> thing I would have put on the list, like, like you could argue it could be on the list. It wouldn't be my favorite moment, obviously, but Joe Carter. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like my reaction, though. You know, look, I think it's a, it was a historic thing, especially if you were a Blue Jays fan. That that you probably have that on the list. But um, you know, it. But but that was my. Re- I was not angry when that happened. I was just heartbroken, obviously, because it was it was a roller coaster year. But it's baseball. It's kind of what I looked at. Is right. I, I I I never I never blame Fergozzi for making that move with Mitch Williams. Because he, he had to do it. That, he, it's that was the, the move. Right move. It was the That's move. That's how it baseball goes. It was the move. It, look, I I was upset, but I wasn't like the better team what's won the, that year. What's the yeah. name? What was the name of the, the the manager for the Red Sox that year in '86? McNamara. McNamara. Yeah. McNamara had taken Buckner out. Yeah. Many games late in the late in the games for defense, yeah. and didn't do it that day. Yeah. Had he done it, he put in the other. I forgot the other. Dave something. Uh, Dave Roberts or whoever would have been the the replacement first baseman in the last couple innings, he catches that little fucking grounder. Red Sox win, and I'm heartbroken. But yeah. you know, but it's baseball, this, man. This uh, th- this grid could have had instead of nine choices, it could have had like 36. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bra- we could have done the bracket. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah we exactly. Could, we can maybe pick another nine at some point. Maybe someone else picks another nine for another. Maybe show. a bracket's yeah. not a bad idea. It is. Yeah. That's that's, that's a really a, good. Yeah, that's because that creates the that creates debate, and that's because, really exciting. You know, we have there's there's these touching. That's moments a great idea, us. actually. There are these touching moments for us, and then there are other moments that aren't as touching, but they're just as memorable. Yeah. Yeah. Canseco hits the ball off the off the off the yeah. off the one of the windows in the Sky Dome in, in Toronto. You know, <laughs> there's uh, the the fights, some of the great baseball fights. There's some a Jack turned me oh. on to a site called John Boy. I think it's John. Oh, Boy. John Boy, yes. Oh my God! Have you guys seen that? I have yes. not. This he, guy, he, he play by play of the, fights. The guy talks just like Aaron. Very, you know, kind of, a, you know, just very nonchalant. He's talking, and he's he's adding he's adding commentary to what's going on on the field. And it's been baseball fights and discussions with umpires, and, and I, I don't I wouldn't do him any justice imitating some of the stuff he's done. But once you start watching him, you can't stop. Oh, watching there's got there's got to be some Earl Weaver and Tommy Lasorda on there. They would just <laughs> those guys were great. Sparky, yeah. Sparky, the, the, the Billy one that, Martin, yeah, the, Bobby the, Z. the White Sox, the White Sox, and the Cubs were. AJ per, per, present the catcher at the time. AJ Przinsky. Mm-hmm. Przinsky comes home and he fucking gives him. He gives the catcher for the Cubs a forearm shiver as, as he's coming across home. And then the the Cubs catcher takes offense and and hits him. But then the guy comment doing the commentating is hilarious. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. fights. There are fights that are that are that are memorable. Uh, you know, there are losses that are memorable. I mean, unfortunately, mm-hmm. there as many. I'm sure as many victories that we saw that were memorable for us. There, there's probably twice, two times as many losses 
that just break your but heart. There Plus are both of these grand slam. Yeah, yeah, no, perfect. That's a perfect example because to me, it's like I'm I'm freaking out when I'm watching that, and like I mean, I just I'm on a whole other level. And then for you, it's I'm I mean, in a cigar you know, shop. I'm yeah. in a cigar shop, and, and you're melting down, and I'm melting <laughs> down because I'm thinking this is our year. Yeah, yeah. That was when you say fights, though. I, I worked for the A's in 2003. I did uh, like PR assistance, so like game notes and stuff. And so I was in the clubhouses a lot. I needed to get like the lineups and everything. And I can't remember which team it was that was there, but I was in the clubhouse uh, waiting for a lineup. <clears throat> it was probably the Rangers because it was Buck Showalter was managing the Rangers and he was the worst. Yes, he, he was. The, no, oh, let's, he not the, let's not go there. Let's not go there. No, he, the lineups would come out like 45 minutes before first pitch. I'm like, Buck, you're fucking killing me. So, um, genius. I can say that. I Sorry. Yeah, yeah fine. I say that. You, you say that. This is Other genius. people have, Yeah, you're good. This so, is genius. We're, we're, watching, we're watching like ESPN highlights, and it was Kyle Farnsworth for the Cubs was on the mound, and he was pitching, and it was a Reds pitch. A Reds pitcher was trying to bunt, and the ball hit him, and the Reds pitcher charged the mound, and Farnsworth just – freaking body slammed him i can't remember who it was but i was watching it with this with this whole team and we're all getting jacked up and like high-fiving each other i can't remember any of it but i just, i know it was kyle farnsworth that just body slammed this dude in like in oh, 2003 come on. No, to, i mean that's a to me there's two fight two the two fights that always stand out in my mind oh nolan ryan and, and the, uh, with the the only guy to get six hits off nolan ryan in one game is rob <laughs> ventura yeah. and yeah. then the one that's who was a, the name of the guy? The, the bat really? flipper. I never remember his name. The guy who flips the bat. Batista. Batista, when he's oh, wrong, and he gets cold cocked. Odor, Odor just yes. laid him out. Yeah. That was, listen, Locked Odor, I, Bear has nothing good to say about Odor, but uh, that was a <laughs> great cold play. Cock. He that left him like, crazy. Uh, that was the greatest hit of Odor's career right there, man. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cody mentioned a couple of good ones. Pedro and Zimmer. Oh, he mentioned Nolan, oh, yeah. Nolan Ryan. Mopping up that young dude. <laughs> Clemens, Clemens and Piazza, man. And Clemens and Piazza. Oh, Piazza plunked out in that one. That was a Piazza plunk out. I'm a, I'm a, but, and, uh, but you won't find oh, Gabe Kapler on, on, uh, on that side, I can assure you. Rose, Rose kicking Bud Harrelson's ass. <laughs> who was race. with the Giants and the Dodgers? Somebody went to the mound with a bat. Who was that? Why can't I think of who the name of that was? It was, it was like in the 50s. Yeah, wasn't it? Oh. Um, yeah. was David it Marichal? Marichal? I can't help you there. It might have. Was it was Marichal? 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 That Marischal. went to the mound with the bat? Yeah, Marischal. I thought it was Marischal. It might have been. And that's why I don't – Miguel, you're sharing this uh, MLB uh, dynasty team thing. Green bracket. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way that the Brewers, whoever was on the Brewers team, was putting up eight runs on, on Marischal. I'm sorry. It just wasn't yeah. that. Yeah. I, I'm so, protesting that whole thing. Yeah. Rangers yeah, putting I, up – Rangers knocking out Cy Young in game six in the first yeah, inning. It was a bunch uh, yeah, of horse just, shit. It, it just, let's, let's just be I, – I, I hate to say let's be realistic in a fantasy realm, but let's yeah. be realistic. We, we, did a, we did an OOTP years ago, um, like individual franchise World Series winners in a, in a tournament, and it was like the 83 Orioles ended up beating uh, – winning the whole thing. And they actually ended oh, up beating yeah, the two Brewers. Yeah. Well, the, 80, the eighty-three Orioles had the the great the three-run homer, which is the Earl Weaver offense. You know, the three-run yeah. homer. Yeah. Three Bring run in John Lowenstein for the three-run yeah. homer. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Um, we have some short. We want to do the. How are you guys doing on time? We have some quick hit topics, and then a couple of segments at the end. I've got this much time left. But how can you see that? There you go. There you go. Yeah, we're good. This too. cigar is fantastic. Okay. Okay. Though, Hector, you're okay. Way. I know you're very, you were, very nice. Okay. What does it matter now? We're going to start with that. You're going to start worrying about me now? Fuck. Oh, <laughs> All right. Oh, Let- I like Bear's headshot. That is sexy. All right. Um, so here's a couple – here's some quick hits we're going to do. Um, let's just start off with expansion. Should, should Major League Baseball expand? I know – No. Gonna- they no. should contract. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I'm serious. They should take both Florida teams and make one team right there. All right. They, you and know, then send I'm- that team to Montreal. And send them to Montreal or Toronto. Where, you know, no, they already have a team in Toronto. Send them to, to McTavish. Send them to Calgary or Alberta. Well, you know, everyone's talking about Charlotte, uh, North Carolina. People talk about Mexico City. People talk about Portland. Portland's mm-hmm. a big one. Uh, yeah, but you know want. what? You imagine, have you seen the weather? Just, you talk about Charlotte. I think Charlotte would be great. But have you seen the weather just in the last couple of weeks in, in the Carolinas? You I mean, imagine, you know, I know opening, opening, opening day gets cold in Chicago. 
Oh, but man, they'd have to have a, yeah, they definitely have to have a roof. No, I mean, but, how's Charlotte different than um? I just said, yeah, you have to have yeah. a roof. You have to yeah. have a roof. Um, I'm just worried about like the 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 um, dispersal of talent. Yeah, yes. the watering down of talent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's I mean, you've already got teams that are tanking, and this whole thing like tanking should be a topic here. Like this whole idea of tanking, and and I mean, you look over my shoulder, you see a team that's kind of doing it, but it's to, yeah. to say that you want to expand, but they have teams like the Pirates, who's what what is their their payroll is like thirty eight million. Tigers, yeah. and the tiger the same thing. I mean, and I get it from from a longevity of we're we're looking at three years from now, but you still have to put. And I know there's rules in put place. Put a product but they're, on they're, the field. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, you have to put a product on the field, and there's rules in place to do that. But those rules aren't enough. Yeah. Mm. So from that standpoint, I would say expansion is is a no go. I understand that there are areas that that could use a team. I mean, there's one in Oakland that could move just about anywhere and get a new stadium. Yeah. I mean, Aaron, I know like it, it seems like the uh, the the field or the stadium down by the water would, is going to work. Yeah. I hope it does. That would be great for the city. Yeah. It would be absolutely great. You'd have, it would be just like – it would be almost the same as what AT&T Park did, and I still call it AT&T, whatever, mm-hmm. for, for San Francisco, for that area. If you look at that area, China Basin, where, that, where their, the ballpark is, mm-hmm. there was nothing there two yeah. decades ago. Nothing. And now it's freaking thriving. Million-dollar studios. Yeah. So, I mean, that could happen in Oakland, but it just doesn't seem like they want to do it. So expansion to me is is out. Yeah, if anything, I, I think I really I, it, it sounds like taboo, but you could take both of the Florida teams and put them in Orlando, and you know in Orlando at any time of the day when oh obviously pre COVID any time of the day in Orlando there's four million people in Orlando. Yeah, they're gonna fill up a forty. They're gonna fill up a thirty five thousand seat stadium to watch games because people are from all over the place through there. Oh shit, we're at Disney. Oh, and the and the Cubs are here. Let's yeah, go watch it. I don't understand how Tampa Bay has is playing in that same stadium the whole time they've. It wasn't even built for them. It's a contract. It's the lease they have. They have. They can't get out of the lease. No, I I understand when I say I don't understand. I mean I get it, but it's ridiculous. But they're they're playing in a cave. And and the A's are playing, and the A's are a good team. And Tampa Tampa Bay's a good. These are good baseball teams. These are teams that people should be filling the stadiums, and they're playing in freaking caves. Yeah. I think it's one terrible. thing. I think if Tampa moved to Ebor City, it would help a lot. I think that would be a big move for them if they could do that. Yeah, I mean they're in St. Petersburg right now. Yeah. They're not even in Tampa. But you know, Rob, you know the Giants were almost yeah. there. I know that they, Peter McGowan 90- saved, saved the team for San Francisco. There's yeah, no he may, may he rest. He saved yeah. the team. Yeah. He brought in Barry Bonds. And... He totally saved the team because that team was going to Tampa. No, they they were they were yeah, they had yeah. they were five steps out of the door, not just one step. They were gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and it's I, 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 and, I, the, the and then they bring in here. and they bring in Barry, and you know they went to now we got three championships. So I mean, it took a while, but sure, but uh, I mean, no, yeah, it, it, the it, it takes here, the attendance here at Marlin Park's awful. They get more when other when when the big teams come here, attendance jumps at stadiums. Nobody the, the Marlins are, the Marlins they haven't put a good product on the field. People aren't going to come. There's other shit you can do in Miami. That, that's, a, that, that's not a problem of the city as much as the product of the ownership, though. See, I think, you know, I think Tampa is a different story. Tampa is a problem of where they are. They're, they're, they're in Pinellas County on the south end, which no one can get to is the problem. And it's yeah. a right dreadful, right dreadful place to play. It's terrible. Like it's, you don't even want to watch it on TV, you know, let alone I'll say there. this. You, I liked. I went to a couple of games there. You know, they had that was a place you could. They had the cigar bar back then too. I mean, it was. It was, it was <laughs> You're right, preaching to the not, to the zero zero one percent of baseball. Fans, I know, but I'm, I'm being. I mean, not, I know it's topical I'll for you, us, know, but I, and here's the other thing I'll say: they were really fan friendly with my kids there too. As well, I'll just say because I took my kids there younger. The stingray um, touch tank, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it was really so. I, I I would love to see that team stay in Tampa, but they do need to. They need they need they need a stadium in a different location, whether it's Ybor City or Orlando. I would I would I think Central Florida could certainly support a baseball team, is what I'm saying. Well, now, they, designed, you know, they designed Marlin Park for it to be an event, an, an, an a big activity adventure while you're at the at the park. No mention of watching the game. Yeah. All right, you can walk around. That, that's part, go, yeah. I go to the I, bar uh, in the back or watch the big bobblehead collection they have yeah. when you come in. 
because the product on the field is awful. Yeah. Well, it's not just the product there, Hector. I mean, I'll give you an example. It's, it's just, it, there's different fan bases that just travel really well too. You know, I mean, the Rangers here have been relevant in, in the, you know, in the past decade, you know, a few times and they've put yeah. up some, they've got some good teams sure. and filled in some good teams and stuff. But I tell you every single game, and this might be, this, this actually might be relevant. This might be the case in every single city that they play in, but every time the Yankees come to town and every time the Red Sox come to town, there are more Sox fans and more Yankees fans in yeah. the ballpark in Arlington than there are Rangers fans. It's just, it, it doesn't matter how good the Rangers are. The Dodgers, come here, the Dodgers come to play the Marlins. The Mets come to play the Marlins. Uh, when they play, when they have interleague games, if it's a, if they're playing the East or Boston or the or the Yankees are coming, stadium's full. Stadium's full. Full. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one of one of my favorite memories is um, I think it was watching Team USA in a World Baseball Classic in the Miami Marlins ballpark. Um, they were playing, I think, Columbia. And that that stadium was – that ballpark was rocking, man. And I thought, man, why can't they do this all the time, you know? The because they keep, trading away all, they keep trading away all their players. <laughs> <laughs> and being one of the lowest the lowest, uh, lowest payroll teams in the league. Hey, I what's going thought- to happen next year? Uh, the, the, they're, ho- they're hosting all three – three rounds are being played there, right? Yep, yep. Where are they, where's Cuba going to play? Because Cuba's not going to let their team play in Miami. <laughs> no, seriously. No, no, not, not. I'm not ragging. I'm not doing the political rag. But where is Cuba going to play? It's going to cost Cuba ten times much as money to send them to Tokyo, like they did last year <laughs> or last time, than to send them ninety miles to Miami to play. But then yep. they'll come back with nobody. They'll save money because they don't have to get uh, round 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 trip. Right. One way tickets <laughs> only. One way tickets yeah, only. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Let's go to the next topic. The the proposed playoff restructuring by Commissioner Rob Manfred. No. No, there's already too many teams. I, you know, look, this isn't I, the NBA. I don't. I don't yeah. Okay, so I was or just, NHL. <laughs> so this is my thing: is that uh, not everyone's a winner? Uh, NHL, um, I think basketball, MLS, Major League Soccer, it's like half the league mm-hmm. goes to the postseason. Yeah. What's the point and, of the season? What's the point of the season? What I love about baseball, and I have to say, you know, the wild card thing has been cool, but you got to stop at some point, man. I mean, I agree. You're gonna, what happens when what happens when you get two cold weather teams playing in November? Yeah. You know, it's, they're gonna push it all the way to November. For, every time I think of that, I think of that Indians World Series where it was thirty degrees, it's snowing. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. snowing. Yeah. It, it's it's ridiculous. More we playoff teams. We don't, extended we don't need playoffs. expansion. Yep, we don't need extended playoffs. We don't need extended uh, – we don't need to expand. All we I know need that, to do is let's just play some games. I'm more yeah. horrified. Let's I'm just more play horrified. some games. I'm more horrified by the format they're talking about. Mm-hmm. So pick your opponent. The pick your opponent. Oh, you, yeah, get get out of here with that. that is, what, is this, is, what are we playing, Griffey? Are we yeah. playing Griffey? <laughs> oh, 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 are we playing The Apprentice with Donald Trump? I mean yeah. – the- Look, baseball needs day games. Baseball needs double headers. That's, that's what we need. We need double Let's headers. Play yes. Let's play Let's two. Play Let's play two. Let's play some day games. Now, wait a uh, second. A lot of the stadiums have, oh, it's too hot. You got roofs. A lot of these stadiums have roofs. Now, Look Hector, where they play that's – that's one thing that this 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 uh, this uh, short season could bring back is the doubleheader. Is like we're talking about playing two three games. Now, I granted, I understand that they're different teams in the same stadium, but it, we could get back to some of that. Mm-hmm. We could. But I mean, and, and we've, I is, think they've lost it. Look, look at look at. Uh, I mean, this is a, this is a nice chance to grab that again right. and just say, look, baseball and. Now, granted that some of these are going to be indoors or whatever, and I get that. But like baseball during the day, doubleheaders. I remember There's as a kid. Like I remember as a kid going and you buy a ticket and you pay for for two games. And I know, cool story, Grandpa. I get it. But <laughs> you you pay for one game and you get two. Yeah. I remember Listen. me and my best friend Billy Schwerin. He was the he was like my best friend since kindergarten. He was my best man at my wedding, and we went to watch the Giants and the Pirates playing a doubleheader at candlestick and i'll never forget it and it was just awesome it was like eight hours of baseball it was great oh, man. we had that's the that's awesome. a, you know what time. what you said rob what you just said rob is a good litmus test for a city if a city wants to support a baseball team the look at the reds day games look at the indians day games the cubs day games yankees day games the giants play day games yep. well everybody plays, play, has to oh, play a because, certain amount but but they oh they won't support day games here because the, the people oh, come on bro there's nothing no, like taking a day off from work taking a day off from work on, on a Tuesday 
on a Wednesday. Work, worker man special. Yeah, yeah one o'clock. They want a Ferris take... Bueller that shit and go watch a game in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Even Absolutely. a four o'clock game where it, by the yes. time the game's over, you head home, traffic's done already. There's nothing like it. You get to the stadium at noon, game starts at 105, and, you know, there's maybe half of the stadium's mm-hmm. full, but still it's, the, it's just – there's nothing like that shit. I'm sorry. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's where I'm I'm coming around on Miguel's view to get back to the to go full circle to what we were first talking about. Yeah, we we could grab some of that back. I agree. As, some of that magic because because I mean the, the kids nowadays like they don't know about double headers and and day well, games like on a Tuesday and you know I mean like we could get that back and it's the only thing like baseball if if there is any sport that is just you you can save yourself by making games possible and figuring out a way to do this, it's baseball right now. It would be the, the thing. It's it. Yeah. Yep. You, could, you could transform an entire generation of baseball fans. Absolutely. The, only day, games, the only day games the Marlins, have, the Marlins have scheduled six day games during the year. Oh. And then Sunday. They play Sunday. Sunday day games. Sunday day games, 1 o'clock, 105. Wow, six that day sucks. games. Uh, get, and that's, also, that's also a shitty place to watch a baseball game. At least it looks like it is. It, well, the stadium, the, the new stadium, the, the park is nice. Yeah. The seats are nice. The problem is, problem is nobody's there. There's no ambiance. Well, they're already okay. social distancing. Uh, yeah, they're, <laughs> they're ahead of the yeah. curve. All parks, well, you know, they're ahead of it. Uh, so the, 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 the A's, the A's set tomorrow. that curve, yeah. Aaron. They, yeah. they set yeah. that curve. I'll, I'll tell you, the, the they added more seats just to make it even easier. <laughs> the ma- the majesty of day games is true, guys. I mean, uh, as as Aaron and and well, actually everybody on here, Rob. I don't know if you know about my family tradition. We've we've we're we're going we're trying to make go to each stadium as a family, one Ooh. stadium per year. And and but each game that we've gone to, uh, we, you know, we've got you know I have a four year old son. You know, we can't you know we can't go to a late game and everything. So we plan our trip around a day game uh, to these ballparks, and it's it's awesome, man. Going as a family, mm-hmm. watching baseball. In, in, in the day game, it, it's, yeah. it, it is, it's everything. I, I mean, like, I don't get to watch games the way that I want to watch them anymore because I have kids. I don't get, you know, and taking them to a stadium, I don't get to, to watch it like I used to. But it, it doesn't matter. It yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, it's still a magical moment. It's still a cherished family moment. And it's something that I'll get to carry around with memories for forever. And, yeah, it's the the the, the – day games are, are something that they need to bring back a lot more double headers. Absolutely. I, I mean, I would, I would I'm sorry, love to, have, no, I was going to say, I would love to experience that, that, you know, I didn't get grow up in a city with a major league team, you know, that memory that you have with your best friend, Rob, I mean, I would give, I would give anything in the world to have had that memory as a child. Hey bear bear, by the way, I just want to tell you, I don't know if you're familiar with pop chart. Uh, it's uh, check them out online. It's called pop chart. They have, they have a, a, a big old poster with all the ballparks, mm-hmm. and, it, and it's like a scratch-off lottery ticket. Mm, oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, so, you scratch off oh, I, I, I need to take a picture of it. I wish I had it. You know, so my wife, for Christmas this year, she got us a – it's massive, okay? It's a huge map of the country, and there's these inserts of all the stadiums in the country, and you can put in pictures. Nice. That's oh, cool. Nice. And so we have oh, pictures really of us cool. at each – at the stadiums we've been to, and – you know, we only have a couple of uh, obviously filled in right now, but man, when that thing is complete and you know, in a, here in a few decades, oh, it's gonna you know, be. You know, one of the things my we, most prized possession. I knew yeah. this bear, season. Bear, this, this, bear, this, let this, me know when when you guys come to San Francisco. Oh, absolutely. I, I knew this. Do. I knew, I knew this season was gonna suck for me because when I looked at the schedule, I always. Well, you're a Mets fan. Of course, I looked to see when the Mets are coming. And I'm looking for a day game because I work. I work. Yeah. Don't tell me. IPCBR. No, no, no. I work a full. I work a full. I work a, a full time job, and then I work with Eric. So I'm looking for a day game that I could escape to. They're playing a day game against the Mets in Puerto Rico. <laughs> <laughs> that's a hell of an that's escape. A quick, that's a quick flight. Well, well, yeah. You can sell some Espinosa cigars then. Why don't you get a road trip? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, bro, oh, yeah. Well, you, take you just get a ferry down, right? This yeah. works that way. No, a ferry. Bro, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, we, 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 we flight to Puerto Rico. Bro. It's, it's like over. Further, it's it, an overnight ferry, but it's they have nice accommodations. Yeah, bro. I think we could sell some cigars here. Puerto <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next uh, topic. Uh, this is one I think that's closer to Aaron and Bear's heart, maybe. Uh, the robot umpire kind of thing. Oh. 
Man, we were all getting we were getting warm and fuzzy, and then Coop's got to just just come right bring in all the negatives. Dude. I added to the list. I added to the list. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just With a big I'm smile. Just, I'm, just, right. I'm, just a, I'm just a moderator. Oh, uh, here we go. Well, Coop, who gets the honors here? Aaron. I'll go because I put it on the list. Aaron. <laughs> yeah. There is no reason for human umpires anymore at this point. Oh, absolutely. No. Oh. No, wait, wait. I was going to agree with you for a second. And you're totally wrong. Human no. error. Human error is part no, no, no. There's no call the pot out of game. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's nothing romantic about umpires. One team gets something they don't deserve. The other team gets fucked. It's just there's there's no reason to have this stupid human. It's baseball. <laughs> it's baseball. It's baseball. This I understand part, that, but let boxing. the players <laughs> play. You don't need some like third fact, party. I'm completely against what you're saying. I want all of my umpires to look like Eric Gregg. I want them all to be fucking enormous. Right. I want, them to- <laughs> I want Billy Martin and Bobby Brown to kicking dirt on these guys. I mean, that's that's what I want. Gabe Kapler. I want, a, trying I want an umpire. Up. I want an umpire who's in the 14th inning and he's tired already. He strikes Fred McGriff out of the ball that's 18 inches off the plate. <laughs> yeah, I don't you, want. You I don't want. You want, want, I don't want get it. You want I don't Jim get away Joyce. day like 12 foot wide wow, strike zones. A, you know, it's, that's that's there's no point to that. Raccoon just ran by my. It's part of the strategy of the game, man. Being part of the strategy. Manipulate, well, it's part of part of manipulate yeah. the strike zone of, no, the, of that you, particular You can't umpire. have a strategy for Jim Joyce blowing a call at first base to rob Armando Galarraga exactly. of his entire <laughs> career. Yes. And well, what, salty, what, salty what, if, what if the robot blows it? So Aaron, you listen, hold on. Wait, time out. Oh, wait, I want to address the, the uh, Galarraga thing. Okay, for a second. Okay, listen. He was out. This it, Yes, he was absolutely out. That's that, not disputed. We are – taught as students of the game and as fans of the game and particularly pitchers what is the rule number one of being a pitcher in major league baseball you have to have the shortest memory in history because you need to be called the next day to to come out and do your job i agree galarraga taking away something from you that you didn't do wrong baseball you know what i mean it's baseball it's bad that, call the part of the game. That's what. That's, so that's Aaron, part of the Aaron whole wants to install. What does Aaron want to install? These HAL two thousand. Yes. <laughs> yes. So and, so one thing I will say: one of the best pitchers I ever saw, ever, ever pitch a baseball game, and I was actually there when he won his three hundredth game, at it was I think it was AT and T Park at the time, is Greg Maddox. Yeah. I the don't professor. know that he'd be so great robot umpires would have liked greg maddox <laughs> as much as everybody else liked greg maddox right right all of a sudden framing hey, pitches framing hey, pitches would not mean as much anymore if you mm-hmm. get you if you get that three inches off the plate you earn that shit he yeah. earned it i, I, Wait, here, I here's I, my count here's my counter to you rob okay do it <clears throat> three months ago i was sitting in your living room all you were doing was complaining about the referees in the fo- in the Super Bowl. Oh, I was so upset. You, you can't tell me that you wouldn't love if there was some automated way to actually make those calls so that no, the, game, then the players were playing. No, but then I wouldn't have anything to complain about. Yeah, you could still complain. Well, I would lost. <laughs> complaining no, it's, is it's, part of life. The, the, the Niners no, didn't lose that Super Bowl no, because of the refs, so though. You agree. No, they, they, they got outplayed in that last five minutes. Sure. No. Here, they, they, they won – they won uh, – how long is the football game? 60 minutes? They won 55 <laughs> minutes of that game and then got outplayed in the last I agree five. with that. However I, it is. But this, I, at the same time, I, I, like, Aaron, you've got a point. I mean, and to an extent, and maybe I would – maybe I could be down maybe with robot strike zones. Maybe. But I, I, but I don't I, – I, I, I don't know, man. Like – I just don't, I don't like know. the challenges, and you know they still get it wrong, even though they have a chance to look at it again. It it's messes true. up the game. I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you um, that. I just think there's such a such a great opportunity to to fix a flaw that they don't need to maintain anymore. Just because it's tradition, I don't think it still remains tradition, something that tradition we need. has to. Uh, look, especially I'll, I'll, when we talked about, and I know Bear. I'm sorry. I know you want no, to keep going. In. Keep going. But tradition in baseball means more than any other sport i agree but i don't think that the i don't consider the umpires like like if it just doesn't like i don't care who the umpire i'm not following the umpires like i'm not like oh i can't i can't wait to see this game because so-and-so's at second base today (laughs) nobody comes to see the refs you're right you're right yeah no it's i I, i'll tell you what as the first few the first few years i i worked for the giants there were there were a handful of umpires 
that if they were behind the plate, Rick Reed was one of them. And uh, I can't remember who the other one, but their, their strike calls were just terrible. So like their strike calls are like this. So they call a strike in front, right. but I'm watching from behind them. So I have no idea what the hell he just called. It was awful. But at the same time, like that's part of the game and it's always been part of the game. And it's, I, I, I don't know, like football can, football can advance with helmets and you know, you're not hitting guys in certain places to, to maintain injury and other sports can do that too. But baseball, it's it, I don't know. There's, there's just something about maybe it's just baseball's closer to my heart where I don't want to see it mechanized. How about if we start small, Rob? Let's start small. Let's start by calling the foul pole the fair pole. Because if a ball hits it, it's, a, it's fair. So okay, let's start I'm into that. that. That's nothing robot uh, umpires are going to fix, though, Hector. That's just, let's, that's just vocabulary. Let's start that's, small. that's just semantics, but I'm yeah. down. I'm down with Warner, that. And that's, yeah. that's Warner Wolf yeah. who said that. If, it, if a ball hits it, it's fair. It should be a fair pole, not a foul pole. Yeah, let's why Why? Fair. Why are uh, parkways, you drive on parkways and don't drive on driveways? Right. All right, Seinfeld. <laughs> why are, why are <laughs> no, no, wait. Not that's, that, no, that's why? the best argument. We're done. <laughs> We're done with this segment. That's all perfect. Right, right. How, come, how come proctologists aren't astronauts? I mean, you know. It's, 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 <laughs> here's the oh, thing I'll say about better. robot umpires. So, so we talk. Uh, look, this is the romantic part of me coming back again. Okay, look, this wasn't my moment, but this was a moment for the community that I live in. Okay, so the Rangers make it to the World Series and they are playing in the ALCS against the Yankees two years in a row. But the first year, this is the first year they get to the World Series in 2010. Okay, and this community, uh, you know, call it what you want. They're not, you know, they're not the biggest baseball fans. But for that, for that season, for those stretches of seasons when the Rangers were good, everyone was on their feet for the Rangers. And it was, it was a beautiful thing to see this community. But what I'll tell you about how umpires factor into this is that Neftali Feliz closed that game out to send the Rangers to the World Series. And the person he strikes out is none other than the supervillain himself, A-Rod. And it was a called strike three. And I'll tell you the moment that I remember, it wasn't the pitch. It wasn't A-Rod just trapped in his, in his knees. It was the call of the umpire calling him out and Miguel simulating it. And it is that magical moment of the umpire waving his arms, yep. strike three, you're out, game over, to the World Series. And everybody that I'm sitting and watching that game with is just – it, it, we've all been there part of the, you know, the, the thrill oh. of victory and everything, but that was, that's the visual that I have in my head and that's gone with robots. That romance wait a minute, is wait a minute. gone. Aaron, no, it would Aaron, still be there. A, Aaron, but yeah, what, a fucking red light goes off, Rob? No, no, it would Burm, still be out. The That's not magic. Gonna, no, the umpire is still going to be there. He has to wait a second for the, for the buzzer in his ear to say strike. And then he goes, uh, no, up on the screen, you have Joaquin Phoenix and he's got this. <laughs> Come on. No, no, no. Absolutely. I can get behind I'd that. See, I'd like to see that. some of the prototypes, some of Aaron's prototypes. They're probably like that. What was that Schwarzenegger movie where the cab driver was a robot? Uh, where they had to pull it, they pulled the thing out of his nose. Which movie three boobs. It? But yeah, but which yeah, I, I can't wait. Total for recall? Total, total, total recall. Total recall. Total recall. Uh, They're all, all those umpires are gonna look like that, you know. I look yeah. like how, how are you gonna get robots in position? How do you know? Uh, you don't need robots. You just need the cameras. No, no, it's it's not even it's not that they're actual robot umpires. Yeah. The umpires oh, are the, and they've done it in the minor leagues. Yeah. And it's it but it takes a second because they've got a little earpiece and it says strike or ball and you know the umpire makes the call. He's just he's more of a figurehead than than actually making the call. He's the, the conduit. Right. Yeah, he's the I, vessel. I, yeah, conduit. That's a perfect. Well, listen, perfect if word. we're gonna do robot umpires, I would like to see a RoboCop looking guy behind home. Word. Guard. I'm into yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, with with the the like, and and then they have to go like in the sixth inning to get the little brown stuff that comes out of the yeah, yeah, slurpy yeah. machine yeah. to eat that. Yeah, uh, uh, no, nah, no robot umps. I mean, I, human error has been part of the game since before any of us even took a breath. And I yep. think to change that is arrogant. I just think it doesn't have any place in the game anymore. But you hate everything. No, I love baseball. <laughs> I love it so much that I want it to be so pure. Dude, Aaron, I want us it to hang pure. out. It is pure. It is the you perfect five minutes game. Away from my, you live five <laughs> minutes from my house. I want us to hang out. More. I know. Really, I agree. It's really depressing. Uh, all right. All right. Anyway. Let's, let's kind of go to the next couple of topics. Barry, you put these two on. So I'm going to let you the, take those. 
All right, oh, I put so, the I put the shift in there. Oh, you put the shift. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, why don't yeah, we let you? So I'll let you go with the shift, Aaron. Does anyone have a problem with the shift? No. 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 Nope. Not at all. Okay. Part of the it's game. The it's the progression of, ba of, of gaming. Right. It's the you understand of, where, look, where the ball gotta, is going to go. You got to hit it where they aren't, right? Yeah. If I, Big I'm, I'm Poppy not, can beat the shift, everyone can learn how to ball, fucking beat the shift. Learn to hit the ball away. Learn just to hit it over the fence. Or just fucking hit it through them. That's what Big Poppy did. Hit it through them. Yeah. Uh, opposite it's, field, man. It's and yeah, hit opposite it, field. Learn how to. Th this learn whole to idea of game. the two people have to be the left of second base. Now, fuck all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, if yep. if you figure out a way from you know advanced metrics to to beat your team, then so be it. Yeah. Then then yeah. your learn. guy. It's just like it's just like when a, a new player comes up and he can hit the fastball. Like everybody adjusts to that. So you have to adjust. Everybody has to adjust. That's part of baseball. Is it like game of adjustments? On, Day, day to day, it's adjustments. That's why it's the greatest game. Inning to inning. Um, in, the, in, the words, in the words of George W. Bush, it's strategery. <laughs> yes, beautiful. <laughs> hitting the ball, hit, slowing down your swing, hitting the ball the opposite way, lost. A lost start. Yep. Yep. Like Bunting. I'll tell you, you what. You know, Peter's you know who, the last guy to do it. You know who would have beat the shift every freaking time? Tony Gwynn. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 100%. You could you could you could, put, you could put people anywhere. Tony Gwynn would have beat that shift, and it, and that's and that's why Tony Gwynn is a freaking legend. And if you want, it's the Padre. You you can put people wherever you want to put them, and I, I come up with a way to beat it. That's the game. That that's is part the game. strategy. That's I agree. That's, that's why you know after uh, Maddox was out there saying fastball inside, and Will Clark had a home run in the '89 uh, NLDS. That's why everybody covers their mouth now. It's like you make those changes. That's baseball. Aaron, Aaron literally picked one topic where we're all fighting, and then another <laughs> topic where we're all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. He's a politician. He's a person. Uh, that's okay. Here, so here's another one. Um, Bear, you put this one in on the Absolutely. DA. Absolutely. Oh, Bull, in the words of Bull Durham, man, I believe in constitutional amendment banning the designated hitter. Yes. Like, I, uh, I am an American League fan. I'm a Red Sox guy. I bleed Red Sox. The, and my, one of my favorite all-time players made his bones, made his career. His legend is stacked on the position that I fucking hate. Yep. <laughs> and the designator hitter is a travesty to baseball. Just what we were talking about just two seconds ago. Learn – how to play the game make those adjustments if you're a, if you're a baseball player you're a baseball player if you're a pitcher get up to the plate square a bunt hit the fucking ball mad bum hit home runs jake arietta's hit boy, home runs whatever. look, whatever. look we ball. have lorenzen we have michael lorenzen on our team i mean that guy's hitting home runs as a pitcher you know what i mean um i think i, I don't understand i'm not a fan of the dh i've never been a fan of the dh it's awful the uh, you know the the senior circuit we live without the DH and so should so should the junior circuit. The, the DH is is just a travesty. All right, listen, I, I, I can't I, I can't I I've been a National League guy. I mean, granted, I grew up in San Francisco in the '80s, so I I mean, I love Will Clark. I mean, he's my favorite player. Like the only time I've ever been starstruck is after a Giants won a game. I can't remember what year this was, but I'm done with my job, I'm leaving, I'm going to the, to, they, they came back and won a game in the ninth inning is a walk-off win, whatever. And I'm going to the elevator to get the elevator down. And it's just me and Will Clark. It's the only time I've ever seen him like this close to me in person. And he, he's so excited. He's like, Oh my God, what a game. Like, I just, I, I can't, like, I just can't, I, I, I can't get sign my chest. Sign uh, my chest. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it, it was almost that. They, and Frank Robinson in the elevator, that was the only other time I was starstruck. Oh, God. It? Just oh, sharing shit. It. No, I shared an elevator with Frank Robinson. I mean, I mean get I, – I couldn't – I didn't say anything to him because I I just kind of looked at him just like an idiot. And it's like, wow, you're right. Like, if this, this was before the selfie – cool yeah. story, Grandpa, again, I understand. But I, I, I would have tried to do a selfie even though it probably says somewhere on my badge that I can't do that. But that was the only other time too. that I was <laughs> – it was, yeah, I would have been, been fired, oh. but it kind of would have been worth it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, no Pappas cries. Yeah, right. no, get, get get rid of the get, the DH has got to go. It's just Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. I don't know where I was going, but whatever. I, I do prefer the National League style. I do prefer oh, that. Oh, um, wow. Woo. I mean, yes. I, 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 
as much as I'm for this whole getting rid of the umpires thing, I do like tradition quite a bit in baseball. Um, and I, I, I like that style. I think the game is uh, there's a lot more strategic as Miguel shared in regards to uh, double switches and all that kind of stuff when you get into that situation. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, you have things like these new rule changes where like relievers have to face three guys and all that kind of stuff. That's going to maybe yeah, mess that stuff that up really in the national good. league. Um, I also see the point of why they wanted to do the DH. They wanted to, you know, add some uh, more offense to the game and stuff like that. Um, as much as I like not having the DH, I just think that it's, it's just the way that baseball is going to go. It's just, it's going to happen. Not that I want it to go that way. It's just going to happen that way. I agree with you, Aaron. I think, I think major league baseball wants the DH. And if they do, oh, yeah. if they play this year, the DH will be throughout. Yeah. There will be no hit pitchers hitting. Yep. And that's going to be the, that's the, yeah. that's the, yeah. you know, the that's the leak in the barrel that uh, is yeah. going to go. That's the one thing that could come out of this that Bad. ruin that could potentially ruin part of baseball. Yep. It's weird because the, the people in charge want baseball to be faster. Mm-hmm. They want the games to be faster, but if you add the DH, the game is slower. Right. At least in my opinion. But it is. It, it, but granted, I mean, the, the Giants can't do anything in less than three and a half hours. So whatever you, you can, I, I'll never understand. I've watched games where it's one to nothing and it still takes three and a half hours. How the fuck does that even happen? <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. I don't understand. That, that needs to be fixed, but I don't think the DH is the answer. Three and a half hours of pure magic. <laughs> but, <laughs> Let me, all right. But I'm everybody get... says, but when they talk about the DH, sorry, Coop, they no. talk about the DH and everybody says David Ortiz and uh, Edgar, Martinez. Edgar Martinez. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Like that's it. There's no other DH. There's no other DH studs. So don't I tell me that Andre Horton. That's the only one I remember. Hank Aaron, Chris Davis. Uh, well, okay, Frank, Chris Tom- Davis. Frank Thomas, Robin Yao. But they, Frank they Thomas was no, the no, first no. baseman for yeah, the bulk yes, of his no, career. Hey, no, Frank Thomas is my favorite player of all time. Listen, I, I, he's a first baseman. He always will. Be. He Frank was the Paul- first baseman for the bulk of his career, and yeah. I loved Frank Thomas. I think I put him when I did that uh, all team. I think I put him on there somewhere. Uh, I, I got I got a little squirrely with that. I put Ichiro with the Marlins, that kind of thing. But uh, <laughs> I, I I got a little. Uh, yeah. A little squirrely Creative. with it, but I, I just don't understand how you can say that you want the game to go faster and putting the DH is going to make that happen. All right. I'm going to give you a different spin on this. Oh God. Oh, here we go. Okay. So Roger. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, okay. So no, 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 no. Watch the video how, on him. The, the DH has been around in the American league. Over, over, yeah. Almost 50 years. Okay. Oh, longer than I've been alive. It's, it's a, tra- it's, it's traditionary in the American league. In the American League. Right. The thing that makes baseball unique, okay, compared to NFL, NBA, and NHL is what? Two sets that of you rules. Have two sets of rules. I love well, there's, rules. There's also I love different, it. I don't want every, to take that away. Keep it the but way But every stadium's is. different, too, so that's another uh, separate that, rule. Sure it is. Sure it is. But I love the fact – I love the fact that there's two I agree sets with of you. rules. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. I, don't get me wrong. I'm a National League guy. I, I root for the National League. But, but you know what? It extended some guys' careers that, you know, like Hank Aaron played with the Brewers for two years as a DH. Um, yeah, but nobody really remembers that. Nobody remembers that. I know, but people there's remember, guys. People remember Big Poppy. They remember Edgar Martinez. I'm sorry, Coop. I don't mean to run over you. But. No, no. You're, and I, and I, I totally agree. You're not I running mean, over me. So I, my, my answer is I don't want the DH to come to the NL. I want it the way it is. I don't want it to go away from the AL. I want it the way it's 50 years we're doing this. Oh, that's fair. I, I, no, I'm, it's, I'm it's, on board. You know, and, and how do you feel about interleague play? I don't, I, and I don't like it. I don't like it either. I don't like I it either. I never really liked it either. <laughs> Again, it's a unique thing about baseball. We have leagues, not conferences. It's a difference. Yeah. I never um, liked I hated, it, but I've never hated it. Because yeah. it's, it's, it's cool from a fan perspective where every few years I get to see the Yankees or I get to see the Red Sox. Or the Red Sox reason. playing at Wrigley that's not in a series, you know, that's, that's pretty it's, cool. It's kind of cool. Look, I, I, it was cool like to see the Yankees play the Phillies. Yeah, I, I got to say that as well. Yeah, it's, but, it's, a, it's, it's a cool thing that, that you know, it's it, – uh, what's, the, what's – there's, well, there's a word I'm looking for. There's, there's a certain, like uh, – Romance to it or uh, – I don't know. There's there's like a there's like a factor to it where you only get to see it every few years and it's exciting. Curiosity. Haley's Haley's comic. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. It's an eclipse. <laughs> I watched that the when eclipse. I was in sixth grade. I'll never the see it again. But yeah. 
Yeah. So, so that's that's kind of like my my take on. It. I just say keep it the way it is. I, unfortunately, I think Aaron's point is, and you guys is head on. This season may be the death knell for the NL with that. Um, that's why I, I I hated when baseball reorganized and got rid of the league presidents. Mm-hmm. Um, now they're honorary mm-hmm. the, the league presidents meant something when I was growing up in the seventies and eighties. I can tell yeah. you, that's true. Absolutely. these guys, yeah, the, the commissioner was had a different role, but that was. That was the Faye Vincent, uh, Bud Selig kind of, uh, you know. I think, I, I think Coop, the reason why be, Bud Selig is a piece of shit. Coop, I think we might be in the, like we're the old guard. In the, yeah, in, yeah, we're, oh, yeah. But you, you have to keep baseball relevant. You have to keep relevant. Yeah, no, I, I, I get that. Guy, I, I, but it's not gonna look. What's DH that, Hector? Is, what'd you say? Never trust a guy named Faye. <laughs> it's fair. Faye, he was a. We could do a whole show on commissioners. Drink, drink with a guy named Bud. Don't trust him to run a fucking league. Well, you don't also <laughs> want a guy like uh, what is it, Kennesaw Mountain Landis to be here. Yeah. Oh, you don't want a guy, funny, dude. That you don't fucking, want that guy to come you want, back. Do you want Peter well, Uberos, who dude, was not a baseball that guy. That guy. It took that piece of shit dying so that Jackie Robinson could fucking break the color barrier. Yep. Okay, saw Mountain Landis had to fucking die. Yep. Kennesaw Mountain Landis is the fucking name on the MVP award. Are you fucking yeah. shitting me? Get I love that fucking that. racist piece of shit off. Of I, I, it, 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 it's a great name. It, he you may know, be racist name. and all. You'll that. never forget it, that name. Okay. It's just you know, a cool name. Here was the other really cool thing, guys. Like when we get base, when I get baseballs, the actual baseballs. You had two different baseballs. You had I remember in the seventies, Lee McPhail signed the American, the American one, one, and yeah. Chuck, Chuck Feeney signed the um the National League one. Yeah, I miss those little, the little things like that cool. that really made baseball. Dude, yeah. You hit it right on. The, you hit the nail right on the head. Those little th- memories like that is something that I totally forgot yeah. about. Yeah, yeah I different. like. I like the fact that all the stadiums were different, and I, I like love the that. Fact that they, That's baseball. I yeah. like the fact that they were team like Whitey Herzog. He built a team based on the fact that once Vince Coleman or Willie McGee put the ball on the ground and it I took one Willie bounce, McGee. they were standing at first base. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, and that's how the Giants won through World Series. Yeah. We built around this ballpark with young pitching that was just ridiculous. Go like seriously, go back and on YouTube, I'm sure you can find it. Watch Tim Lincecum pitch. Yeah. Holy mm. shit. Yeah. 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 That guy was right. awesome. Oh you're, my god. Yeah. I, like, 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 I, I I really he am should, a big, I'm a big like fan honestly, of if if he could have if he could have strung together a few more years, Hall of Famer. He won't be in. But oh, like there was he was like Mike Tyson. He was like pay per view type shit. Yeah, like people would come. It was Lincecum Day. That day was sold out he, every day he pitched. Yeah, totally. Cindergard C- reminds me a lot of Lincecum with just a haircuts. little bit more heat. They need haircuts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Lincecum Lincecum adapted to an extent uh, where he w- he had the fastball where he was ninety five. When he didn't have that anymore, he had that splitter that was just ridiculous. But Lincecum was but, a small guy. He was he wasn't a big yeah. guy. Oh, he was five eight, five yeah, nine. Five, you know, you know. Yeah. Uh, Thor is six five or some shit yeah, like that. Different, yeah. it, different guys, but but different the same guys. kind of the same kind of idea where it's just those guys are pitching and it's like I'm gonna watch that game. I don't care who they're playing against. If they're playing against my team, I'm not a I'm not a Mets fan, but I loved watching him pitch. Same with uh, with Matt Harvey when he was when yeah. he was when you know, right. before the, the before the Mets fucked him up. The Mets can fuck up pitchers like nobody sure business. can, buddy. But yeah. we can go through I'll, some arms. I'll tell you what, but when he was pitching like. Nothing Legit. like Brooke Showalter. I'll watch. Uh, I'll, I would have. I was watching Matt Harvey pitch against the Royals. I didn't care who he was facing because he was. It was pay per view stuff. Like this guy is on the mound and he's dominating, dominating. I mean, that's all like the way Bob, to the last inning. <laughs> yeah, but it's like Bob Gibson type. Like they changed the game for this guy. Like you're watching these guys pitch. I love pitchers. I love pitchers. Yeah. So do I. Yeah. Yeah. You talked been, about Maddox. You talked about Maddox earlier. Oh, there yeah. was nothing like watching a Maddox game. Oh, two hours, two hours and twenty minutes, ninety-eight pitches. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, three to one. yeah, it gives a two hitter, <laughs> two, two hitter, <laughs> shut up. Uh, oh, you know, he was unbelievable. Like, yeah. and, and we have that, and there's some guys coming up, like uh, Aaron with your guys with uh, Lazardo, dude. He, that guy looks like he's legit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's that type of pitcher where it's just you're going to dominate, but you want to watch those guys. I want to see those guys play, and that's. I'm, I'm going to get back to the to the beginning of our, our conversation, where it's where I really hope that we do get some baseball this year, even if it's a, cr- a truncated season, where I can watch some of those guys come out and do their thing. Exactly, Rob. That's why that's I think that's why we want to see baseball. We just want to see it, man. 
I mean, we've seen we've seen baseball galvanize this country before. Yeah, yeah. A, a multitude of times. And and if the, if there was ever a time where this country needed something to get behind and enjoy together, I don't care who you're voting for or yeah. you know what you think about this or that or the other thing. But we can all watch baseball. Absolutely. I mean, I, I would love yeah. to see it. Awesome. So this is a good segue into the last quick topic, um, and I don't know how quick it will be, but we probably uh, – Nothing's quick on this show, Coop. No, I know. Um, Come on, baby. Okay, so my, the minor league revamping. You know, we haven't talked about the – I haven't heard much about what's happening with the minor leagues with all this going on either. I just – uh, a rumor. I just got um, an, uh, an update. Baseball America just dinged me. It said that they have um, – Am I made minor league baseball ready to agree to a significant reduction in teams? I know it's been a rumor and they put out a statement today saying they haven't agreed to anything, but I just got an update on my phone, man. And, and it looks They're like go for like 160 to 120, something like that. One, I feel like 120. You have 40 teams. This has been a long time coming, I think. So, yeah. so here's, I'm in a unique situation compared to everyone else on the panel. In that I don't have a – the closest Major League Baseball team is 240 miles from where I live. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Charlotte Knights are basically the – you know, that's what I have for baseball right now. Um, so, minor, you know, I hate to see anything happen to the minor leagues the way it is right now mm -hmm. um, because I think it's important for communities. Like, again, we're not going to lose the Charlotte Knights most likely, right? We just got to understand – but, you know, you get into some of these other communities where the single-A teams are and all that and some of the double-A teams, that's what, we, that's what people have. And, and it's, another, it's, a fam, it's a very family-friendly option to go to. Yep. There's some great minor league baseball parks. Um, I've gotten to see some great young players. I remember when I lived up in New Jersey at the Trenton Thunder, uh, some great players would come through. And occasionally you get that all-star guy who would come do a little rehab stand. Real rehab stand, yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know – I'm concerned about the contraction, if the, if anything, with that right now. And think about all the great names that the minor league yeah. use. I mean, so they, they they have fun with their logos. They have fun, you know. Uh, Rob, early you had a um, you had a raccoon run by you. Said, and all I could think was the trash pandas. You know what I mean? And there's some great minor league team names. They have a great tradition. Yeah. I would hate I would hate to see them do this, but. You know, if it's if it, if it's a town that's not supporting a team, or if it's a ballpark they can't, and it's totally outdated, they may have to do those kind of things. I don't want to, I agree. See, but it may Look, have. To I'm have looking. To. I'm I'm looking to retire, and when I retire, I want to move to Greenville, South Carolina. They have a minor league team with a my, a nice minor league stadium. Yeah, so it's I a great stadium. So I can go watch a few games. You know, it's yeah. that's if it's I, still there. Yeah. That's uh, I'll admit something to you guys. That's always been a kind of a retirement thing for me, where I would work for a minor league team that's local and you know do their marketing or whatever it is and and yeah. you know play by play, you know do, be the pa announcer whatever it is i've got experience and all that stuff where it's just kind of something i've always, I've always kind of thought that, yeah I, I might do that when i'm in my you know 60s whatever i mean maybe that kind of thing is going away it's it's unfortunate i would i would encourage everybody who doesn't maybe doesn't know anything about baseball or if you're watching this you probably do but go and watch bull durham and understand yeah, mm -hmm. what minor league baseball really yeah. means i can't argue that i can't argue. Very so, important. minor league baseball is such a dear place in my heart i you know i grew up in el paso texas the el paso diablos were yeah, a part absolutely. where where the were our team. Like I said, I didn't grow up in a major league team, but the El Paso Diablos going to games every summer. And in college, I got the opportunity to intern with them. And I did what you do, Rob. I did some scoreboard work for them for a while. Nice. And then all of a sudden, um, um, they had hired this kid to, uh, the, the, the PA had gotten sick. And then they hired this kid that was just fucking terrible. He was awful at PA. And so they fired him and they were like, did open auditions. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. And I, the voice uh, color commentator for radio now for the Texas Rangers, Matt Hicks was my boss. He was play by play for the Diablos back then. I grew up listening to Matt Hicks and Matt told me, he's like, you, you want to go for it. You should go for it. And I, so I was like, I did. So I auditioned and 
they hired me. So for about three quarters of a minor league season, I was the voice of the team that I grew up watching. And one of the games that I got to call from the PA was for a rehab stint for a pitcher that I think pretty much everyone on the panel is pretty familiar with. And that would be Randy Johnson. Oh, nice. nice. Wow. That's and, such a good story. And if they get rid of minor league baseball, even to some capacity, you know, there's some kid that won't get to live that dream. Yeah. It, it's I again, mean, it's a unique part of the sport. This is another, it's a, it's a unique facet. The other leagues that have minor league systems are not the same. No. Well, basketball is trying it with the G League, you know what I mean? And, and they're growing it. But when you think about baseball, how long we've had the minor leagues, um, it's so ingrained in our, in our culture and baseball. But, yeah. um, but, but, I mean, you know. It, Hockey's the closest that's done it to baseball. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, also, you also look at baseball. As it, sorry, Miguel, I didn't mean to cut you off. No. But, I mean, you look, at, uh, you look at baseball and it's like you've got the rookie leagues and you've got single A, you've got low A, high A, double A, triple A. It's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot of guys who are working for minimum wage. I mean, kind of dream. I mean, that's that's one thing we don't really talk about. I mean, you talk about these professional athletes and they're making a ton of money. These guys who are playing in Double A, who are twenty eight, they're making less than minimum wage, really. Yeah, for half a, for half a year. I think that's another conversation too. Is that the pay, you're, you're right? It probably is. Pay, but. Yeah, but the pay you know structure is <clears throat> terrible, and I think Major League Baseball has caught so much heat over it that I think they do want to up the salary for the minor leagues. And this is the first step to that is reducing the teams and then fixing the salary issue. So you, you could almost look at, and this is probably a little close to my heart more so than maybe the rest of you guys, maybe, maybe not, but this, uh, the stimulus for small business that ends up, and I, I don't mean, I'm not trying to get political, but I mean, I work for a small brewery and, and, and when I see this money going to Ruth's Chris and not to us, mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy when you think of this money. And I, I know it's been the, uh, the stimulus, this uh, PPP loans, this paper, this uh, pay protection loans or whatever they call it has been uh, refunded. I don't know if any of that is affecting, is affecting uh, minor league baseball, but I mean, these guys are making the same amount of money that, the folks who are, you know, doing the day-to-day -day stuff at my at the brewery that I work with, and mm -hmm. it's you, you you think of, you know, the folks who are making beer for a a small local brewery like Laughing Monk that I work with is, are making the same as a guy who's playing Double A for the Reds. It's just it doesn't seem to fit. Yeah, you yeah. might be making more. Yep. You know what I mean? It does. It doesn't seem to not 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 to take away from what anybody's doing. I'm not saying that. It's yeah. just. I mean, you're talking about these guys. They're professional athletes. They put their entire life at this. But the, the same thing about the guys who are the guys and gals who are making beer at my brewery. They put their entire life to this. It should get spread through all those, not to maybe a chain that's making you know hundreds and thousands of millions of dollars a year. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. Let's trade it on the stock market. Yeah, yeah. You um, one of the podcasts you guys should listen to uh, is uh, the Twelve Six podcast. It's hosted by Colin McHugh. Mm. Uh, really, really great content. He interviews a lot of his former teammates, a lot of his current teammates. He's had some other cool people on. He just interviewed John Smoltz, uh, and but he tells a lot of stories of minor league baseball life. And yeah, it's it's. It's not all glory, man. It's a lot of – those guys have a lot of grit. The guys that work you – know, you know, we talk about Mike Trout, who's a once-in-a-generation player who kind of – he spent a little bit of time in the minors, but he got called up really early. And, you know, a lot of the greats do, but a lot of the – there's a lot of guys that don't and they're, that don't make it. Or there's a lot of guys that take a while. And the guys that take a while to get through that system and, and get to the show, I mean, it, it, they have – earned every single cent so like i Absolutely. that's something about the pay in baseball that i will never begrudge any of these guys for the money that they've been able to earn because a lot of them earned it um they had they you know they they <laughs> they were working for peanuts in minor league baseball and it was a dream that they had and they they followed it um yeah. and they they fought through it and they fought through the i mean the horrible living conditions i mean 
four, six, eight guys to an apartment. Didn't know where you're going to sleep. Colin McHugh got married early, really early in his life. And him and his wife, Ashley, they, they, they roomed together with four and six guys. And, and it was just nuts, you know? Um, So it's, you know, it's one of those things that, yeah, I think that baseball needs to fix somehow. I just don't, but I, I also don't want someone's dream cut short because, you know, there's not a, there's not a minor league team. There's not a spot for them. Yeah. And then everyone's like, Oh, well they can go play independent ball. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, When's the last player who went through time, independent ball? Time, next time either you guys have a, a chance that you have Casey Hogan on from Crux. He played minor league ball. He can tell yeah. you. Some yeah. yep. Did you really? I didn't realize that. Yes, he did. He's a good dude. I like him a lot. I didn't He's I really a super good dude. Ball. Yep. All right, guys, why don't we, uh, Bear, do we want, do you want to do a Michaels read and then we get into the last two? Absolutely. Okay. With just over a decade of ownership, Michael's Tobacco has become the premier tobacconist for the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area and cigar patrons the world over. With two convenient locations in Euless, just a quick jaunt from the DFW airport and Keller, Texas, Michael's Tobacco stands as a beacon for Texas cigar retailers. Michael's was the very first cigar lounge in the state of Texas to add a full bar to its list of ever-growing accommodations. Proprietor Mike Peacock is a former PCA board member and now has made Michael's a family affair by having his son, Bob, join the ownership force. Under general manager and master storyteller Tracy Spence's leadership at Michael's, his self-proclaimed greatest accomplishment has been assembling, quote, the greatest team in the cigar retail business, unquote, as well as build some of the finest relationships with the industry's most respected individuals, like some of our esteemed guests this evening. Inventory director Jason Fields handles and maintains two of the area's proudest humidors containing premium cigars for everyone from the everyday smoker to the most ardent collector of rare puros. Under Mike, Bob, Tracy, and Jason's example, they have enlisted a staff of Kevin, Austin, myself, Joe, Salas, Brandon, and now Kyle that collectively boast now a hundred years of combined industry experience. Together, they have bought together a true and blessed mainstay for their respective communities. Whether you're celebrating an anniversary, birthday, or hole-in-one, or just a desire to relax, Michael's Tobacco will have the perfect cigar waiting for you with an exquisite beverage pairing and lively conversation. Visit michaelstobacco.com for more details and a calendar of upcoming events. Michael's, Michael's Tobacco, not just a cigar shop, but the perfect blend of Texas hospitality in the days of yore. All right. So this is uh, – we'll try to go through this one a little quicker. Um, this is the Mount Rushmore. Um, what we'll do is four players uh, from your team that you would put on your Mount Rushmore. So it's very oh, simple. <clears throat> All right. Um, Hector, why don't you go first? Okay. Four players on my Mount Rushmore. <sighs> he rose. It was from your team, but your team. Oh, your team. my team. What do you mean? What team are you Mets. talking about? Mets. Mets. Yeah. The Mets. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be easy. That's <laughs> that's even easier. Uh, Tom Seaver. Seaver. Gooden. Uh, wow, that's not as hard, not as easy as I thought, huh? <laughs> David Wright. And uh, the Grom, man. the Grom just <laughs> the Grom yeah, real. He's a stud, man. He's, he's, he's a, stud. a stud. I mean, I mean, you know, to win those back-to-back Cy Young awards, you know, in Coop's face is just great. You know? <laughs> <laughs> in your face, Cooper. <laughs> All right. Look at it. All right, um, Miguel. Uh, oh. Mine, mine would be Pete Rose. Got a hard time. <laughs> I would have uh, Johnny Bench. Ooh. I would nice. have I would have Tony Perez. Ooh, interesting. And I would have Barry Larkin. That's nice. no, no no ED. <clears throat> no, look, there's a lot of great people that have come through. Or, you know, Ernie Lombardi. There's some great guys that have come through the Cincinnati Reds organization. Pete Rose. To Johnny Bench, Tony Perez. I'm just talking, even though I, I wasn't, you know, I was born in 1980, right? So I got to see a little bit of Pete. I got to see a little bit of Johnny, very little. Um, but those guys mean so much to the city of Cincinnati. And Barry Larkin was my hero and my favorite player. So those four guys, those four guys. All right. Good picks. Uh, Rob. So – Real quick before I get into that, just want to mention the cigars that I smoked. This War Zone from Espinosa, fantastic. Thank the you. 
uh, Chemuco. Is that how I say that? The Chemuco, that's a 2019 LE, right? Yep, yep. Headley Grange that, Chemuco. The Headley Grange, f- fantastic cigars. That Headley Grange pairs very, very well with the Heaven Hill. I don't know if you guys can see that. Heaven Hill, uh, seven year, pairs very, very well. Um, for me, with the San Francisco Giants, we've got a very storied history. I'm going to go with guys I've watched play. So I'm going to leave Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, Juan Marichal. Those guys are not going to be on my list. I'm going to go you with – Sorry? I, I saw the video, video but like, I, I didn't get like, to watch them. Oh, like they, okay, okay. These are the guys that I got to watch play, and I, I know a little bit more intimately. Will Clark definitely oh, is, a, is the first yeah. guy on my list. And then Barry Bonds, Tim Lincecum, and Madison Bumgarner. Those are my guys. I guess. Nice. These are the guys was, that I got to, I got to was, watch play and, uh, in, in, and just got to know them in a way that, like, they really that's, – that's the heart and soul for me. I mean, there's, there's the Robbie Thompsons and the other guys and, and Chris Browns and Jeffrey Leonards and Kevin Mitchells that I really love to Jeffrey. watch. Jeffrey. But was, I mean, Kev, was Matt Williams five? Matt Williams was – Matt Williams, Jeff Kent, right off the list. Um, you know what? You know who I loved watching in a Giants uniform was Ellis Burks. Yeah. He was only a couple of years, but I loved watching that guy. Armando Galarraga was another guy. I didn't really had him for one year, but he was fun to watch. But those – Willie McGee, cat. another – another Willie McGee. Oh, love Willie McGee. Ooh, he was. Loved his game. His game was, was great. Fan, he was a, a, a Cardinal, an Oakland Athletic. Uh, a I met. San Francisco Giant. No, I met. he wasn't a Met. It was Vince Coleman. I'm sorry. Uh, Vince Vince Coleman. Well, he wasn't a Giant, but he was fun to watch. No, too. no, but I, mean, I, I I thought McGee was a Met. No, it was Coleman. I'm sorry. Coleman. Yeah, yeah. Willie McGee. Yeah. Yeah, I loved Willie McGee. I actually, when I back in the day, right out of high school, I worked at a uh, a record store called the Warehouse, and we sold like records and we did like movie rentals and stuff. And there was one day Willie McGee came in to buy like some CDs, and I sold him some CDs. I don't remember what they were. But I just remember being totally starstruck because Willie McGee came into our store. But because he lived Metallica, in the big Metallica, it wasn't, it wasn't far. It may have been, I don't know, but it wasn't <laughs> far away from uh, from my house. But uh, those those are the guys that uh, really moved the needle for me. Yep. All right, Aaron. Do we uh, same as what Rob said. There's long history for this uh, team, yep. and I'm gonna go with two that I saw and two that I didn't see, just to kind of stretch it out. Right. Over Please have Ricky Anderson. Ricky Anderson's number one. Thank you. Come uh, on. So I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, anybody who uh, talks in the third person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ricky, I, yeah. 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 Ricky, has there ever been a more disruptive player? Yes, game changer. Than Ricky Henderson? Yeah. Ever? Ricky right. liked Ricky. Ricky yeah. likes your choice. Ricky likes your choice, Aaron. Yep. Yep. Ricky yep. likes your choice. Ricky likes your choice. The second one I saw play is uh, Dennis Eckersley. Nice. Um, you know, obviously he started out as a as a starter, but, you know, he – made his bones as a reliever right you know later on in the career so uh the two that i did not see play uh jimmy fox mm. um great choice great great career uh and Good the other work. would be uh catfish hunter oh yes. yes. catfish Ooh. 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 Good choices. Ooh. Good choices. Ooh. with the a's the a's that's tough to pick to pick four guys but yeah, i mean choices. when i if we're talking like growing up man we got you know oh. Shit. Dwayne oh. Murphy, Alfredo Griffin, Dave Parker, Dave Henderson, uh, McGuire Canseco, like yeah. McGuire and Canseco, like yeah, the yeah. elephants in the room, right? Yeah, the elephants in the room. But uh, Carney Lansford, I love oh. watching Carney Lansford. Holy shit, I love watching Carney Lansford. Um, yeah, and the blue tennis by the blue. Yep. Oh my yep. god. Yep. Yep. Right. By the blue. Probably I would fang- love seeing by the blue pitch. Dave Reggie. Stewart. Oh. Reggie. Yeah, Dave Stewart. Oh, Stu. Stare. Uh, Mr. October. Reggie just Jackson. so intimidating, but they have a voice like that's super high, like yep. Mark McGuire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Salban- Terry Stein, Terry Steinbach. Good choice. Terry so, Steinbach. Yeah. Lots oh, of choices. World really. Series hero. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Gallego. Him and Ricky Walt loved White. each other. Yeah. <laughs> Walt White. <laughs> yeah, Walt White. Yeah. Hundred percent. Jose Canseco. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. All right. Bear, what about yours? Uh, man, this was, this was fun, man. But this was kind of hard, uh, at the Ooh. same time, you know, storied history of the Red Sox, man. So you better great... come, you better come correct on this one. <laughs> a lot of pressure on you, bear. Uh, no joke. Right. <laughs> so, well, the first one I got to start with the, I mean, he's got, you know, it's, it's the, he is, 
his name is synonymous with the greatness of pitchers of all of our time. We've named some great pitchers tonight, some we've seen, some we haven't. Uh, a lot of pitchers on our Mount Rushmore, and all of them can be defined by how many awards they've won and what are those awards <clears throat> called? They're called the Cy Young. Yeah, and Cy Young was a Boston Red Sox. And uh, so Cy Young is on my Mount Rushmore. Uh, another comment on Cy Young, not only What's the 511 it? wins, look at the amount of complete games and that guy pitched. It was a different era, yeah. I get it, but amazing. Stats will never be broken. Totally great. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Some, Cy, some did, Cy Young, did Cy Young have more wins than Walter Johnson? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. By by a long by yep. a long amount. Yeah, I know those guys. Those records are untouchable. I'm just yeah. I, I don't, a I different don't... era. I get it, but yeah, that was still amazing what he did. Yeah. Oh, bro. yeah. Bro. Go ahead, Bear. I'm sorry. I didn't mean the. Oh up. no, absolutely. Um, it's it's kind of hard not to mention the Red Sox without uh, one player. Um, while Cy Young has you know is cemented in this game in many different ways. Uh, he's known probably not as a Red Sox, uh, you know, really. I mean, he's just known for, you know, his greatness as a pitcher right. and for yep. the award. But when you think of the Boston Red Sox, how do you not think of Teddy Ballgame? Yep. yep. You know, all he ever wanted his entire life, his goal was for when he walked down the street for people to say, there goes the greatest hitter that ever that ever played. Yep. And, you know, f- you know, it's arguable, but, you know, you can say that he accomplished that. And Absolutely. And Ted Williams, I would have, I would have loved to see him just, play just and then you know in 19 you know in 1961 when he hit his in his last at bat he hit a home run uh you know playing the last few games to maintain his his 400 average and he actually ended up you know nearly hitting perfect at the plate to go 406 he had a you know four bat you know you know he was a four batting average they were going to bench him so to protect it and he said no i'm going to play and he played and he ended up hitting 406 for the season how can um, you not be romantic about baseball? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and 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 he was full of piss and vinegar, man. He, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Would not tip his cap to the freaking fans, man. Just wouldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Yep. Even with that last at bat and that home run, he couldn't. He couldn't. He couldn't come out of the dugout because it wouldn't have been Ted. Yep. And that was just the way. That was the player he was. Yep. Um, splendid splinter, right? Splendid splinter. Yep. Yes, yep. sir. Um, and then uh, a little bit more modern day. Um, I, I think that, you know, it, it's, it's controversial as, as, as if a player is that, you know, a player that he kind of is sort of, you know, you know, we talked a lot about his position tonight and, but no one has cemented the legacy of Boston other than Ted Williams, the way that this guy has. And that was the, that was what David Ortiz did to, for, the, for the city of Boston. I mean, he, I mean, he is at the, the, the pinnacle moment for the franchise. He broke the curse of the Bambino. Um, it's you know, your that, fucking city. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yep. Great, great quote, man. Yep. <laughs> um, but that, that home run, uh, you know, that game, you know, that game winning hit to bring in Dave Roberts to, uh, to win game four. And then they won game five and game six and game seven. Um, but it was all cemented on the legacy of David Ortiz. And for the, the bulk of his career, he was known for clutch hitting and always being in the moment. And uh, and never shrinking from the moment and capturing it, and he he put boss, you know, he put Red Sox baseball back into relevancy almost sing, single handedly. Uh, so my Mount, you know, Mount Rushmore for the Red Sox has to have David Ortiz. And the last one was a little more difficult for me. I mean, there's a lot of great ones. You know, you know, Jimmy Fox was a was a Red Sox too. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm glad that Aaron mentioned him. And you know, Carl Yastrzemski, another you know Triple Crown winner. And, uh, but there are a lot of good players, but, you know, we talked, you know, Rob mentioned his, his love for pitchers and, and I have a love for pitchers too. And feel it. There it comes. You just had to watch him pitch from that small frame and what he was able to bring to a ball game, his tenacity, his daringness, his ability to overcome and just unbelievable stuff. And that would be Pedro Martinez. Yeah, baby. Oh yeah, nice so that's, choice. So that's my Mount Rushmore: Ted Williams, David Ortiz, Cy Young, and Pedro Martinez. No Mike Greenwell. No, no Roger Clemens. <laughs> no Roger no Clemens. Roger, no Clemens. No, no Evan, Jim Rice. No Rice. Yeah. You Pedro. Who do Pedro I? Pedro Who do I take so off for Jim Rice? Good. Who no, do I, I take get off it. For I, I Rice? totally get it. Yeah, I totally no, get it. You, you don't. Do it's it. tough, don't man. Do it. It's tough. It's a tough. Wade call. Boggs, man. Wade Boggs. Wade Boggs, Boggs. another good one. No, oh, yeah. Yep. A slap hitter. He's a slap hitter. Yeah. Yep. He was a good he, slap hitter, but he was a slap he hitter. Could drink some beer. He could drink some beer, though. Wade, <laughs> Wade Boggs would have been the greatest 
classic hitter of his era, if not for two Tony small Gwen. words, Tony Gwen. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah, Wade Boggs is in the uh, the Devil Rays. Uh, yes. uh, yeah. <laughs> Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Here's so my Fred McGriff. <laughs> Fred, oh, Fred McGriff should be in the Hall of Fame. Yes. Absolutely. Somebody, you want to talk about who guys got screwed out of the Hall of Fame? Fred McGriff. He'll totally get in. Veterans Committee, man. He'll get in. Yeah, yeah he'll get I in. I hope so. I really hope so. The crime dog was legit. I hated yeah. him. Hated him. Yeah. That means he should be in there. Yeah. Okay, four, four, my four uh, men who, who donned the Philly uniform that are on Mount Rushmore. Gotcha. Um, let's start right off with lefty, Steve Carl. Um, okay, let me rephrase it. I went, with, I went with a mix as well. But I went with guys who were really Phillies for the bulk of their careers mm. is what I went with. So Steve Carlton, lefty. I, I don't think anyone would argue the, one of the two greatest pitchers on the, Phil, uh, on the Phillies of all time. Uh, joined at the hip with him was Mike Schmidt. Mm. Yeah, right? Schmidt. So, I mean, Schmidt is Schmidt. I mean, he played his entire career with the Phillies. Great Here it comes. I feel it. I, it's, it's coming. Here it comes. Right. So number three is the other pitcher that was the greatest pitcher of all time, Robin Roberts. Robin Roberts. Mm. Um, it was really – I mean, again, Robin Roberts was probably better than Carlton in a lot of ways. Uh, Carlton played on better teams it, it was the difference. But Robin Roberts was, was a machine. And Gabe Kaplan. <laughs> no. So the fourth <laughs> man – so the fourth one, is that Charlie manager? Manuel. Charlie really? Manuel, there it is. Oh, there it Greatest is. Manager. Look, look, listen, listen. Take, again, take your shot, Hector. Take your shot. Dutch? Winning, <laughs> winningest manager in Philly's history. He led the team to it's an like being the tallest midget, you know. <laughs> Charlie Manuel Damn. is, I mean, five division titles in a row. You know, no, two Roy World Halliday? Series. He wasn't there long enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the, greatest feed, the greatest feed by Charlie Manuel is being able to see the lineup card Listen, over that fucking huge yeah. gut of his, man. I probably – will you stop it? <laughs> I love it. Oh, the, the, the one guy I, I – if you want to say I would take the manager off, I would put Jimmy Rollins in there. Okay. Jimmy. Oh, okay. You're the only guy with a manager on there. Uh, yeah. it, 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 this is Mount Rushmore. There was no Charlie Manuel. Yeah, right. You know what? I should I should have put the trainer. The Mets trainer is real good. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. <laughs> and, Lots of practice. That was that was that was, uh, that was and and Charlie absolutely no, is no, the, no Chase no Chase Utley no Lazinski no Boa Ryan Howard uh, Ryan, Ryan Hayes Howard. <laughs> Dick Ryan. Allen Dick, Dick Allen, Allen yeah. 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 I mean oh, here's another God. guy I think that belongs on there so. Richie Larry Ashburn. Boa? Come on. Richie Ashburn would probably be above all those Richie guys. Richie Ashburn's a good yeah. one. Richie no, Ash- and what he meant to Philadelphia too, Richie Ashburn. Uh, and I'm he was you. one of the greatest announcers of all time. Richie Pat Burrow Rich- too. Come on. Pat Burrow. <laughs> <Pat Burrell. laughs> yeah. From the U. From the U. Yeah. No Lazinski. No Lazinski. Not Mount Rushmore. I, lo- I love I, Lazinski. I, you have to put Love versus Mount Rushmore, and there's no mm-hmm. consolation prize. Greg Lazinski's not good enough to be on Mount Rushmore. This guy's chase the Chase Utley's, the Jimmy Rollins, the Richie Ashburns are ahead of him. Mm-hmm. I mean, how do, the first three I think are locked in stone. That fourth one's a tough one to do. Yeah, that's uh, what you Tug McGraw. You, I could have put Tug McGraw on there too. I could have. A lot I mean, of different I, directions I, with the Phillies. That's dude, to see sure. the see this is this this is the historian in me, Coop. I'm really I'm really sad that you didn't name Grover Creve. Grover Cleveland Alexander on thought the about that. No, but he, one. Has video. he has video. He has video. He has video. I got on too. All right. So let's just turn this as a final uh, round robin here. And this is what I call, like Aaron has kind of come up with this. Uh, I call this the Steve Balboni uh, segment, right? Nice. Where I want to name your all time stiff, like give me a, your all time stiff on your team that played for your team. You can love them, you can hate them. Um, but basically, the guy was a stiff in terms of his production and value to the team uh, being on it. Oh, shit. Oof. Felix Rodriguez. <laughs> what? Did, Felix Done. Rodriguez? Yeah. Done. Felix the, Rodriguez. Centerpiece, the centerpiece of the trade with Porcano was him. And he couldn't get me out. <laughs> he was a stiff. <laughs> hmm. I'll give you guys mine if you want. Oh, I have a, okay, I think all right, one. so here's what I'll tell you. This guy in 1996, okay, he hit 27 home runs, and he had 101 RBIs, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, 
batted a respectable 254. But I mean, this guy, so he was brought on the Phillies in 1997 based on that season he had for the White Sox the previous year. He proceeded to only get seven at bats um, with no hits, batting a whopping 0 0 0 <laughs> before he uh, decided he was hurt and wanted to retire. And that's Danny Tartable. Hey. He had he was Danny supposed to come in there and be the power, the powerhouse of that team. Seven at bats, eleven wow. games. Yeah, that guy. Pretty, yeah, pretty, yeah. He's a Miami guy. I'm sorry, three games, three games, eleven, eleven plate appearances. Yeah, he's a he's a Miami kid. He's, he's a he's a stiff. <laughs> I, I as a Giants fan, I could give you a couple. So my my real answer is going to be second. The first answer could be. Carlos Beltran, who we gave up, uh, Zach Wheeler, your boy. That's yep. that's very very topical because he was a Met and now is yeah. a Philly. Right. Uh, for uh, for what two and a half months of Carlos Beltran and that didn't do anything for us. But I think for the Giants, as far as I'm concerned, from what I've seen in like my lifetime, AJ Przinsky really falls into that. Category. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that's a good one. I mean, we traded uh, a, a bunch of years of Joe Nathan being an all-star closer and Francisco Lariano, who was kind of a throw-in of the deal at the time. Um, who may is, play for the Phillies this year, by the way. Yeah, he, he's still pitching. He's still doing it. Good yeah, he's a uh, Philly signed him, yeah. Yeah, he's still doing it. But that was – I mean, God, that yeah. trade was – I don't even know what year that trade oh. was. But I know those were the two – there, there might have been another guy going uh, from the Giants for A.J., um, he just came to the Giants for one year, didn't really do much. Uh, I'm looking at the war. Uh, I'm, I pulled up a, the McCovey Chronicles here. The war after the trade, uh, A.J. Pruszynski's war was 14.1, and Joe Nathan and Francisco Liriano combined were 36.3. So not a very good deal in the Giants, uh, on the Giants' side of things. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a few that I could think of, but those are probably the best ones. There you go. All right. Uh, Miguel, you have a stiff for the Reds. Yeah, I actually have three of them. Um, uh, How is that? <laughs> Jack, Jack Boltzcomb, Milt Pappas, and Dixon. Oh, oh Milt, Milt Pappas. Pappas. Those, oh, those, those three guys we traded a 30-year-old Frank Robinson for. Milt, Milt, had, Milt went on to have a pretty decent career. Not Frank Robinson. Yeah, this yeah, this is Hector's <laughs> argument that no Pat no Pappas actually Listen wasn't me. a bad player. Listen it's, to me. Those three guys will never amount to Of course Robinson not. Frank was. Robinson went on to, to win one the season crown. of Frank Robinson. He went on to so, win the triple crown in the MVP. I mean <laughs> Those three men to me represent the biggest stiffs of the Cincinnati Reds because we lost a legendary player. Should blame your ownership though. You gotta blame, blame the ownership. <laughs> Oh. All right, Aaron. Poor Milk Pappas. And I'm having a hard time figuring this out, but uh, one guy on our team that just a uh, piece of garbage, uh, Jeremy Giambi. <laughs> he was on the Phillies. He was almost one of my picks for the Phillies, too. I had him almost there. Yeah. He, but you just, didn't trade anything for him. It I know. We didn't trade anything for him, but. Well, we had him. He was awful. Garbage, you know, I, what, about, what about Cargo? You traded Cargo for nothing. Well, yeah, I mean, also Carlos Pena. Uh, yeah, another so, one, yeah. I mean, those guys would have been great if we had them, but yeah, that it didn't work been out. So I don't even remember who we got in return for those yeah, those guys, but nothing. probably nothing. But, um, yeah, Jeremy Yami just like, he was know. all He was almost my pick for the Phillies. Yeah, he's just yeah. trash. I love, I love the scene in uh, Moneyball when he's yeah. dancing on the he's team. dancing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When he gets, <laughs> gets traded, that's, that's a great movie. Yeah, it is. That's, that's, that's up there with the baseball movies. That's yes, it is. It is. Yep. All right, Bear. You're going to close this one out. Oh, I think man. yours is easy, bud. Well, in 2002, this guy was amazing for another team. 52 saves in 2003. 55 saves. Won the Cy Young that year. Unstoppable. And in 2007, for reasons I will never understand... He donned a Boston Red Sox uniform. And in 18 non-glorious innings, 
He had zero saves. <laughs> he had a spectacular ERA of 6.75. That is going, going, Gagne. Go. Wow, Gagne. that's a good pick. Gagne. Good pick. That's a good pick. You that's didn't a go real... with the obvious What choice. was his ERA? 6.75? 6.75. In, eight, in, in 18 <laughs> innings, bitch. <laughs> I forgot he I even went to the Red Sox. Yeah. 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 It's just, I wish he wished. Yeah. I wish that was forgettable too. Yeah. That was before he started juicing. Yeah. <laughs> that was in 2007. They won the World Series that year, in spite of him <laughs> being on donning the Red Sox yeah. uniform. Wow. Oy. All right, guys. How the fuck he won two games, I'll never know. He was two and two for the Red Sox. <laughs> yeah. he, he gave up the lead, and then he came out of the game, and then – Big Poppy hit a home run. That's, <laughs> that's, right. yeah, that's, yeah, that's exactly what That's happened. like when you, when you look back at some of uh, uh, Bob Gibson's seasons with that 1.63 ERA, and somehow he lost two games. How yeah. the hell do you lose two games? <laughs> actually, yeah. yeah. Actually, I remember, Aaron, it's a good point you bring up about – exactly. So I do actually remember. Uh, David Ortiz did save Gagne in one sense. So – Gagne comes in, comes in. It was in 2007. He blows a he blows a lead, and I was just so fucking just pissed off. And yeah. and uh, um, they uh, they 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 come back and it's the bottom. It's the it's the bottom of the ninth. And um, oh god, um, who gets on who gets on second? I think it was like it really. Oh god, I think it was Trot Nixon. Trot Nixon get uh, hits uh, hits a single. Um, and a balk forces him to, to second. So he's in scoring position and fucking big hot poppy rips a, rips a towering double right off the fucking monster and saves Gagne's ass, <laughs> gives him the win. Piece of shit. There's one of them. <laughs> yeah. There's one of the victories. I remember. There's yeah, one. it was a good point. It was good. The point. other one was probably <laughs> very similar. Same. Yeah. Same story. <laughs> yeah. God. Wretched. Boys, you guys, it is always a pleasure, man. Yeah. yeah. This was a ton of fun, man. Yeah. No, this was so want- much fun. Yeah, I want to thank everyone. Um, I know we kept it late. I know Hector's I got an early day too, so I do I'm appreciate super that. Fucking angry with you. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, real, <laughs> That's not real, different. Yeah, real quick. Um, Thursday primetime show. Uh, Sean Williams special guest. Um, so that will be primetime episode one thirty five, and then next Tuesday we have another special edition. We're gonna kind of build off this one. Uh, we're gonna have Ram Rodriguez from El Artista Cigars, because of the big poppy cigar. Nice. Although he's not a big baseball guy. So, um, sure. yeah. All right. So that's going to wrap up primetime special edition uh, number 73 into the annals of history for Tuesday, April 21st. <laughs> now, Wednesday, April 22nd on the East Coast. Uh, thanks to our panel. Thanks to our audience for tuning in as well. We appreciate you guys. And we'll see you guys uh, later in the week. Take care. See, see you guys. next time. Cheers, guys. All right, guys.